And now strap in and get ready. It's show time. I just don't like the guy. The guy's just a douchebag. Wah, wah, wah. Yeah, welcome everybody to Pulp MX Show, presented by Motorsport.com, Fly Racing and Decal Works, coming at you! It's Monday, August 15th, 5 p.m. Pacific, thanks for watching. Facebook, YouTube, thanks for listening. Podcast app, PulpMXShow.com. Great show tonight, looking forward to uh, getting into the latest and greatest with the sport of Supercross and Motocross. 702-586-7857, if you have something on your mind, 702-586-PULP. Give us a call. It's going to be a fun show tonight. Cameron McAdoo from Monster Energy Pro Circuit will be calling in. Uh, Ramit made his uh, season debut outdoors. And, uh, wow, I guess I shouldn't say that. He did race one lap of the first round. And uh, McAdoo came back, ran third for a long time, and ended up fourth in the second moto. We'll have Cameron McAdoo on. Dylan Wright will be on the 450 Canadian motocross champion. Good dude. He just won his, uh, I think it's his fourth Canadian title. He went undefeated. Pulled a stew. Pulled a RC up there in Canada. First time that's ever been done. Swept every moto. Perfect score. Class of the field. Dylan Wright will be calling in from the Gopher Dunes Honda team. Looking forward to having D-Dub calling in. Great guy. Great kid. Remember him. We had him on last year when he was racing the MXGP races and uh, acquitting himself quite well there. Travis Preston will call in. Uh, TP, 125 Supercross champion, friend of the show. Yamaha has released and dropped a brand new 2023 YZ450F. So what better? who better to have on to talk about it than the man who helped develop it? So we'll talk to Travis Preston tonight. Donnie Luce will call in as well, Yamaha amateur coordinator for a, a long time. Donnie Luce will call in to uh, talk about this Hayden Deegan claiming situation that happened down at the ranch. Uh, Matt Walker is going to call in as well to get to the bottom of that. Uh, we're going to talk about that situation pretty heavy to start the show and move on to Unadilla, which was great. Chase Sexton, what a ride. Catching and passing Eli Tomac, getting the points lead back. Jesus Chase Sexton, everybody. That was awesome. Uh, Eli Tomac talk, of course. We'll talk about Joe Shimoda winning, Jet Lawrence crashing, Dylan Ferrandez coming back, all of this kind of stuff uh, as well tonight. So looking forward to having you guys sticking around and looking forward to you guys checking out pulpamexshow.com for all the sponsor deals uh, to save money on a variety of our partners on the show, including motorsport.com, Fly Racing, Decal Works, Race Tech Suspension and Engines, X-Brand Goggles, Renthal, Michelin Motorcycle Tires, Acherbys, Firepower Batteries and Chains, Maxima USA, Pro Filter, Skosh, ORW, OGO Power Sports, FMF, Guts Racing, Atlas Neck Brace, Works Connection, MotorcycleCityJobs.com, Get Data, WUSA, Ride Engineering, Manscaped, Suspension Direct, Intense Cycles, Wiseco Pistons, Twisted T, all on board with us tonight. You want to learn more about those companies and save some money, go to PulpMXShow.com. And, uh, yeah, if you're going to buy something, use the code. Save some money. Why don't you? We're going to talk Loretta Lins as well, one of our co-hosts here. Uh, recently uh, raced that, came back, uh, got a trophy, uh, not much else. Yeah, so we'll talk to him about that and more. Uh, 2023 Fly Racing line has dropped. Always a big deal for the guys at WPS and Fly Racing, and they, they're putting some of the greatest athletes out there in the gear. So we'll talk about that and touch on that later on in the show as well. We've got the motorsport.com tweet at Tater segment. We've got the X-Brand Goggle, seg uh, X -Brand Goggle uh, Rapid Fire segment. We have the Race Tech rant as well. I got a perfect rant. I was attacked online by a rider. This week, so I, that, 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 I'll give you a little hint about my rant coming up. We got a new segment, uh, the Instagram comment of the day. Uh, maybe that'll be brought to you by, um, I don't know, Renthal or somebody. Instagram comment of the day coming up as well later on in the show. But for now, to talk about uh, uh, motocross, MXGP, Loretta Lins, and more. Uh, three guys in the studio that are, are really good friends of mine. Looking forward to talking to all of them about what's been going on. First up, from Fly Racing and FlyRacing.com. He's a two-time German Supercross champion. He's two-time Montreal Supercross champion. And, of course, you hear him all the time on the show. But this week, he's in studio. It's Jason Thomas. What's up, JT? Not much. Hanging out. Ready to uh, talk about all kinds of things. I've been, I've been watching you be an investigative journalist mm -hmm. for the past Thank you. 36 hours or yeah. so. Maybe a little yeah. less. The, um, the Pulitzer is coming. Pulitzer? Pulitzer? Pulitzer. Pulitzer. Yeah. All right. 
Yeah. Well, I, I'm getting, I, don't, I don't think that's happening, but yeah. I'm not getting a Pulitzer. I'm getting a Pulitzer. It's different. Okay. Yeah. That that may be happening. Yeah. I don't know it's, what that is. It's from uh, Canada. It's, it's a Canadian. Like the Las Vegas Sun Journal <laughs> yeah, or yeah. something. Is that it, out? It's Winnipeg Free Press. Got it. Uh, so thanks for coming in. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, you're doing the TV rep reporting for this series. Yeah. Uh, so lots of good stuff to talk to you about that. Also in studio, Kiefer Ring testing. Uh, he is in here and uh, family first for him as always. But uh, <laughs> he went to Loretta's, and I have a lot to get into when it comes to that. Chris Kiefer, what's up, man? Hey, boys. How are you guys doing? What's happening? Anything else going on besides the Loretta Lynn's thing? I feel like this could be a whole show about Loretta Lynn's. We are going to be jam-packed tonight. Yes. I, I feel sorry for the people of uh, Unadilla. They're not going to maybe get all the coverage that they deserve. But well, Luckily, Unadilla, we don't need a whole hour talking about Unadilla. We can just talk about Chase Saxon. Yes. I mean, that is really yes. the story. I am involved in a sandwich a little bit right now. I yeah. feel a little heated right. between the fly racing Capriotis? guys. Capriotis? Uh, oh, I like that, yeah. <laughs> Fly Racing's marketing coordinator. He was a former mechanic when I was in the trenches. Uh, he was a gear guy for Fly Racing. He's done it all for the folks at WPS and Fly Racing, and we're welcoming him back in the studio. Max Steffens, what's up, man? What's going on? Thanks for coming in. Hey, thank you. Half the man he used to be. Yeah, yeah he is. Every yeah. time I see him, he just yeah, keeps he's, he's shrinking a, down. Guy's like Lance Armstrong. He's just bicycling. Maybe Lance is a bad term, but I, I don't know. I'm is not it? doping. <laughs> yeah, you're not doping, but, but okay, everything else. Uh, yeah, so thanks for coming in, guys. Really appreciate it. And uh, Donnie Luce is coming in. Uh, I shuffled everything around. This is the big story in our sport. Um, you know, guys on YouTube are getting a story and doing one side of things, and shit hits the fan, and now we all have to run around and actually try to do some work and talking to all the sides. Brennan Schofield, Canadian kid. Uh, made a claim on Brian Deegan's bike at Loretta Lynn's. Kiefer, you were down there yep. for this. Uh, made a claim on Brian Deegan's bike, a totally rule, rule, uh, uh, acceptable rule in the rule book. It's double the manufacturer's suggested retail price, so that's 17500 bucks or something. Kid made a claim. Uh, they processed it. They took Hayden Deegan's bike, and by the way, it's a star racing Yamaha, maybe not the full thing, but pretty damn good bike. Uh, everything was processing as normal. And then shit hit the fan. Brian Deegan got involved uh, with his son's bike. He spoke to the kid. Donnie Luce, who's going to come on here, spoke to the kid. Matt Walker, who's going to come on here, spoke to Brennan. I spoke to Brennan as well. And uh, uh, and then at the dealership that helps Brennan um, up there in New Brunswick, Canada, uh, pressured, uh, uh, basically pressured Brennan to pull the claim down. Brennan, though, um, said to Yamaha Canada, Yamaha USA, someone from Yamaha, <clears throat> threatened the Yamaha Canada dealer with his, his, his franchise or support or something. Uh, and that is why the dealership made Brennan turn the claim down. Um, and, and shit hit the fan from there. I mean, pe <laughs> people want to be. There's people online that are like, you, this guy needs to be fired. Tim Carter from MX Sports needs to be fired. Yeah. Uh, Yamaha needs to be lit on, on fire. Uh, I'll never buy another Yamaha again. All of this stuff is going on. It's just the 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 the... the the society we live in today where everyone just is so quick to judge, right, and, and so quick to talk about it. Now, look, am I – do I get a bike from Yamaha to ride every year? Do I get a little bit of cash from Yamaha? Yes, I do. I, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm an ambassador for those guys. Shill. Uh, you know, uh, shill. Shill yeah, would corporate be the shill for those perfect guys. word. But <laughs> from day one of this thing, I'm like, wait, wait. So, well, first of all, let me say this. The kid should have the bike. <laughs> The kid should have the bike. It's a rule in Loretta Lynn's to do this. He should or, have a bike. For a reason. Like, there's a yeah. reason this rule was yeah. made. And, and it shows right now. Yep. And you're with me on this, JT. You're, you're with yeah. me on this. Like, like the, the, I mean, the rule is – the spirit of the rule is to discourage teams from overbuilding motorcycles, right? You don't want to put make them too good. You want to keep them somewhat competitive because you don't want that – your secrets or too much technology or yeah. whatever to right. leak, right? This is – I think a very good rule, it's appropriate to keep the classes competitive. And if you, which I, whatever team wants to overbuild the bike and take a risk that somebody's going to do this, you have to live with the consequences. Yeah. That's, that's part of it. I, I really think that he should have this motorcycle right I now. do too. Kiefer, do you agree with that? Or what do you think of the rule itself? I agree that he should have the bike. But I also, I think, just like what you said, I was there. I heard a little bit of rumblings about this when I was there. I didn't think it would go to the shitstorm that it is now. Right. Uh, but there's two sides to this, right? You have the kids. Right. Sounds which like there's three sides, right? Yeah. There's a lot of sides. There's yeah. this, the kids should have the bike, correct. He did everything the right way. 
Um, it sounded like he should just walk, you know, left him. And even doesn't even matter if he was going on YouTube to do whatever it is that he was yeah, supposed to do, right? Yeah, it's a doesn't matter. No, he could but ride he, it into a lake. But here's the unspoken thing that I I think riders maybe not all of them do not know. You know that if you do this, you're going to be blackballed in some form, right? Why? Um. Because it's it is an unspoken thing. Why are you taking a bike? You don't see OEM supported riders claiming bikes. You right. just don't. I'm just saying if I'm a rider and we just rode let's for example, Aiden and I just rode Rider D's Pro Circuit bike and it was awesome. It was fast. Aiden loved it. I go back to Pro Circuit, it's up for sale for thirty eight thousand dollars. So I give the kid credit. Like right Why now? yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Why wouldn't you want a seventeen thousand dollar badass motorcycle? What are you doing? We all right on there? Switching oh. my headset. Okay. Um Jesus. <laughs> but here's the thing. If, if, if you're going to do this, you're going to get some heat from the manufacturer, right? So if yeah. I'm this kid, I know that, hey, I'm going to get this bike, and this is c'est la vie after this. Like, I know I'm not going to get any more help anywhere else. I, I disagree with that in the point that if the kid started winning, he would still get help. Because not from Yamaha, well, I don't think. from somebody because you could be a serial killer and win races and get help. Like, that's the bottom line. But but if, there's a, if, there, if he's not in winning – then yes, I could see. I could see. I'm just it, saying. Know. I see both sides. I see why the kid would want it, and he should get it. And I see the other side of like, oh shit. I, look, Yamaha was not happy that he put the claim in. There's no doubt about right. that. Star Racing. Bobby Reagan told Jason Wygant, "We were ready to let the bike go. The facts seem to indicate otherwise." See, I would thought it'd be the other way around. I thought Star Racing would be more hesitant than Yamaha. I think the the guys within Star Racing, I think that's where everything gets misconstrued. Star and Yamaha, that's two separate entities. It is, but I don't think anyone was stoked the bike was being claimed. No. Like, you know, Donnie's going to come on here and tell his side of the story. Right. Um, but uh, I don't think anybody was, Brian, Star, Yamaha, and from what was I've happy this claim was being made. But who cares? It that's was the, a rule. That's, that's, exactly. Yeah, that's yeah, the bottom line. That doesn't line. matter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It does not matter. Right. So You know what the rule is. Yeah. It's black and white. Anybody can do it. Yep. And, and honestly, with how good those bikes have been, how dominant Star has been over the years, you almost have to expect it. If you're going to put Hayden out there on a bike that's that good, I, I'm not saying it was the same bike Justin Cooper raced, yep. but if it's a competitive edge and everybody's looking at it going, that bike looks awesome, you might as well expect it. Yeah, yeah. So what I'm saying is like you don't see that from the top 10 riders. That will never happen. It's right. the kids from maybe 10th back. Right. Because look, hey, they're – not the best rider. He's not the best B class rider, but he's smart enough to, you know, hey, I'm going to raise some money. Yeah. I'm going to get myself a badass yeah. motorcycle, and it's going to be awesome. Yeah. I mean, I wish I could yeah. ride. I, yeah. Me and you were supposed to ride it. We didn't get to ride it. Yeah. So good for him. Uh, so I talked to Brian today. Brian Deegan, he didn't want to come on the show, but I talked to Brian and got, you know, his thoughts on it. Uh, Donnie Luce will come on from Yamaha and talk to his thoughts. I talked to Brennan Schofield about it. And. and the, 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 the first story was that Yamaha pressured this kid's dealer to to drop the claim. Otherwise, they're not going to get their franchise taken away or their bikes. That, that's it's, From the very get-go, I'm like, hold on. Donnie Luce, an amateur guy, Loretta Lynn, yeah. is going gonna, is gonna to take away a livelihood, close down a business in another, in country. another country? He's not, yeah. he's, because that's of a claim? In, that's coming in hot. Like Dude. That. Yeah. yeah. So, for me... That right away was like, no way. There's no chance that this could ever happen. And, you know, well, uh, Tater, the, I have a, um, I have a uh, Farago. We'll get there. There's Speaking impediment? Of, there's a set. What are you trying to We'll get there. We'll get there. set of, it's you see it? Farago sound too? My bad. I should have totally ran this for you. Farago. 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 What is a Farago? It's like a Ferrari. It's just better. Um, Ferrari can, that goes. Can the you hell play? Are you talking about? Can you play uh, the Yamaha clip? It says Yamaha on it. Yep. All right. Here's Brendan Schofield from the interview for me. Okay. So, but for the record, though, we don't know that. We don't know exactly. You and I both don't know. The the dealership exactly told you. How. Yeah, the dealership told you Yamaha did it, but it could have been Matt Walker texting your dealership and saying this is what they're going to do. You know what I mean? Like yep. that's the part where it's a little cloudy. We don't exactly know. We know what the dealership told you, and we know, yeah. what, but we don't know how that happened. Yeah, exactly. That's kind of up in the air. We're not sure on that one. Right. Because that seems unbelievable. I'm not calling you a liar, Brandon, because I know the dealership told you, but it seems unbelievable. <laughs> well, first of all, I think your dealership guy comes across really shitty in this, and that sucks for you guys, for you and your dad. Yeah. That sucks. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Second of all, 
I, I you know, I, I just find it hard to believe that Donnie, who I know a little bit, can actually threaten a dealership. That that seems insane. Uh, but I'm trying yeah. to get to the bottom of it as we speak. So, um, but you know, I know Yamaha USA is not happy, and they're trying to figure out what happened. There was another event at the ranch this week, so communication made it hard to figure out. But so, Brennan says he doesn't know right. that Yamaha contacted his dealer, and 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 here's the thing: the Yamaha dealer was there. He was. So the, it's not like he's contacting Canada. The guy was there in the pit. The only thing we know is that Matt Walker did contact the dealer. And we're going to have Matt on here, so we'll ask him. Yeah. Matt was the only person I could think of that would tell the dealer, hey, man, Yamaha is going to take your bikes away. Because Brennan admits Yamaha, he doesn't know Yamaha. To me, to to me the biggest question in this whole deal is who talked to the dealer. I, I don't know. Has anybody got that answer? From yes. Any, who? Uh, the dealer said nobody talked to him okay. about pulling any bikes or any support. The, so the dealer said he was never contacted. Never contacted. Brennan's saying he was, though. Brennan says the dealer said that to him. Okay. So there's a big disconnect there. So something, someone's Somebody's bullshitting. Somebody's either wrong or lying. That's Th- the only options. Thank you. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, but again, it, it's the, the original thing was Yamaha contacted the dealer to, th- to get their, no. Even Brennan in that clip doesn't know how it happened or if it happened. Just he knows what the dealer told him. Does Brennan, does Brennan definitely still not have support from his dealer anymore over this? Yes. Apparently, Brennan told me the dealer is not supporting him over this. There's a little bit of gray why area is the dealer, in that also. Why is the dealer angry? Uh, the dealer, apparently, the dealer side of this, who I did not get to talk to, but I left a voicemail with him and a text. Okay. But Yamaha Canada spoke to this dealer. The dealer says, I was always getting the bikes back anyways. Okay. I didn't pull any bikes. I was always getting them back. So Brennan telling me I got to give my bikes back is correct. However, nothing from the claim. Not and from the claim. The timeline fits. The, the where timeline where it fits after Walton, the yes. kid has to give his bikes back. Yes. But they're not being taken back for this. Correct. And again, Brennan seems like a really good kid, well-spoken. You know, So I'm not calling him a liar in all of this, but he's 17, and I think there's blurry facts in here, in this thing. Now, if I have a criticism of this, again, uh, I think the kid should have the bike. Tim Cotter from MX Sports pulled Brennan into a room where there was an AMA official, Mike Burkeen. Burkeen, Mike Burkeen. Burkeen was an AMA official. He yeah. was in there. Brennan, is not, Brennan told me Deegan and Tim Cotter were in there. This is after the claim was made. Mm-hmm. But there was more than just those people, two people in there. I don't think Tim Cotter, who's a good guy, I liked him, should have said, hey, come up and meet me with Brian Deegan. But that, the AMA guy was there also. Yes, yes. There was an yeah, AMA, AMA guy, guy there, there also. Yep, yep. Which is an important part that hasn't been reported on enough, I think. No, absolutely. And Mike Burkeen has gone on the record as saying that. He was there. He was in the room. Tim Cotter didn't threaten the kid. You know, nothing, none of that. Um, uh, but uh, wanted to make sure that he did want to make this claim. I don't feel like Tim should have brought the kid in the room with the, with the, with the mini dads, with the mini dad. This is what I'm a father. You know? Yeah. Okay. When all this is happening, I'm in it. I'm in the mix. Like I know that my kid raised seventeen thousand yeah. dollars by himself. Mm-hmm. This is an important yep. aspect to my Loretta Lynn's trip. I'm all up in this, and he's just magically not around. It's just weird to me as the, a dad. Brennan told me his dad was off getting water to wash the bikes when I'm he just, was when he was summoned to the to the to the to the AMA room. I don't so, know, man. Um, so. Brian, I and speaking, lean, I would lean towards your way of thinking on it, that, in, especially if I hear any. If there's any controversy, okay, I'm yeah, a mad and he went sprint. up to the trailer yeah, yeah. more than once. Yeah, as soon as he gets called, you're there. Yeah. So <laughs> if you missed the first time, I understand that. But now, first time he the went up, snowballs to, rolling, No, no, the first right? time, Brandon says he went up to make the claim. Said, "I want to claim the bike." They said, "Okay, where's the money? Here's the money," and it was Don. He left. There was no problem with the initial claim. AMA was professional. Everyone handled it fine. It was then summoned back up with Tim. And Brian Deegan, I don't think that should have happened because rule's a rule, but yeah, whatever. It's done, it's done. But having said that, Tim didn't pressure the kid. AMA guy was in the room, which Brennan didn't tell me, but AMA guy testifies he was in the room. Mm-hmm. And Deegan himself to- told me that he spoke to the kid. Now, pass back up. Brennan admits to me that <laughs> Deegan and the kid got into it at Southwick. They, cl- they cleaned each other out. Brennan admits this. Brian says there's more to it. There's a history oh, of, oh, this is this is your shit. This is your amateur my, shit. My yeah, shit? your amateur motocross shit that you and your kid are balls deep in. So, go ahead. I'll, okay. Go ahead. So there's, a, there's <laughs> been comments. There's been things done. 
down the way between Hayden and this Brennan Schofield, right? Okay, whatever. I don't care. Kind of doesn't matter, though. Doesn't matter. Nope. Brian does not think this kid raised the money to make this claim. Also doesn't matter. And I told Brian on the phone, you heard me talking to him, um, Max, this afternoon when I, when I was on the phone, I don't care. Yeah. Like, like it, when I pay my rent, yeah. the, the, my landlord is not like, you didn't raise this well, money. I'm like, well, no, I was paid by Western Power Sports. They gave me the money yeah, yeah. and I paid you. But, like, I mean, even if you robbed the bank, you shouldn't be doing that. But well, that, that's it doesn't illegal, matter. Though. No, that's I know. Illegal. I know. But I'm saying like, no one should qu- – Brian was saying the motor guy, this kid's motor guy put the money up. And, and that may be true. Yeah, and? Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter to oh. me. Doesn't matter. Doesn't the money's there at the time. Money's of the claim, there. The job's done. That's it. And yeah. so Brian's point, and I, I like Deegan. He's fine. Him and I have had some calls recently. I'm not fully on board with all the vlogs, but whatever. That's, we can agree to disagree on that. Uh, I've known Brian since he rode for Motor Triple X in 1997. I pitted with him almost every weekend. Uh, I still don't think Brian should have talked to the kid in the room, and I don't care where the money comes from. I don't from. know what Brian said or didn't say, so right. I'm not even going to go down that road. If he was like, you know, over the line or something, great. But to me, it's like, all of this was because they didn't want the kid to claim the bike. End of story. They didn't want him to do it. Yamaha didn't want him to do it. I'm assuming Brian didn't want him to do it. I get all that. Me, like, but none of that matters. Like, there's a rule in place because of this. We know you don't want to do it. That's why you shouldn't put a factory level bike out on the racetrack. Is because this is black and white. It's not like there's an appeal process or like, yeah. Well, we're gonna submit a claim. No, no, no. Yeah. Here's the money. Here's the bike. It could be any bike yeah. on the racetrack. Yeah. yeah. It, it's really cut and dry to me. And also, too, let's go with this. Everybody said, oh, he must be cheating then if they don't want to give him the bike. No. no I don't think I he's cheating. And Nobody, I do not think so, is cheating. And either. I nope. just want to paint this picture, too. So people are like, oh, he should have this or this. It's a lot easier for a team like Star. They have every engine um, spec just blueprinted. Everything's the same, right? It's a lot easier to give Hayden what they already have versus try to come up with something just special for him. So... Granted, this hasn't happened in years, right? So it's kind of died down. No Unless he got a bike claimed, and I think I was, was say when was what, the last? Uh, and claim? then uh, didn't uh, there was a Cowie? I think claimed. Uh, anyway, I, I just I, think that no one thought, no one has been thinking about doing this for so long since the Alessi days, right? Yeah. There's no beefs with anybody really, and but uh, I mean, well, hold on, okay. So I'm just thinking about Star Racing, where they have all of these engines. Easier just to. Give Hayden, okay, we're going to take this off the shelf, give it to Hayden versus, hey, we got to go develop uh, a Vortex map for this GYTR head. we got to do all this stuff for Hayden. It's a lot, just turnkey, here's an engine, mm-hmm. go race. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. And then no one was thinking he's going to get protested. If you're not thinking that there's a claim rule and you're giving your kit, you're putting a factory bike in play, that's a really bad and move. And here's food for thought really as well. really bad move. So after this whole claim was done, okay, we're revoking it, we're not taking it, they switched out the engine, mm-hmm. put a GYTR engine in it, and my family and I watched Hayden smoke everybody the last yeah. moto. Yeah, and, so and he I doesn't f- need. It doesn't but, matter if he's it, it, we're, right. I don't think Hayden's winning because his bike is right. better than everybody. That's but I'm not just trying point. to because yeah, yeah. I can forecast well, what's about to go down yeah, over on Vital. The the average person watching at home that may not be as clued into the sport, I get it. Like that's who you're talking to and that whatever. I don't think that I, I don't care. It's not about Hayden's performance, not about anything. I just think that if you allow this to happen, if you're gonna say like, well, we want to do all that well, there's a rule like Yeah. You wanna know what this happens? Is this there. is life, okay? When there is a no stop signs on a street and someone dies and it's a it's a two way stop, they put a four way stop in because they have to learn from something, right? So this last weekend, we're all going to learn from this, and I bet you $10,000 will never happen again the way it goes down. Well, they should raise the price on the claiming. Okay, I have a question. Legitimately should raise the price on that. I have a question. It's what? a lot of money. You know, you build bikes, Max. Yeah. Steve, what if, and, and I don't know, I don't expect you to be able to answer this. Oh. If you're Brian, right, and you're not happy, you don't want this to happen, I'm sure nobody involved wearing a blue shirt wanted this to happen. Yeah. That's pretty fair, right? You just say... No, no. And what what does MX Sports do in that scenario? Like, mm-hmm. what do they do? You're disqualified? Okay, no problem. I, I don't know. Yeah, I don't yeah, need your yeah. amateur national yeah. championship. That's right. a good question. Like, I don't yeah. care. Right? Great, great, great question. Yeah. What are they going to say? Yeah. Uh, we're taking you to court. Great. Judge is going to be like, uh, yeah, that rule. I, I don't care what that rule is. That's not law. Like, yeah. the guy's not allowed to take your bike because he brought seventeen grand. Like, right, that's right. your property. No, yeah, get the hell for out sure. Of here. For sure. I guess you get disqualified. Yeah, yeah. And, and it, so if you want the bike that bad, yeah. 
Say piss off. I'm out of yeah. here. We're going home. Right. But then that really tells right. you that you're cheating. I don't think you're cheating. I just think but I'm just saying. Star, it looks like it's, it's it looks set, like you're it sets the narrative yeah. a little bit, though. But, I see what you're saying. Like but, you know, that. Brian's thing was like, hey, the motor guy put the money up. The motor guy wants to take the bike apart. I'm sure he does. None of that matters. Yeah, yeah. that's great. I, great. Like, yeah. Again, but I'm saying if you're a star and you have that tech, you don't want it getting right. out. You made a mistake. Yeah. You shouldn't have put that bike in play. Just say we're out of here. Yeah. Yeah. Take your ball and go home. He, yeah. Just leave. The, they could claim the bike, park it across from Deacon's motor home, and light it on fire. doesn't matter. So, again, I've called the Yamaha I've called the dealer up in, uh, in Canada and he's spoken to a few people now Michael Lindsay spoke to him I believe as well I, I talked to Brian Deegan I talked to Donnie Luce at Yamaha he's coming on here in a second uh Matt Walker's calling on I think if I had and I'm gonna ask Matt coming up if I had to bet on something that happened and the dealer is saying nobody from Yamaha called him and nothing happened Matt Walker who did text the dealer that supports Brennan I think Matt might have told the dealer, hey, they're, they could pull your support. They could do this. Don't do this. Because the dealer came down and pressured Brennan to drop the claim. Right. That is why Brennan dropped the claim. The dealer pressured him. I think Matt put pressure on the dealer. We'll talk to Matt here in a little bit. If I had to think of something, if I had to think of why this came to this, to this deal, you know. Um, Isn't it crazy? This is how good a star Yamaha is. Just think of all the shit yeah. storm that his things caused. Uh, Matthew's on four. Matthew, <laughs> what's up, man? You want to talk a little bit about this? Yeah, I do. Um, I think at the end of the day that, um, that probably there's a good chance there's probably just a factory ECU on that bike, and they're not going to let that get out. And then it also, too, the guy was obviously clearly pressured because he doesn't have the bike. So but he was pressured from his dealer. Yeah, he was pr pressured from his dealer. When he left the room with Tim Cotter and Brian Deegan, he was still making the claim. Nothing got dropped. So let me just tell you something about ECUs because so. I know about this. It doesn't matter what they put in that Vortex ECU because that's what they run. I have experience with this. You can't draw. You can't look inside that and say, oh, look what they're doing. You yeah. can't draw it out. You can overlay something over that and just say cancel it out, but you can't look at it physically and see what but, it is. But none of that stuff thanks, in the thanks for the call. Thanks. None of that stuff in the factory ECU matters unless you have the parts to accommodate the well, factory ECU. I told Brennan, look, I think if you if you claim that bike and you rode it, it's going to blow up soon, and you're not going to be able to replace parts on it. But again, look, not it, his problem. It doesn't, doesn't matter. matter. The kid doesn't wants matter. to ride it. I get it. I that's awesome. Like the kid raised the money. He did it. He should have the bike. And it doesn't matter if it blows up two hours no, no. later. Yeah, yeah, no, is no. he was he is he running like an off the shelf vortex? I mean, whatever map I know, but is it a yes. production yes. vortex? Okay. See, to me that it's whatever, right? I had a Suzuki factory ECU from Correct. Chad, right? I ran it the year That's after different. Chad. That ECU was amazing, right? Like it revved way past, like it was insane, right? And I fought Buzzard to the death to keep it, and I'm like, I'll put stickers on it, I'll wrap it in masking tape, I'll do whatever you want. Like he's like, yeah, fine, nobody can tell. So, yeah, but being a Vortex, it's like... Right. The, the people think, like, if they get an ECU, they can look and see what the mapping is. You can't. It's locked. Like, you can't do it. So you just got to, like, put your own stuff inside of it. Um, so that's where we're at with this. Like, again, I I'm supported by Yamaha, so you want to call me a shill? Go ahead. The dealer is on the record as saying nobody from Yamaha called him. He's on the record. Mike Burkeen is on the record as saying he was in the room. Star is on the record as saying we let the bike go. I, my biggest it, question is why did the dealer pressure Brennan into n dropping uh, it? I uh, will talk to Matt, but yeah. I, think, I, I know yeah, I, I, yeah. I really don't panicked. know. Yeah, I'm just yeah, right. I just think it's because it's a bad. I look. I think it's a bad look. Dealer I think the panic. dealer said it's a bad look. It's not going to go well for you. The blah blah blah. Just like I said, you like know? and he dropped the claim, and that should have been the end of it. Yeah, that's just the end of it. A kid made a claim. His buddies that give him help said, "Don't do it." He changed his mind. End of story. Yeah, but it's instead, over. you two people run to this stuff. And this is what we get. But like, there's also the side of where Yamaha did, or maybe they didn't, promise him things for doing this. As not as a, if you do this, then it right. was thank you for doing this. Now yeah, we'll and do this. We're gonna right? talk to Donnie about important. that. Yeah, that's we're gonna, no, that that that's gonna come out here with Donnie uh, shortly. Absolutely, there are some things that Yamaha said, but it was in regards to problems the kid was already having earlier in yeah. the week, which again Brennan admitted to me in our phone call. And that's a big difference. Versus bribing or rewarding, right? It's right, like, yeah, if right, you, like right. don't do this, we'll give you this. And he's like, after the fact, okay, thank you for doing that. We're gonna we're right. gonna help you out. Like that, that's a big difference right. to me. Jonah, what's up, man? Hey, how are you guys? Good. Uh, I just kind of wanted to chime in. Um, of course, you know we could be splitting hairs all day, but 
I just kind of feel like there was definitely foul play here. I mean, not even in terms of the engine or parts, whatever you want to go with, that were using that bike, but just in terms of the Matt Walker and the Yamaha guys. I mean, there's a reason why that kid doesn't have the bike, and that's because he was getting cornered and why he was being cornered. Obviously, we get that. They don't want certain things getting out there, but I just feel like the way it was conducted, there's some foul play going on. And well, Brennan, kind of to- Brennan says he dropped the claim because the dealer, the dealer told him it was you know not a good thing to do and you should drop this and and this and that. Correct. Yeah. Right. And I feel like the dealer was receiving some sort of. The dealer says he wasn't, and it, that'll that's going to come out. The dealer says he was not. Okay. So well, yeah, looks like someone did their due diligence, and I did not. But thank you guys for having me. All on. right. Thanks, Here, thanks, Jonah. Here's another thank aspect. You. Just because something's legal and you can take this for whatever, doesn't mean that you should do it, right? That's what I'm saying. Like, sure, marijuana is legal in California. Am I going to do it? Nah. That's from Jurassic Park. <laughs> is it? Yeah, you get so caught up in the things that you can do that you never stop to think if you should. Right. Yeah, Jeff Goldblum. Dr. Jeff so Goldblum. this is what I'm saying. Sure, <laughs> it's a legal thing to do. The kid had every right to do it. Should he do it? And I think the people around him that were in the industry are explaining to this kid, hey, here's some freaking reasons why maybe you shouldn't do this, yeah, brother. Uh, I, I know. Yeah, I'm just yeah, yeah. saying. He's not a factory-supported guy. so well, That's what I'm yeah, saying. If you want to go right. this path to be a racer professionally and do this as your job, maybe this isn't the exact thing you should be doing. Uh, a Cherubis USA industry leader in aftermarket dirt bike plastics and accessories with over 40 years' experience. Cooper Webb, Adam C. Cirillo, Justin Barsha, Anderson, many others along the way use a chair bees. They fine-tune their products to offer the highest level of performance. Discards, frame guards, chain blocks, slider kits. Max, you build, you rebuild a lot of bikes. I do. A chair plastic fits perfect. It, it does. It really does. It no does. drilling, no grinding, no nothing. Very few times you have to do anything, if ever. Ever. If ever. Wow. A Cherubis USA, <laughs> out of Cherubis USA, uh, bringing you our first guest of the night, this gentleman, Yamaha amateur support uh, coordinator for over 15 years and uh, kind of been dragged through the mud a little bit on this, and we wanted to go right to the source and figure out what happened down there at the ranch. Donnie, what's going on? Donnie Luce, how are you? I'm doing just fine. How about yourself? I'm good. Thanks for coming on. Appreciate it. There is so much to unpack here, I guess, but first of all, you're down at Loretta's for the quad nationals and i was there in 1998 by the way donnie i had to go there all week too uh do you have any idea the shitstorm that is going on with your name and with all this controversy no i think anybody knows when you're at loretta's you're kind of in a in a hole there so you don't really see what's going on until you know i get back on the and get service on the way home to the airport but yeah i was uh it was quite uh you know two and a half weeks down there at the ranch it's a long time and you know it's it's draining on day by day right so brendan schofield comes out with this story uh about trying to claim brian deegan's bike and you get thrown into this because at some point brendan says that uh you and matt walker are talking uh underneath the motorhome and he was summoned over by matt to meet with you take it from there donnie from your end of things yeah I, i guess um I was sitting there talking with Matt, trying to get a better understanding if he knew what why um, Brendan was wanting to claim the bike. And as we were sitting there talking, um, you know, Matt said, "Hold on, I think they just drove by." And uh, him and his dad, and I think uh, Derek, his engine builder, were um, by there, and they came over and we started talking. And that's kind of what what it, where it all started. And what what did you ask Brendan, or how, what what did you say to Brendan about this claim? Well, I think um, at the time. It, um, I let, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, got something in my throat. I let Matt take the lead, and he kind of uh, asked the question, you know, what, you know, what was going on and why he decided to do it. And Brendan's comments basically were like what he uh, spelled out, that he wanted to, to ride a factory bike, and, and his intentions were to, you know, take it up to Canada and race it the following week up there. So, you know, after talking with them for, just a few moments, um, it was clear that nothing that we said was really going to change his mind. He was cr- kind of set in stone. And, but as we were sitting there talking, you know, he had, he had told me about some other issues that he had been having with his, his other uh, bikes. At, and uh, so I started to ask him a little bit more questions about that. And mm-hmm. um, he basically said that he'd been having some issues. So we, we, sat down and I was trying to ask him questions where, you know, what parts were to use and I'd like to learn a little bit more and maybe I could, 
you know, offer some assistance through our trackside support to figure out, you know, what um, he could do to maybe uh, fix his solution long term. So at the same time, mm-hmm. you know, he, you know, he said he had those two bikes that were not running, and I said, well, you know, maybe I can uh, get access to two engines for him, and then trying to help get him back on track. That's kind of one of my roles here at Yamaha is to try to, you know, put out fires, mm-hmm. and this was a big one for sure. Did you hear the dealer come by and talk to Brennan about dropping his claim? Were you a part of that conversation? Yeah, actually, when we were talking, um, just you know, we were about, you know, just after Brennan explained, you know, what his goals were and everything, and when we were sitting there talking, just like I said, about the, you know, the other issues that he was having, mm-hmm. that's when uh, his dealer was introduced. Um, he made a brief statement to uh, Brennan and then asked if he could speak with Brennan's dad. And then those two went off and had a, a brief discussion. And then they came back, and uh, his dad announced that he was going to withdraw the, the claim. Yeah, Brendan told me earlier in the week he was having some problems with motors with his bikes, and earlier in the week he had swung by and talked to somebody at Yamaha about the issues they had. So I guess it wasn't you, though, from what I understand. It was just maybe another no, tech guy. Yeah. I don't don't recall him talking to him early in the week, but we did have a group of tech services that mm-hmm. were on site. Um, you know, having questions with a lot of the racers and consumers that were on site. So I believe those conversations were with them. I saw a list that his name was on there to speak to. So I believe that 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 came through um, our tech service group that was on site. You know, most of them were from Japan. So after talking to him about the claim and, and why he wants to do it and you seeing that the kid just wants to ride a factory bike, at no point, though, Donnie, did you or, well, I guess just you, as a representative of Yamaha, say, hey, we're, you know, because the dealer was there. Again, this dealer in Canada was there from New Brunswick. Chris, his name is Chris. Uh, you didn't say, Chris, I'm not. Pu- I'm pulling your support. I'm pulling your franchise. I'm pulling any anything like that, Donnie. No, I, I, that was never communicated, uh, you know, by me. Um, I know I heard a little bit of that, that, you know, we were applying the pressure from YMUS directly to Canada, and I can assure you that never happened. It was... Mm-hmm. It was 8.30 at, on, on a Friday night. You know, things that in the corporate world don't really uh, happen that quick. And, uh, you know, that, right. that conversation or that pressure wasn't applied from myself or anybody from YMUS. And, and you know, that's one of the things that Brennan said. And, and as I said earlier, I think that I think Matt Walker, who is supposed to be coming on, I think, some, I think Matt told the dealer, this is what could happen, this is what could, this is what could be done, and and the kid ran with it. I think, I, unless Brennan is just outright lying, which I don't know if he is. I, I don't know. The dealer has kind of said like none of that really happened. I haven't spoken to the dealer, so I can't speak to that. But somehow this message really got messed up, Donnie. Somewhere in here. Yeah, agreed. Um, do you do you? How do you feel about the claiming rule, Donnie? As an amateur guy for Yamaha for a lot of years, how do you feel about it? I think there there are some definitely benefits to to the rule. Uh, I can't say I'm a, I'm opposed to it by any means. I mean, there has been bikes out there that I feel um, were also, you know, highly sought after to um, get potentially get claimed, and it's never happened until you know this particular weekend. So, unfortunately, it, it happened, and you know, we'd like to uh, wish our record would still um, be, a, you know, a thousand and not uh, uh, and say we didn't have to have a protest or a claim against us. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's it's. Uh, I can you know again. I think the kid should have the bike. JT does too. But you know, regardless, how um, how was the how was Brennan and the father? Uh, I think it's Craig. I think the guy uh, father's name is Craig. How how were they to talk to around the Matt Walker's place? Um, I they they were uh, you know kind of you know straightforward. They mm-hmm. didn't have any no issues really. I mean, everybody's emotions was a little bit heightened at the time, you know, because of you know the chain of events that was potentially happening or in in the midst of happening so i think overall you know i didn't have any issue and we've had some communication myself with uh, craig um you know on some of the things that i promised and and uh, it's been totally professional at, at that point that's the kicker in all this so brennan rightly or wrongly mistakenly or not drags yamaha through the mud about threatening to pull the dealership and all of this however he got that message and Donnie, you're still going to help him out with the motors, with the help with these motors. You're still going to do what you said. Well, uh, you know, I, I could see you being. I, I mean, if, if I was in that position, I might be like, "Hey, man, 
thanks for this shit storm you started. <laughs> no thanks on those motors. But Donnie, you're you're going to help them. Yeah, I think I, on behalf of Yamaha, is going to do that. I mean, that's kind of one of our roles here, at, you know, in the running the amateur program and the Blue Crew program is that we try to support all the riders as best we can, you know, and there is a uh, goodwill that we try to extend to, to riders, you know, from time to time to help them keep uh, achieving their racing goals. Mm -hmm. But these motors weren't offered as a bribe to drop the claim. They were due to, after you realized the kid wasn't going to drop it, it was, hey, you've got some motor problems, right? Like, uh, you've been blowing these things up. What have you? What are you running? What are you doing? That was, that was the gist yeah. of this conversation. That was my intentions um, fully was, you know, um, I, I knew I wasn't going to change his mind. Mm -hmm. um, the motors were basically a you know, goodwill to try to help, you know, fix his, his problem long term. And uh, this, this felt like the right thing to do at the time. And, you know, um, unfortunately, it's, it's yeah. still been a challenge, but we'll, we'll get through it. How did you feel when, you know, I'm sure some people at Yamaha told you what was going on? People want you fired, Internet people People on Twitter want you banned from the race. I mean, <laughs> it's all over there, Donnie. I think, I think there's supposed to be a public hanging of you <laughs> at noon uh, at some point. How does that feel, man? How does that make you feel? And again, I don't know you that well. Kiefer, you know Donnie better than I do. You've, uh, you've been in the industry a long time. You've got a good reputation. Uh, how, how tough has this been on you? Yeah, it's been pretty tough. I'll, I'll be honest. It uh, definitely doesn't allow for uh, wrestle nights. Um, you know, at the, at the end of the day, I've invested, you know, 16 years here at Yamaha and another 18 at, at White Brothers. So I have a long um, reputation in the uh, industry that I've worked hard to build. And, you know, it is hurtful to, to see those comments, but I understand if everybody doesn't have all the information, how they can jump to those conclusions and, I just hope that they look at my full body of work and give me the benefit of the doubt moving forward. Yeah, I guess also, too, my question is there's a lot of uh, speculation out there that it was really heated in this meeting and that you didn't want to shake the guy's hand or something like that, and I think that's what people are going off of. So I guess if you can clear some of that up, too, as well. Honestly, I, you know, the conversations were going back and forth, and I don't recall – you know, the handshakes, I do recall Derek, you know, saying that he promised he wasn't, they wouldn't get into the engine and that. Um, I don't recall the handshake, but if I didn't, I, I totally apologize. That's not normally how I would react. I was a little bit, uh, you know, overwhelmed in the situation being my first time as well. So I was just trying to listen to all the information and there was a lot of information going around and, you know, emotions uh, definitely were heightened by all involved. Now, nah. I think all of this, I said this on Twitter, if Brian and or Star just say, see you later to the bike, Donnie, you're not going to do anything to stop that. You know, you're just there as an ambassador of Yamaha. Bobby Reagan Correct. told Wygant, we were ready to let the bike go. Brian wasn't stoked on it, but also told me a rule's a rule, but I, he wasn't stoked on it. So at some point, Yamaha and or, sorry, Yamaha and or Brian is not happy with the bike this whole thing stops, Donnie. If one of them, if they, one or both of them, just say no problem to me. Yeah, I agree. I, right. and maybe that's that's a mistake I made that um, I didn't uh, ask that point in question directly to Star. I assumed that you know they didn't wouldn't want that bike out there and the technology that mm -hmm. they used to you know build whatever combination that Hayden was um, riding. I don't, I'm not privy to, you know, what they um, do internally. Right. Uh, I'm there to monitor their efforts, you know, when, when they race. Uh, Donnie Luce brought to you by Cherbies USA at a Cherbies USA. Please check them out. Great plastic, great company. Uh, Lone Wolf there uh, doing a good job with, uh, with everything at Cherbies. So, uh, yeah, I think it's admirable, Donnie, that you're still going to provide some support to Brennan like you promised and through Yamaha. And uh, mm -hmm. um, I don't know where this thing went sideways. Like, I don't know how – I mean, Brennan started. Brennan Schofield, who seems like a good kid, Canadian kid, uh, uh, started this with one interview, and, I, I, yeah, it just seems like there's so much here that went sideways, and un that's unbelievable at the same time. It's funny to me that no one wants to claim, like, Ryder D's bike or something like that, which is an awfully good machine as right, well. Right, right. Like, and it just so happens, I think – why this happened this kid saved seventeen thousand dollars to get a star motorcycle and i think 
we all have to think about this is how good or the perception of this bike is out yeah. there that this kid went through all this crap to get this specific bike. Yeah. Well, according to Brian, there's history between them, though, and maybe it was a bit of F you to Hayden and Brian, right? There's this history with this Brandon Schofield and, and, and Hayden. And Brandon admits that. Brandon, Brandon says that. So, but I'm not raising 17 grand to be an fu to get his motorcycle. I right. think I would do that in another another way. Yeah, yeah, maybe, maybe. <laughs> um, was the dealer? Did you talk to the dealer at all, Donnie? Did you speak to him much? Um, I haven't talked to him um, since you know that introduction and that meeting. Yep. Uh, you know, so as of right now, I've, I mean, honestly, I've been just buried from getting back from Loretta's from the ATV. So I'm just trying to do my other um, portion of my job and then um, kind of react to this. Wow, yeah, it's uh, it's a big one, man. Amateur uh, racing, let's yeah. go. What if, yeah. So somebody said, "What if Aiden Kiefer's bike got claimed?" Kiefer, go ahead. Seventeen G's, give it to me. Yeah. Okay. All I right. I mean, J this, listen, twisted Jamie built Aiden a really good engine, and it has part. It has an electronic water pump. Things that are not even out there. Yep. And I'm like, if it's the rule, I have to do it. Right. But obviously, I'm not star racing. Yeah, yeah. And it's... No, I'm just asking. I know you know, bike isn't that trick, but yeah. Yeah, I just think, you know, there's just a lot of money invested in this engine. And for them just to let it go, I think they were trying to like, oh, crap. Yeah. Right. Took them back a little bit, you know? <laughs> Donnie, when did you first turn on your phone? Was it, was it when you were there quad week and, and, and John Howell or Mike Ulrich or somebody from Travis Preston or somebody from Yamaha is saying... Ah uh, yeah, Donnie, can you give us a call? <laughs> What's it? Yeah, it was actually I think on Sunday Sunday night when yeah. I uh, actually got a call. Or I was traveling back to the hotel. Oh boy! Uh, yeah. And then we had to have a, or it was actually Saturday night. Excuse me. Yeah. Fortunately, the ATV race was just Saturday, so it was Saturday night when I got when I was driving to the hotel, and so it was a, uh, I think a nine nine o'clock um, conference call. So you know that's yeah. when it. You know, kind of all snowballed from there and, and then uh, yeah. a, a few sleepless nights. Oh, uh, that sucks. Yeah, it sucks for you, absolutely, to be put in this spot. I mean, what sucks yeah. is that we're having you on here and the dealer's going to be talking to Michael Lindsay, okay, with a statement. And I, I'm like I said, I tried to get hold of him. He wasn't. That's going to be like an hour and a half call then. Right. What sucks is <laughs> all of this is going to go on, okay, and it's going to show that Brennan was mistaken and this didn't happen. However, Donnie, in 2022 – there will still be some people that are like, Yamaha screwed that kid over. That's what sucks. You can't pull yeah. this back. That's what sucks. You know? I agree. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's too bad. Uh, it's, it's, it's too bad for everyone. Yeah. For the kid, yeah. for Yamaha, for Matt, for the Yamaha dealer, like everybody involved, it sucks. Yeah. Yep, yep. And Matt Walker's calling in later, so we'll, we'll talk to Matt about that. I, I got to ask him, like, what did you tell this dealer to make him pressure the kid and then – you know, all of that. So, Do we even know how the kid did at Walton? He uh, won a moto, I think. And so he's legit. Like, he's, yeah. yeah. He won C-Class at Loretta's last year. Oh, he did? Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. yeah. You know, so good rider. Yeah. Right? Obviously. Uh, Yeah. So, um, all right. Anything else for Donnie? JT? Hang in there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> don't go on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> don't go on Vital. Still don't do well, that. Don't read comments. <laughs> uh, maybe just, yeah, take a few days off. Why <laughs> Why aren't these YouTube people, Ping and GL, why aren't they calling Yamaha? What? To find out what happened. Oh, yeah. In this situation. Why, why, why do you take something that's a gnarly story? This is a crazy story. And just run with one side. That's where I don't understand. I don't that. think it's a side. I think they're just sharing their point of view. They're doing an editorial. Yeah. No, yeah. they can do that. Yeah. They're allowed to do that. I just, if you're going to do that. You're, do, you're, you're presenting a story. They're giving an opinion. Yes. There's two different things. Yes. Uh, I, just, I think people like Ping and GL as people or personalities. But they're so giving, they're going to go on They're their, giving their an opinion. opinion of something that didn't happen. Like Yamaha threatening this guy's deal. Like that didn't happen. That's well, an opinion. They're giving their opinion Doesn't on mean what they right. know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just, in the end, they would pay the price. If they're wrong, uh, yeah. you give an opinion on something that's not factual, you're wrong. Uh, I, uh, yeah, I don't that know. It happens every day, though. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's no, everywhere. Yeah, tomato, it. tomato. I get it. Pulitzer, Pulitzer. Pulitzer. <laughs> uh, uh, Donnie Luce, thank you for um, calling in. Thanks for setting the record straight. Appreciate it. I'm sorry you got to get dragged through this. That's for sure. It sucks for you. Like it's uh, not hard yeah. enough to be in a corporation. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and deal with corporate life than yeah. this. Before we go, Donnie, though, like there's a guy in plus forty. Oh shit! Uh, it's all right. Just get off the phone, Donnie. Hurry, he, hang up. He rides a Yamaha. Uh, he got yeah. smoked. 
He got smoked <laughs> in plus yeah, 40. Yeah, one bad dude, though. So Mike Brown is one bad dude. But, Donnie, he had 100 cc's less. <laughs> I don't care, Mike, Mike Brown. Is bad <laughs> I don't dude. care. I'm trying to get your. I'm trying to get Kiefer's support taken away, but Donnie, <laughs> Donnie's team no. Kiefer, clearly, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Kiefer is. He's impressive. I'll have to say, I I wish at 40 I was able to go as fast as he. Well, Donnie, on a on a three wheeler, you probably could. Ooh. Oh, that, now you're dating me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, get a three wheeler, and we'll we'll see how it goes. Was Donnie bound a three wheeler? Yeah. yeah. I didn't know that. What? No, Donnie. Please educate Kiefer. Yeah, that's that's old news. Are we Ascot? This is this is Ascot days, or what are we doing? I, I, nice Josh Hill uh, reference there. That's old news, right? Yeah. Yeah, that was that was a long time ago. It was all those tracks: Corona Raceway, Ascot, um, Riverside. You know, all the all the classics that are no longer with us. Yeah. Wow. You I didn't know. know this about Donnie. No. You need to get some education. I, yeah, on Donnie I guess Luce. You need to school up a little bit. I got some magazines. I think he's probably in some dirt of those wheels? magazines. Dirt wheels. I might have some dirt wheels in there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, thanks, Donnie. Thank you for coming on. Appreciate it. And uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, sorry to sorry you had to be stay off YouTube. Yeah, sorry you had to get yeah. dragged through this. Thanks, man. Thanks for the support, guys, and uh, wish you well. All right, thank See you, man. Ya. That's Donnie Luce from Yamaha. We have uh, we have Kale on three. He's a friend of the the Deegans. Kale, what's up, man? What's up, Steve? Hey, how are you? Yeah, what, what's, what's going on? I'm good. Um, I was just calling in just to like say my truth on the story. I was there the whole time. Is this like hold on? Is this like a Heather say your truth, or is this like a real yeah. truth? <laughs> you know, you know your truth. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what? No, uh, I, I, yeah, tell us, take us through it from your end of things. So basically, like this kid's just been like punk and Hayden for a while, and like I'm 17, he's 17. Hayden's trying to focus on racing, so like I just so it was like I, like he knows me, he knows who I am. I was at Loretta's the whole week seeing him around, and then um, that happened. And then uh, I seen him at, like, 9 o'clock at night, and I drove past him. Like, we stared at each other, and he said to come over. And I walked over to him, and then he told me, he's like, hey, the claim's off. I just wanted to let you know it wasn't me that wanted to do it. It wasn't my money. I don't want problems with any of you guys, all this. And then I was trying to shake my hand. I was just like, why would you do that? Why would you stress out all these people about it if you're just going to call it off? I asked who did it. He uh, started stuttering, and then I asked if it was a motor builder, and he just said, can we be good, and he tried to give me a high five, and I just gave him knuckles and walked off. But the whole thing about it is he's allowed to do this. Like, everybody's yeah. acting like, who put you up to that? Like, it's not like he's doing anything that's not I know, totally allowed to do. That's not my point. My point's just that he's lying, saying that it was only him that wanted to do it, right. saying his motor builder had nothing to do with it. He told me it wasn't his money. That's right. just what I'm saying. Man, right. it, it'd be yeah. disappointing if that was the truth, and we have the motor building on this YouTube thing. We have the kids saying one thing, and then it, uh, and then it comes out like the motor builder. To be fair, I do not know this guy at all, no idea. But the motor builder, I've been told from two different people, doesn't have the greatest reputation. Okay, That's all yeah. two people that I know have said but. that. That's all. Uh, again, I don't know the guy, but yeah. So, um, all right, Kale. Thanks for the call, man. Appreciate it. Good to know. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, yeah, man. It's. Amateur motocross, catch the fever. It's just uh, catch the fever. <laughs> wow. You know what? We are never going to see this again. It's not going to happen. Well, I think I I think they raised the price of these claiming rules. What I'm saying is, that. just like in life, you learn from mistakes. Things will change, yeah. evolve, right. and it gets. Are better. you guys with me though? That the nets. Are you guys nets oh, are here, dude? Why? Yeah, because one of me. because of your bitching, and two because people are flying off the burn. Con concerned about riders' safety. <laughs> you guys are with me though, like with. Tim shouldn't have brought the kid with Mike Burkeen and Deegan back. I, I don't like I'm, that part. I'm not as bad with it, okay. knowing that Mike Burkeen was in there. Okay. If it was just like you and Brian Deegan are in a room, the I'm going gonna, gonna to go look for a water, <laughs> and like Deegan gets to shake you down, I have a problem with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's, no, for sure. that's not that's what happened. That's not what happens. No. Meet the general. Right. Of <laughs> the you know, with the shoulder pads <laughs> with the spikes on it. The wombats in the, the, wombats in the, in the, in the river. <laughs> <laughs> if that happened, I have a problem with that. I do. Yeah, yeah, I do. Yeah, I, I, I think I agree with you. By the way, a lot of people are calling us oh and boy. saying that if the Deacons refuse the claim, it's a one-year suspension in the rule book. It's in there. Okay. So if you say screw you, we quit. Yeah. One-year suspension of so, amateur racing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See okay. you, Dilla. So, yeah. I'm going pro. Well, I, I, who knows at that point? Yeah, I, I don't know. But um, again, I talked to Brandon. I texted with his dad. Like they seem like nice people, but. Something got screwy here, and Brennan really should have. See, I don't like. Oh, but oh, sorry, I'm, okay. I didn't mean yeah. to cut you off. I don't like. 
and I, I maybe Kale's his name or whatever. I, I don't even know him. Yeah, could be greatest guy ever. I, but I don't like how there's all this tension. It's like we're staring each other down and like it's mad it, dog. It's like, like, amateur racing. It's, but it's like look yeah. at you. If been the guy wants to claim the bike, I don't care if his great uncle that doesn't know what dirt bikes are wants to claim. I'm mad dog he gave Keith for money. every time he rides by. Yeah. It doesn't matter. <laughs> he wears FXR. It doesn't I matter. Mad dog. It doesn't I can't matter. Let him just ride by. Whose money it is? It doesn't matter what their motive is. It doesn't. None of that is is relevant. If this kid is like. I'm going to do this. I'm attaching my name to it. Here's the money. That's all there is to it. Do you think – no, this is a fair question for me. And do you think it blows up as big if it's someone else besides Deegan? Uh, no. Yes, because if the kid does a video and says, I claimed Ryder D's bike and Kawasaki threatened to pull the dealer, like same words, just replace Yamaha you said with Kawasaki? No. I don't think so. I don't think so either. I don't think so. I think so for the fact that this is a pretty gnarly thing to drop a claim. I mean, it's gnarly, but it adds to it because it's Deegan, right? That's what I think. Yeah. I agree. Maybe. Uh, Matt Walker's calling in, though. Uh, uh, right? We're going to call him. We're uh, going to call Matt Walker. Yes. Okay, yeah, Matt Walker's calling in. I have some questions for Matt for sure. Chris Kiefer brought to you by the folks at decalmx.com. How's everything with decalmx? It's awesome. They built uh, or they made up some stuff for Aiden for Loretta Lens. looked awesome. Mm -hmm. His bike looked really good. Pulp of Mexico to save 20% off. Do you have a code? Yes. No. Pulp MX code. Use the Pulp MX code. Proud sponsor of Red Bull KTM. Rocks RNG Husqvarna off-road team as well. <laughs> Official license with all the OEMs. DecalMX.com. Bringing you Chris Kiefer on the show tonight. Thank you to those guys. And um, and for people that are wondering where are the boob shroud uh, graphics, I discontinued those. Yeah. you not. You, I felt you like that would it, be right? – um, just couldn't run those at Glen Helen with kids around. So I just yeah. felt like we just cut that out. Yeah. I feel Although like I would love to have that. Yep. We can't do it. I feel like that's a, uh, a good thing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I agree. Uh, Firepower Parts, too. Firepower Honda. Firepower, big part of WPS. Yep. They are going racing uh, with Max Yancey, Dean Wilson. Who else? What's the 250 guys. Yeah, who's the 250 guys? Still working on it. Oh, Yancey's 250 guy. Yeah. Yancey's 250? Guy. Yeah, Yancey's 250. Dino's 450. I think they got some spots open. Anyways, firepowerparts.com. 490-2531 is your Yamaha part number for the battery. It's a good battery. There it is. Uh, featherweight lithium batteries, uh, chains made in Japan. Firepowerparts.com. Please check it out uh, at your local dealer at motorsport.com. They offer a lot of products now at Firepower. These guys keep expanding. Every time I see, look at Firepower, they got something new. Well, you should see how much like the brand's expanding. It's crazy. Yeah. Like it, I, it's like nothing I've ever seen. I've been working there for 10 years, and I've seen a lot of brands grow from you know Sedona to Shinko to Fly to Firepower, go down the list. Uh, that one maybe surprised me the most it's on fire the name the name but sells it honestly in the battery side when you look at <laughs> side by sides the way dirt bikes are <laughs> that <laughs> brand is it's insane how are we doing we're good dylan Wright's coming up next perfect season dylan Wright. i did not see that coming winning all the motos just him being that good as a rider I mean, good job for him um he impressed me in, in mxgp when I watched him in person, right, he was solid results. Those guys haul ass, yeah, and he was like right in the mix. He was like eleventh like to fifteenth guy, right? He was like in ninth at times. Like he was, he was good. Like yeah. it impressed me because it's hard to jump in with those guys on tracks you've never ridden. Those we're guys gonna, have ridden those tracks a million times. We're gonna talk to. Uh, Can we talk about Finland? No. Okay. We're we're slammed. All right. But you want to talk to uh, Reed on one about AP? Yes. Reed, what's up? Uh, you want you got to talk to uh, Chris uh, Kiefer. Yeah, Chris, one of my buddies listens to you like you're God. So he <laughs> uh, wanted me to call and ask. Aaron Plessinger was running stock OEM KTM forks, like production ones. Do you think they were Air Forks or the 6500s at Unadilla? Well, uh, it wouldn't. There would be no sense for them just to put Air Fork caps and if they run a 6500 insert. So I kind of got some information. Um, he was running 48 millimeter air forks, but obviously they're not production based. They look production based, but inside, uh, it is not production based, but it was an air fork and they were, uh, down from 52 to 48 because they're searching for some front end feel, a little bit less rigidity on that bike. So as we all know, that setup hasn't been great for a lot of riders and I'm sure we can all see that on, on the TV. So. Uh, they're just searching for something, and from what I heard, too, like Cooper's been riding back east doing his, his fun thing, whatever he's doing, and he's on the same setup. So I think it's starting to trickle down a little bit to AP. This bike's uh, it's finicky. Global, yeah. too. Yeah, you Global. said the guys in Europe. Yeah, it's a real are, ball up. Aren't they're stoked. changing frames every weekend. Yeah. There's a lot of 
in the words of Chad Reed, searching going on. Like so just, just from trying the, everything. the production side of things, from the pivot bolt, swing arm pivot back, it's pretty rigid feeling for me. So one of the reasons why I didn't choose it to go to Loretta is just because when you're in a rut and it's choppy, it's a little bit unforgiving. And you watch, to you. Yeah, you watch Dungey ride, and he's a lot of side-to-side movement. He runs, a lo- he runs really low sag, too. So I just Always. think uh, they're just looking for some more feel, man. Uh, all right. Thanks for the call, man. Appreciate it. Thank you. Do you think yeah. – th- sorry, let me cut him off. Do you think that they were trying to set, get, get a better Supercross bike and then that created this harshness? For sure. They were trying to get less, I'm sorry, more rigidity out of the current frame because as a consumer, you have this nice, soft feeling frame, a lot of comfort, and then you have 50 hours on it and it's a wet noodle. Right. So, look, hey, we got to tighten that up a little bit. And I think they went a little too far in a direction where it's better on lean angle on throttle. It's not so wallowy, but yet when you get small bumps um, or just something really rough, it just feels really rigid is it twitchy like the honda no is? it's no. a different okay. type okay. yeah uh ogo power sports love the guys at ogo fly racing teamed up with ogo to make some bags uh whether it's the layover bag that i just got brand new layover bag they, they have out the 9800 the rig bag trucker bag mm-hmm. chris Kiefer's ogo power sports bag of choice uh they've got you covered in style they look great super functional backpack as well marks you you busted out the backpack yet uh, no, I, I wanted to, and I didn't get to switch it over yet. But I will next week, I good, promise. Good talk. Thank you. Uh, OGO Power Sports, email us using the contact form on pulpamex.com to pass on to OGO. We'll give you a pulp show deal. Thank you to the folks at OGO, and uh, they're welcoming our next guest on the show. This gentleman just had a perfect season. His, his teammate won the MX2 class. He, he's crushing it up there in Canada. I believe this makes four Canadian national titles. Dylan Wright, what's up, man? How are you? I'm good. How are you guys doing? We're good, man. That's four for you, right? Yeah, four. Uh, if you count my 250 championship yeah. in 2019. Yeah, right? we, we definitely count that. Uh, perfect season. Like, dude, wow. did you have – I mean, no way you thought you could do that. I mean, you know, you felt good, I'm sure. But at what point were you like, I want to win them all? Yeah. I mean, obviously, um, going into the season, I didn't have the best off season because I jacked my knee pretty bad in February. Mm-hmm. Um, so we were coming in like pretty far behind the eight ball heading into like May, um, right before the season. Um, we didn't have as much testing as we were like, so we didn't know really where we stood. Um, so, you know, going into the season, we kind of came in a little open-minded on, all right, we need to, you know, get through with my knees and then with the bike set up and everything. And, um, yeah, we started off the season strong. I was super comfy on the bike and honestly didn't change too much all season, just couple clicks here and there when we were changing tracks um but yeah like you say um the perfect season i didn't really start thinking about it too much till we came east because i've always struggled a little bit in the west but mm-hmm. then when i was able to sweep the west then i was like we came east and i was like all right this is you know this is more my shit coming east coast so um when we came here i was like uh, maybe i can do this thing and then i kept going i was taking it moto by moto and eventually you know you keep stacking them up and the confidence is there and you just kind of keep it going at some point, though, you hurt your ribs pretty good, right? Yeah, right before Moncton, actually. Uh, we went up and did, like, a dealer signing uh, with Easy Clean in the morning, and then they were having, like, an open practice. So I was like, oh, I might be able to jet over and get a couple laps in. Ended up landing in a soft spot, went over the bars, hit my rib real good. And I, I went to dig, and I was like, dude, I crashed pretty good. I think I'm all right, though. Uh, and then I got up the next morning, and I, I called him again. I was like, I'm, I'm going to have to go get checked out here. Like, I, I've broken a rib before, and I was like, dude, it's, it's not great. Um, but, yeah, I just put some tape on it and soldier through. Jeez, what a season. How, many, right. how many rounds was it? Uh, 20 races. Nine rounds. Yeah, yeah. yeah so 20, 20 total. motos, yeah. nine rounds. Because we do, like, two rounds where there's three 15-minute motos kind okay. of thing, like got sprint it. motos. Yeah, well, that takes me to the next question. What did you think of those? How would you like those? Yeah, um, they're okay. I, I could do without them, to be honest. Yeah. Um, I'm more of like an endurance guy. Um, you know, obviously I've worked on my sprint speed, but that's always been kind of my weakness. So, um, you know, we worked on that to just, you know, for those 15 minute motors, you get a bad start, you're pretty screwed. You got to kind of sprint and take, um, you know, some chances that normally you wouldn't have to take in a 30 minute moto generally. Um, but yeah, they're, I mean, they're good for the fans. I think the racing stays a little bit tighter. Um, like you guys know, sometimes in a 30 when it's mm-hmm. hot and humid out, you know, we get pretty spaced out and everybody's just kind of riding their own race. So I think for the fans, it's good. But on my side of things, I could do without them sometimes. JT, <laughs> could we have a couple nationals of 315s? Roxon would win. 
Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I'll do rocks and be unreal. I yeah. think the hardest part would be figuring out the TV. Yeah. I, I'm down. Yeah, yeah. No problem. Right. But I, I think TV would be, they would, I, we're having a really tough time getting it done as it is. <laughs> okay. Like, yeah. There are a lot of ins and outs already. We got to score three motos. Things are <laughs> not exactly going to plan if right. you haven't noticed. So yeah. uh, let's just, let's just work on that first. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's probably a good point. Uh, and then uh, your knee, are you getting some work done on your knee? You, you've battled through that too this year from what I understand. Yeah, so I've had some knee issues. I don't have ACLs in either of my knees, and then I ended up tearing my meniscus in the in February there. So I was having, like, problems with my knee dislocating for a bit in Florida. And I tried to, like, soldier through it for about a week, but my knee, my kid kept sliding off my femur. That doesn't so sound I, good. No. You're what? And, <laughs> no, it's, no, it's not good. It's, it's not great at all. But, uh, I'm not a I doctor. I but... home, seen my doctor and my therapist, and, you know, we just, strengthen the shit out of it and uh yeah put some tape on her and we got through the season but it's actually feels better and better now um you know i just kind of been really working on strength and um the whole season and obviously working on technique on the motorcycle you know to have it um to help as much as i can i've kind of just keep my knee bent because anytime my knee is is like straight and like a locked position um i'm pretty screwed but if i keep my knee bent generally i'm pretty good and uh like kiefer kiefer would enjoy that you know go back to the basics work on body position and try and keep your feet on the peg a little bit uh yeah so i mean i was going to ask you about your future plans you got motocross nations coming up in red bud that's great yeah. uh and you know we saw you do the mxgp season like we know you want to do more of that kind of stuff, but you got to get your knees fixed, dude. <laughs> yeah, that's the kind of thing. Um, as a moto guy, you know, you always have opportunities come up, and uh, it's just a matter of figuring out where the best time um, to get it done would be. Yeah. Um, like you say, I want to do motocross the nations and focus on that. Um, and then as of right now, I'm booked to go in right after motocross the nations and get – um, my knee's kind of fixed, but uh, you know, you know how moto goes. Sometimes you have stuff come up, and you know, I kind of soldier through it. I've, I've done it all year, so I was like, I, I already feel like he's out. In in <laughs> like last year, hey, you want to do some MXGPs? You know what? My knees are pretty good. My knees feel <laughs> I good. This, uh, I got this <laughs> yeah, sliding off the femur thing, yeah. but otherwise we're dying. Yeah, wow. yeah. He's, uh, he's got the tape ready. Yeah, and, a, little, a little bit of hot, a little bit of hockey tape. She's married. Yeah, no, exactly. And Kiefer getting married, right, Dylan? You're getting married. Home life. Yeah, a couple weeks, a couple weeks here. So we Dude. got the season over. So now the uh, the fiance is on me pretty good about getting some stuff done for that because I've been dropping the ball a little bit. <laughs> he's so, already yeah, married, dude. He's been unlocked for a while. Yeah. He's been unlocked for a while. Right. He's, he's already married. What if he's? Yeah. Well, COVID didn't help. We were supposed to do it like three years ago, and then COVID and then oh. all that stuff happened, and then gonna we put it off. So it's you know it's kind of been a long time coming. Gonna suck for the dance bride and groom dance when your femur slides yeah. off your tib. Babe, what's going on with your leg? <laughs> Don't worry. Yeah, no, My femur no just dislocated. <laughs> he's going to be yeah, like that guy no in Shallow Hell with Spina Bifida with the crutches dancing around. You yeah. Know? He's, he's like, the only guy dancing. Babe, babe the wait, we're dancing. We'll get to that later. That's just my femur. Calm down. Right. Just, he's just in riding femur. position yeah. the whole time he's dancing. <laughs> Let me show you something. <laughs> Whipping his leg out. What, uh, <laughs> Dylan, what was the closest you came to losing a moto? I do remember, I think Dags led one for a while. Uh, which one was it? Yeah, it was. I think it was Sandalee's second moto. Um, I really had a bad start. I think I was second last. I got pinched because the, the start's pretty tight there, and I took a gamble on the inside to go up, and I got pinched real bad. And then um, Tanner and I actually kind of hooked bars, and then um, so I was, like, almost dead last. And then I came through the field, and then I caught a pocket um, maybe about five or six laps in. I went down. Got past a bunch and then had to, you know, get back up. And I was down about 30 seconds, um, you know, about a quarter way into the moto. So that yeah. was a that was a rough one. I had to, you know, kind of dig deep and grind that one out. Um, uh, so that was that was one that I was nervous about. But it definitely wasn't the track that I was willing to lose the streak at because it's my home track and I grew up about five minutes from there. Yeah, but it's Dags' home track too. Dude, he's been he so. was winning. That's he's, it. Yeah. He's winning these. I look at the timing. Yeah, he's winning these races by thirty to a minute. Yeah, I saw one that was a minute. Like what? Yeah, yeah. It's and then I look at eighth. Eighth got lapped twice by him. <laughs> I don't think was that <laughs> no. Yeah. Like, like you see, seventeen laps, eighth yeah. place, fifteen laps. You're hey, like, what? Yeah. True story. Daytona. I got tenth. I got lapped twice. Yeah, tenth. Lap Dude. twice. Yeah. Ricky Carmichael, Kiefer, everybody. Kiefer got second, got beat by 30 yeah. seconds. <laughs> That's yeah. true. Just saying. Half a track. <laughs> uh, yeah. So do you um, – look, obviously uh, the Canadian Series lost a few guys. Jess Pettis 
One of the great riders got hurt before the season. Um, and, and and do we think, by the way, is Pettis going to be on the Diz Nation team now because Dags got hurt? Do we know that, Dylan? Can we can, can we confirm that? Um, That's what I'm hearing. I can't say too much. I know there's okay. – I think we'll probably find out this week because I think uh, Tanner and Jeff are kind of going to be, like, in that spot. Okay. And then I don't – personally, I don't even really know whose decision it comes up to. Probably Carl's, I guess, but uh, – um. I think so. Those two will kind of be battling out for that spot if Dags is out, um, I, which I, I think he's got a broken hand. I'm uh, yeah, not sure, but it was a gnarly one. I don't know if you guys. Seen I saw it. Yeah, we saw it. It was not good for T Dags. Yeah. Now, so my question was: no. so we lost a little bit of depth. Pettis got hurt. A couple guys didn't come back. That kind of stuff. But I still feel like T Dags stepped up this year from years past. I feel like he was better. Yeah, T Dags was T Dags was on it. It's probably. Um, the best I've seen him ride. I think, you know, he was gelling with his team and the bike, and mm-hmm. I think he liked his setup. You know how picky Dax is his setup. <laughs> yeah. I think he found something that, <laughs> that worked for him, and he was comfortable. And, I mean, honestly, he was second every moto. Like, right. for me to clinch it the weekend early, um, I had to win every moto to clinch it a weekend early because he literally finished second every moto. Yeah. Um, you know, so I think it just goes to show, like, he was – he was like on another level than he where he was previously, like last year per se. He was, yeah. uh, he was riding good, and uh, you know, I mean, all the guys were actually riding pretty good. Like Zach came up this weekend, and Tanner, you know, was giving him fits, and um, I think our, our guys are riding good up here, and mm-hmm. it's um, it's cool to see our sport, you know, have the Canadian depth, but we're just missing the U.S. depth right now of um, the guys like Phil and Gurky, yeah, those guys, those guys coming up, right. Um, so I don't know how much, like you talked to Zach before or whatever, Zach was making it very clear on Twitter and to me yeah. that he had nothing for you. You know, he's just retired, like, you know, like he's having fun and he wasn't going to beat you. And I don't know if you even saw any of that or if he talked to you about it, but he qualified fast as Dylan. I just, my question, I guess to you is like, did, were you like, oh shit? Like, like, look to me, it was never going to happen, but were you thinking like, oh, what all is Osborne ready, or how was the mood after he qualified quickest? Yeah, I think um, I've never been like the best qualifier either. Um, even in the GPS, if I qualified inside the top fifteen, I was like, okay, sweet, we're in for a top ten today. Um, so I've never been the best qualifier, but I think he's not super known for good qualifying either, if I remember correctly from his career. Yeah, yeah, no, he's not. So, no. um, yeah, not great. Was, yeah, you know. Yeah, so I was, I was also thinking, I'm like, man, does he have another gear when we go into the moto here? Yeah. Cause, um, you know, I didn't, I didn't know where he was. I know he's been riding a bit because I, I reached out um, when people, you know, because I had the undefeated streak and people were like, oh, you're coming up, I'm going to ruin it. And I just reached out to him. I was like, hey, dude, I think it's awesome you're coming up here. Like, um, it's super cool for the fans and the kids at the track to right. be able to watch a guy with his prestige, right? And I was like, it's, it's super cool for even me, you know, being able to race you. And I'm like, dude, there's no disrespect here. And then we actually went riding together on Friday before the race at a, just at a track not too far from Walton that I ended up knowing the owner. So we went out and right. rode a little bit together. So, um, so that was cool actually to kind of hang out with him because um, obviously he's done some amazing stuff in the U.S. and I have a lot of respect for him. So it was uh, it was super cool. But yeah, back to the race. I I, I didn't know where we we're going to be because we he actually was super smart and pulled in behind me in qualifying. Yeah, he said that. Literally yeah. just yeah. rode behind me the whole qualifying session. And I was like, all right. So he, yeah, he's got some race crafts. He's been around, you know, he'll follow me, find the lines around Walton because I've done a bunch of laps around there. And um, super smart. And I actually, I actually enjoyed towing him. It was, it was fun. You yeah. know, we, we had a good time and, um, you know, we respected each other, obviously. And it was, uh, it was good. Yeah. He told me he was, you know, like, yeah, he followed Dylan, got a, got a fast time. And then was like, yeah, I, I, I'm still not going to do anything in the motos, man. I lay one lap down, but that's it, guys. Like, I got to do this for 30 yeah, minutes. Cal- calm down, everybody. Yeah. You know, so uh, Dylan Wright on the show brought to you by the folks at OGO Power Sports. Yeah, I mean, uh, Dylan, you got to get out of there. No offense. Diggs is going to hate me saying this. Uh, maybe some Canadian guys, but, like, get the knee fixed. Uh, get married. You, you got anything? You, you want it? I mean, look, you make good money. I get it. It's, it's a comfy living. But you yeah, just Why went- do you always do that? What? Why do you always get on the Canadian guys about leaving to come here? What because they... he just went had a perfect season, dude. Right, but why can't he enjoy racing his dirt bike, make good amount of money, and be the guy well, he went for to his a... whole career? He went What's to MXGP last year. Obviously, he's got some ambitions. I just so... don't understand why people from Canada are always like, you got to go to these states. No, they don't. Just let them live in Canada and do their thing. Let them fly. Like, just relax. <laughs> 
<laughs> All right, Dylan, never mind. Just stay in Canada the rest of your life right. then. Go get a job in the mines when you're done. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm... Um, yeah, on your point, though, Steve, I think, you know, um, being Canadian, I'd love to go race somewhere else. But like you say, we make, you know, I make a pretty good living up here racing my dirt bike and having a job. And I don't think it's the secret to, um, you know, everybody listening that jobs aren't super easy to find in the U.S. Some some of these days here, you know, with teams and stuff. Um, yeah, they're not. And, yeah, like I said, you know, we make decent money up here racing our dirt bikes. But um, I don't, I'm not a stranger to say that, like, I'm not afraid to go race. Um, whether it's the GPs or AMA or, um, man, anywhere. I, I just enjoy going to ride my dirt bike wherever I can. And I really like going uh, to the U.S. or over to Europe, you know, and get my ass kicked a little bit, and it gives me a little bit more, uh, you know, stuff in the off season to work on because, um, you know, you eat a little bit of humble pie when you go over there and race against um, Tomac, Sexton, um, you know, Geyser, um, Hurlings. Um, I just try, you know, soak it in and, try and learn off those guys because uh, clearly they're doing something better than I am. Hey, so, Steve, if he races AMA National, let's say he lines up to Ironman and his knees are good, his femur's not falling off his knee or whatever. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, where, do, where do you put him? It's a deep field right now. Right. Uh, he, he's ridden Ironman before, though, and done That's pretty what well. That's I say, um, 8 to 12. That's really good. Yeah, eight to, I mean, don't you think? No, no, am I no crazy? that's what I'm saying. Like, I was yeah. going to put him anywhere between like ten to twelve. But okay, yeah. That's, I mean, those guys are gnarly. You look at Unadilla this weekend. Yeah, gnarly dudes are fifteenth. Uh, yeah, hey, with some of the guys coming back at Dilla too, it was gnarly. I watched yeah. great. I think it'd be there. I mean, look at Amart. Amart was like twelve all weekend. Yeah. Like I, I don't see why Dylan wouldn't be there or higher up. Yeah. Like if you put Amart in Canada, I don't think Amart goes perfect season. No. He wins. I think he wins. Yeah. But I don't think it's perfect seasons. And I watched Dylan race GPs, which we talked about before he came on. I was super impressed. I think I think nine to eleven is really doable right now. You get up past that, you get into the Craigs and Dungies and guys. That's, yeah. That's a that's a tall. Not to say he can't do it, but that's mm -hmm. a big ask. Mm -hmm. But past that, like I mean, you watch Benny. Benny was like nine ten yeah. week in a week out for a while. You know. Yeah. So. I, that, that's where I was kind of thinking Benny and Hartraft. I feel like Dylan is Benny Hartraft. And I would say level. I would say. In, Dylan would beat Hartraft. I, I right. do. Um, the tough part is we got a couple guys back now. Yeah. Dylan's back. Um, so or Dylan Ferrandis is yeah. back. Yeah. He would have beaten Mookie this weekend, I think. Those guys weren't their best yeah. by any means. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. Dylan, how's your bike? Like here in the states, they have you know obviously had some setup issues. They're struggling with some things. How's your setup? How much has it changed throughout the whole year? Um, yeah, like I said, we I went over to the GPs and I ran um, some settings over there that I liked. So I kind of transferred half and half because I gotta th we gotta think like our tracks aren't as wide open as the U.S. or over there. Our tracks are a little bit tighter, um, so we run a little bit of a softer setup. So for our tracks here, um, my setup's really good. But sometimes when we go outside of our box of Canadian Moto, we have to change our setup a bunch. But for our tracks here, I I really enjoy my motorcycle. Last year we was struggling just a little bit because I was running a little bit of like the old style um, or that 2020 setup because I really enjoyed that bike. And then they switched it, and then I was struggling a little bit of last year, so we did a lot of testing and um, stiffened the forks up a little bit. And I run a bunch of sag um, on the back to get the back end, just some stability um, out of Honda. And I actually run 20 mil offset um triple clamps just wow. to be able to like turn down at some of the lines here which u.s honda thinks i'm crazy sometimes but for us it it, it just works really good for us up here yeah because u.s side they run 24s mm -hmm. a lot of times so and it's he's going opposite. 20s yeah. yeah yeah they're raking it out he's pulling it in. trust me if you yeah. go to my text message thread there dylan a lot of dig texts a lot of digs. Yeah, yeah, hey, yeah. Kiefer. Right. Da, da, yeah. da. <laughs> Listen. Uh. <laughs> yes, I can imagine because we we've been trying um, we've been trying to get our bikes a little bit better. Um, you know, they switched the model on us last year, and then with not a lot of testing, so we're you know we're slowly getting better and better. But uh, like you know, Kiefer, it takes time, and especially mid season when you're doing well, you don't really want to change too too much a clicker here and there. Um, but yeah, yeah, we're. We're still improving our stuff where we can. Uh, OGO Power Sports bringing you Dylan Wright on the uh, show, the Canadian champion, uh, undefeated season. I was talking to Ryder McNabb, Manitoba Zone. We got a title. Manitoba's got a title. Yes, sir. Love yes, it. Sir. Finally got a title, Steve. Good to see it. <laughs> Manitoba on top. 
Uh, he told me you were like a big brother to him, uh, and he leans on you quite a bit. How's that relationship with Ryder McNabb? Yeah, it's awesome. I love the kid. Um, he's amazing. He's a grinder. He works hard. I like I like everything about him. He's um, He's got all the tools to be something really great. I always tell him, so you got more talent than me. Don't waste it, you know. Um, he works hard, and uh, yeah, like you say, he leans on me. I'm a, you know, he's 16. He, you know, he doesn't. Uh, he's young, and he's still learning the ropes a little bit. But uh, I just try and be there where I can for him. And even on the bad days, yeah. if I'm giving him shit or something, he, you know, we still go back and have a hug after the day, and um, we always figure it out. Um, but yeah, I sometimes I have to be, you know, sometimes the teams either not hard enough or you know i give it to him a little hard sometimes like a big brother kind of would and uh you know sometimes tough loves what a young kid needs these days to you know get a little toughen up especially he crashed pretty good before one race and i just sit down i was like all right dude you're either going to win the championship today or you're going to lose it so go out there don't be a wimp forget about your shoulder injury and just go out there and ride your dang dirt bike and you know it's sometimes a young kid that's all they need is a little bit of confidence Mm -hmm. um i just try and do the best that I can for him and mentor him. And, uh, yeah, I'm super proud of the kid. He got it done this year, and uh, he was solid. Yeah, 16 years old, national champion. Future's bright for Ryder McNabb, for sure. You know, he doesn't yes, have, yes, he very doesn't bright. Have a very femur bright. falling off his tib. Right, yeah, your shoulder, you don't need a shoulder. I got a femur that's falling <laughs> off my knee. You don't need your freaking shoulder. <laughs> well, listen, Dylan, man, thanks for coming on. I, I Get the hell out of Canada, man. You're a world-class talent. <laughs> get a GP ride. I go U.S. I don't know, man. Just, yeah, we'll get you a fly hey, racing have deal. To and... your, have to get your boy Myrtle on it, huh? Yeah, yeah, let's get Mertz on it. Mertz will figure it out, <laughs> right? Can we do that? Yeah. Do your job, Mertz. Yeah, what, is, what does Wright have to do to be, in your eyes, in your mind, Steve, to be better than Rollerball? Not possible. It's already too late. It's too late? Yep. Can't do it. Ten championships in Canada? Nope. 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 You're screwed, right? Yeah. I, I don't think hey yeah, but in Steve's defense, I don't think anybody's beaten a rollerball. That guy was that guy was gnarly. I've like I've heard some I've heard yeah. some stuff because I know Mike Harden fairly well. They rode a lot together. And that guy was an animal. Animal. So. That's a pretty tough task. Now, he rode three <laughs> classes in one day, three 30 min- six 30-minute motos. Oh, I didn't know that. Yes. Oh. At one point in the early 80s, they were doing three wow. classes a day. Holy crap. It would be, it would hey, be think about- 125, think locals, about- 250s, local, you know, like support I did, races. I did the two-class thing. Yeah. But, yeah, three. I'm right. Yeah. Think, about, think about the jump from a 125 to a 500. Yeah, oh, within geez. the span of a couple hours. Yeah, <laughs> although there's a good chance that rollerball ran more than 125 cc's for many of those years, apparently. But yeah, anyways, uh, legend rollerball, 42 time champion. Okay. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah. I mean, again, <laughs> they rolled three classes at Guess a day. I should do so my homework next time I open my mouth. Dylan doesn't have that chance, but but and rollerball podium to U.S. national three times, third overall at a U.S. national 500 class. Yeah. It's One less, of them was 250s. Yeah, but 500 less people. Don't Whatever. tell Glover that. Yeah. Glover will strike you down <laughs> right where you stand. Uh, thanks for calling in, Dylan. Congratulations, man. Great season. Uh, and uh, g- uh, congratulations on the wedding. I'll see you at those nations. You are officially bowing out of the pit bike of nations, correct? You, I, I, you got you helped us get a third last year, but I understand that yeah, you're well, not able to make it. T-Dags and I, T-Dags and I were in. I don't know where we're at with that. We sat down this weekend to chat. I don't know where we're at. Do you have custom Man, helmets? Idea now. Custom I, helmets again? We got a bronze medal the last time. We did. I, I still I still got that medal hanging. What a shit show that was! It was a complete shit show. Unbelievable. Dylan was good though. More importantly, yeah, more I, that was fun. That was one of the <laughs> funnest races I've done. That was faster. More importantly, Dylan <laughs> has a wife or fiance that's top three in the Canadian wives. Oh. Okay. Yes. Good to know. Yes. Top three. Well, top. I appreciate that. She's yeah. on the podium, brother. That. She might too. Good yeah. job. <laughs> Do you guys speak French to each other, Dylan, or, or is it English to each other? We're French for the most part, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. Um, we're working. We're working on. We're working on English, but um, okay. huh? yeah, I'm lucky. I'm fluent in right. French and English, and she's French, so we uh, at home we talk a lot of French. But hey, the one thing I did crack down on at first was like I wasn't having no French TV shows, though. That ain't happening. Nice. Not, yeah, I'd like to see that. Anyway. Yeah. French, French Canadian women not bad looking. Oh. No, not bad. Not looking. bad looking. No, no they are okay. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Jeez. Uh uh thanks, Dylan. Thanks for calling in, man. Congratulations. Great season. Yeah, thanks, Dylan. Appreciate it. All right. See thanks. Ya. That's Dylan Wright, everybody. Brought to you by OGO Power Sports. Good kid. Hell of a season.
Yeah. All of our, like you said, a minute. Sometimes he's winning by a minute. When he when he rides, it's like zero Fs. It's like yeah. balls out. He's loose. Yes. Very he's loose. loose. Yes. Uh, Johnny Matt, loose? Matt Walker is calling in here. Uh, we're going to call Matt Walker, I should say. But uh, before we do that, there's one, only one man that could possibly follow up uh, Dylan Wright, an undefeated Canadian champion, and is the fastest man in Piedmont. Oh, God. FMIP. <laughs> no. Well, hey, how's everybody doing? Right, what's happening, man? Good, good. I, I, I would... I was hoping that intro would be that there's only one person who could uh, take the lead ahead of Matt Walker. So I thought maybe that's what I was. Oh, was okay. Going with that. Yeah, that, that would have been good too. Um, uh, how's the teen your citizen bank account after the contingency that they paid oh, out? It, it's, uh, it, it took a hit about as hard as uh, Aiden did on the face of that uh, tabletop. <laughs> that his first mother. It was, it's, uh, yeah, I think, I think I currently have my, my checkbook has a concussion currently. It's recovering. At any We're point. In the plus forty, did you think? Oh boy, ah, Kiefer may have this at any point. Yeah, yeah, um, and then that gate dropped. No, you can't say no, that. No, I pulled whole shot two out of three times, I know, Randy. I know. I I tell you what, one of the like you remember one of the uh, one of the moments I was over there visiting with your family, and and you mentioned you know what I might do? I might have to just saw brown that last moto. You like last moto? I might have to saw. Brownie's wheel off. I was meant to saw his front wheel off, and and I told you if you're going to do that, you, you need to do it within the first three turns. <laughs> yeah, because that's where you get me. <laughs> you aren't seeing him after that. That's exactly Gotta be right. quick. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah Michelin. Exactly. Got it, got it. I'm sorry, Michelin. Uh, no. Michelin. You all right? Yeah. yeah. You're good. It's Michelin. Right, yeah. If you want to finish that, uh, where you're looking for <laughs> Michelin. <laughs> <laughs> you know those knobbies, those hey, Michelin hey. knobbies. Thank you. Thank you to the guy whose podcast is sponsored by Pirelli to correctly <laughs> pronounce Michelin. I appreciate it, JT. Hey, man, at Western Power Sports, we sell them all, buddy. Michelinman.com oh, forward slash motorcycle to learn more about the complete offering of Michelin motorcycle tires. And make sure to follow at Michelin Motorcycle on Instagram and Facebook, of course. Absolutely, man. I'm enjoying the show. I, I've already, I don't know if you've seen my tweet, but I'm going to say that you're up for a Pulpitzer prize. Oh, Pulpitzer. Uh, I like it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah Pulpitzer. Pulpitzer prize. Yeah. It's different from a Pulpy, which, mm -hmm. you know, they used to have those things, but uh, yeah. that's good. Hey, uh, look, I, a couple things. One, I owe you an apology. Uh, Robbie and I, my buddy Robbie and I went to Loretta Lens and we're hanging out with the keepers. I went to the beer tent. Uh, we had a good time. And, and one thing that I dropped the ball on, or dropped the drill on, actually, is that Nick Way has your drill motor there at Loretta Lance, and he was going to give it to me to get to you. And then uh, I thought, well, I could just get it to Kiefer. And uh, I never got it from Nick, so he still has it. Yeah, we I had a whole thing. Made, made, yeah, we had a whole thing planned. And uh, every time I went by there, Nick was, imagine this, he was a uh, mini-dad. Oh, mini dad moment. shock was, was off or something. something. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. he's out of, he's out of picking out gear for his kid, right, making sure that the gear looked right. But, yeah. Uh, Anyway, so my bad on that one. I heard, he, yeah, I heard he had the drill. He says he thinks he found my drill from 02, 2002, mm -hmm. and he wants to give it back to its yeah. rightful owner. It was, it was good. We, we had it. We were going we to – you know, I don't know if you know this, but sometimes I can be quite creative and think <laughs> to be quite productive. <laughs> oh, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So we're going to do a spiel where we had uh, I got the drill and so I'm dropping off the keepers, and then somehow he forgot it and – Lost forever, I but, just but want a uh, still photo of Steve's face when you're in here showing him start six times. I just want to bring that face back one more time. Oh, that was that was probably That's good that times. was the moment that I thought I had lost a 20-plus year friendship. <laughs> it was looking real rough. Good times. Good times. <laughs> with that. I, was, I was loving we, it. We, hey, we made him, or I, we, I'll say I, but we made him make him take, it, take his own headphones off. Look, there's, yeah, there's yeah. three levels yeah. of Steve that you know he's ramping up, okay? So the first one <laughs> is sarcasm. You get the sarcasm remark, right? Yeah. The second mm -hmm. one is you get a louder Steve, so the volume gets increased. And then when you know <laughs> shit's about to go south is silence. It's the silence. The headphones come off. I'm like, I'm getting the hell out of this state just, right now. You know what? Just we, we don't need to be everything. doesn't need to be a production around here. <laughs> Max, I don't know if you're aware of Randy. And his, you know, production values he has when he does things? Yes, yeah. I am very well right, aware. Right, yes. right, I'll call, I mean, I'll call it shenanigans. A uh, couple, couple of highlights from Loretta Lynn's, and I'll, I'll let you guys go. One, uh, Keeper, tell the story about the, uh, the, the academic sticker that you requested for, for Aiden at sign-up. <laughs> so at sign-up, they give <laughs> kids that are doing good in school, like A-plus stickers, and they run them on their front fender. Oh. 
So when I went up to the sign up lady, I go, hi, how you doing? Aiden Kiefer, blah, blah, blah. And I go, um, and she had the A plus stickers out. And I go, do you have any C plus stickers that I can put on my uh, <laughs> kids thing? And she's like, excuse me? I go, yeah, I'm just got an average student. You got any C plus stickers I can put on there? She's like, I didn't even smile. Just, yeah, just nothing. Nothing. Just nothing. <laughs> so the kids who get A plus at the homeschooling get a sticker? Yes, so right. the kids who don't go to school but so just. The, the kids the that the moms do the homework. Yeah, they yeah, get a+ yeah. Okay, right. they can play yeah. sticker. Okay, yeah, yeah, got, yeah. got it. Right, got it. All right. Which, 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 like I said on Keeper's podcast, honestly, they should just change the name of that class to the homeschool boy. Rather yeah. Than school yeah. Boy. College it's, boys out, homeschool uh, boys in. I, yeah. I was questioning exactly. the college big time. Yeah. Some class is called exactly. college. I'm like, hold on. <laughs> None of these people are in college. Steve texts me and goes, hey, do they have to show proof of their degree or their, their <laughs> <laughs> enrollment in college? Yeah. And yeah. I'm like, what? I, these, these gentlemen are not going to college. <laughs> yeah, there'd be, there'd, be, there'd be a lot of fast guys doing basket weaving, right? Yeah, so. yeah. Um, and then, yep. and then uh, one last thing I was going to ask. When Matt Walker comes on, and I know, I know there's a lot of controversial stuff and, and uh, regarding this whole scenario, but... And, and Keeper will appreciate this. You have to ask Matt if during any of these conversations he was wearing his camera Ray-Bans. Remember those, Keeper? Yes, yes. Camera Ray-Bans. He had a built-in video camera inside his sunglasses, and he really he can just turn them on. It was awesome. And then, I don't remember this. And then, and, then, and, and then when I walked up, and he was talking to you and Heather, and he said, hold on, hold, hold, hold on, Randy, hold on. And he reached up, took his glasses off, he activated them, turned them on. He said, all right, all right, what you got to say? Well, and then and I was standing on the paved road there, and I go, I said, yep, I heard the writer say that, that Matt Walker's dirt was just like this pavement out here. So he, he got so pissed off. He said, I turned my <laughs> sunglasses on for that. He was all mad at me. But anyway, uh, Michelin, hey, uh, uh, Starcross 6, by the way, yeah. Kiefer, I tested them. Read it all about on Kiefer Ring Testing or pulpamex.com. Pulpamex.com. Yeah. Starcross 6s are Absolutely. out, Randy. N not yeah, not, uh, not Chris Kiefer's uh, racing brand of choice, which I completely appreciate. And uh, and respect, but what I will say yeah, about Keeper having tested with him, no, I'm just saying having tested with him in the past is he will give you a 100% straight answer um, uh, on on product evaluation. So I greatly appreciate that and respect that. But in in uh, this is uh, final moto finish at Loretta Lens. Um, if you guys clear the telephone lines and Matt Walker is not eligible, um, I'd like to give away a set of Michelin Star Cross six tires for. The third caller. Uh, third caller. Third caller. Uh, <laughs> yeah, in honor of Keeper's last moto finish. It never stops. Yep, yep. Couldn't quite pull because, it across. Let the I good times roll. People two, don't forget. Yeah. Two, two, three. Yes. I like that, Randy. Yeah, yeah. Third caller. Yeah. I'm just, third third caller, caller gets a set of right Michelin now. Star Cross 6. 702-586-7857. Courtesy of the folks at Michelin and Randy Richardson. That's good stuff, Randall. I like that. We're going to yeah, dive into the Fly 2023 yeah. gear later with JT and Max. Oh. And can't, hey, it looks good. Yeah, it Kiefer's, good. It Kiefer's good. just going to have to just sit it, back. Uh, dark, I got a lot to say. Dark Side had it up a day or two before. Thursday night, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Thursday night. <laughs> Mr. Side does tend to do that from time to time. Steve <laughs> almost did it. Steve almost did I it. I did. Really? Uh, did. Not really. Not almost. But I did ask. Yes, it was. I was confused. Yeah. You were. Yeah. You were asking for a picture like to post yeah. it that week. And I was. we were way far yeah. out. I, uh, yeah. Who reads emails? <laughs> uh third email, by the way. Uh Tate Tater, yeah. you got that? No, no, no. Third caller. First third caller, caller, I mean, sorry. Tater. Yeah. 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 Uh all right, Randy. Listen. Thank I'm looking forward to enjoying the show. Thanks, guys. Thanks for calling in, buddy. Always a good time. See you, Randy. Thanks, man. Right. See you, Randy. Later, all right. Later. Third caller uh, winning a set of Michelin Starcross 6, michelinman.com forward slash motorcycles for more information on that. New tire from the folks at uh, Michelin and stoked to have them on board as always. So we talked about uh, the Brian Deegan claim gate beginning of the show. We had Donnie Luce on as well. I've spoken to Brian. I've spoken to uh, Brennan Schofield. I spoke to the Yamaha Canada, the Yamaha USA. Why again spoke to Bobby Reagan, but dealer? one person you speak to the dealer? Nope, just enough messages, but <laughs> people did speak to him. Uh, but one person who I haven't spoken to, and uh, he's on the line now. And uh, Chris Kiefer, you arranged this for it tonight uh, from the uh, uh, past uh, Monster Energy Pro Circuit Team slash uh, Planet Honda slash uh, Moto X Academy. Moto X Academy. Matt Walker, what's <laughs> up, Matt? How are you? I'm doing good, and you guys? We're good, man. Thanks for calling in. Appreciate it. It has been a hectic uh, uh, week. Your name's been thrown around just like Donnie's and, and Brian's and everybody else's uh, by Brennan Schofield. Uh, he was. He did ride for you for three years right at your facility, from what I understand? 
Well, yeah, he, he's lived there and trained there um, off and on. He says three years. Maybe it was. It seems like a lot longer, but, okay. uh, yeah, we'll say three. Um, but, yeah, so he's been there. So take us through this from your end of things. We talked to Donnie earlier. You and him were mm-hmm. talking underneath uh, your motorhome, I believe, and Brennan says you called him back. And then take us through that, Matt, from your end of things and what you told him and, and you know, and all of that. Well, yeah, like as far as calling him back, I've heard that, you know, quite a bit. Um, but no one ever, like, quote, unquote, called him back. You know, Donnie and I were in a discussion, um, which Donnie called me back to my pit. I was already had, had left for the night. Um, Donnie called me back, and we're talking, and, and he's just, just asking, you know, about Brennan and the situation and, and what he's heard and, and just getting the rundown on everything because, again, um, I obviously trained Brennan. He won the championship last year, um, you know. So, anyway, we're just talking about it. And then about the dang time that, uh, I don't know, five minutes goes by, there's Brennan coming by on a golf cart, mm-hmm. you know. And, and again, Moto, we're we're pitted right right beside KTM, like right in the fr- right, pretty much right in the middle of uh, Loretta. So he's coming by. Um, it's dark, but I could tell it's Brennan because they slow down. And I say, "Hey, uh, Donnie, th- there they are, right there. There's Brennan. Hey, Brennan." And I wave them over there to come see me, and uh, and then they come back and um, walk in and. Uh, it's Brendan and his dad, and, and it's another guy that I didn't know at the time, um, and uh, I find out that it's the motor builder um, that was with him, you know, and they sat down and, and, and started the discussion. Okay, all right. Uh, and so Brendan said that you were saying, hey, man, this is not a good look. Uh, you know, people don't do this kind of thing. Uh, I don't think you should do it. You confirm and that you were saying that or something else? Well, Listen, as the trainer for him, okay, uh, Steve, what have I known you, 20 years more? Yeah. Um, yep. Guys, listen, we've all been in the sport our whole lives. You know, I'm th- I'm 40. I've been in it 36 years. I've seen everything. Like, I, it's my job as a trainer, you know, to give, you know, opinions, like a, a direction, you know. To, to my people, to my riders. Mm-hmm. And uh, when this happened, listen, I, I have no affiliation with Star or Yamaha or, you know, obviously Brian Deegan. You know, my only affiliation is to Brennan Schofield. You know what I'm saying? And um, so I just told him, look, this ain't a good look, dude. You are a freaking, look how far we've come. You're a Loretta Lynn national champion. We were here which is true, one year ago today, bro, you know, which was on a Friday in 2021. It's like, you're a national champion, and, and you're awesome. And when we leave here, if you do the claim, listen, everybody from now on, you're always going to be that kid who claimed Hayden Deegan's bike. I just want you to know that. You know what I'm saying? And, um, and that was my stance on it, okay? Mm-hmm. Um, that was my stance the whole time. That's exi- my story has not wavered one time, and I said that many times to him during the course of that. You know, um, because again, just like you guys, I mean, damn gum, have we not pretty much seen it all, been through it all? And uh, I remember, um, and I didn't tell them this story, but man, I can recall. Uh, going to a race one time when I was at Pro Circuit and Mitch calling me after I drove all the way up to Muddy Creek getting called and, and him saying, hey, you know, uh, we got told that your bike's going to get claimed, you know, and and I not raced because he called and told me that. So, I mean, there's just been, for instances, all over, you know, the course of time of racing that I say all over, but there's been instances like mm-hmm. with the Chatfield kid and like yep. whatever, 03, I, I, you know, that kid never lived that down. He was always known as the kid that claimed Michael Lessie's bike. And, um, and I just didn't want that for Brennan, you know? Um, and again, my obligation is to Brennan and, uh, and still it, you know, and Matt, 
regardless of what's happened, you know, that was my chance mm-hmm. was, okay. it ain't a damn good look. You don't want to do that. And if you do do that, you just got to know that no matter that you won Loretta, no matter if you go to, you, know, you won many O's and, and he did in the C, you know, no matter what you do, buddy, they're going to always say, you're the kid that claimed that bike. I just want you to know that. And that's exactly verbatim what I said. I think we can agree to disagree on that, but that's fine, Matt. I understand your opinion for sure. Uh, I mean, I think it's fine for the kid to do this. But, hey, again, that's uh, this is America. Absolutely. We can have different opinions. It's fine. Uh, You're absolutely right. Uh, he said, Brennan said that you texted his dealer to come over and and talk to him. Uh, the, the, the Canadian, Chris from uh, Canada, the dealership. Is that, yeah. is that accurate? You said, I, hey, I come that. talk to Brennan. Yeah. I'm sorry. You said you texted him and said, "Hey, come, come talk to Brennan. Like, come down no, here." No, oh. no, absolutely not. Um, did not. And I and I heard you say that in the beginning of the show, and I'm like freaking trying to to pull the phone. Okay. <laughs> and, yeah. and trying to call you guys, like, dude. So, I first heard about this whole claim through Brennan's sponsor, Chris, mm-hmm. um, who I trained Chris's son. Okay. Um, and I train a lot of Canadians, and 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 uh, Brennan has been the 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 conduit for that. You know, um, we've had a great run and a great relationship. This family has, uh, Steve, always told me, and we've been honest about like what races we're going to race, or what what tires should we run here, or you know, yeah. it was just a few weeks ago. He's having issues finishing motos and you know, just giving them supplement advice, just so much freaking stuff. And when I heard, well, I got a text from Chris Friday evening. Okay. I had just, uh, finished up with the 50 class because I had a kid in fifties. Um, I just posted a video and that was one that was on my Instagram and, and I'm just on a high because this kid just, just did something awesome and and i was just on a high right like as a trainer you go through this right dude that's it was awesome so anyway i get a text from chris and he says uh hey i'd like to have a private conversation with you um and i'm like oh shit you know i didn't know what it was about i assumed it was about his son um you know he who was having um i'm you know whatever I, i thought it was about his son and then he quickly responds to the next text and says, it's not about um, Ethan, his son, but, you know, where you at? And, of course, service is shoddy there at the ranch, but mm-hmm. we did have Wi-Fi. So I said, well, I'm, I'm about to go back to Waverly where I'm staying. Where are y'all? And he says, uh, well, I'm in um, the McDonald's and um, whatever the town is, yeah. but Loretta Lynn's town. Anyway, we agreed to meet at the front of Loretta Lynn's, uh, the entrance there at Loretta. So I pull in there, wait on him, and here comes Chris and Chris's son, who also works at the dealership. And they freaking blindsided me. They say, Brennan has filed a claim for Deegan's bike. And I'm like, what? And he goes, yeah, dude, he has... Well, he didn't say dude because Chris is about business, you know. Um, He's a very serious guy. He's a very private guy, but he's somebody that I respect a lot. And he said that, you know, he says, Matt, my damn – he didn't say damn, but he said, Matt, my name's on the side of that bike. He goes, I don't don't like this, you know. Um, Never once, guys. I need you guys to really understand this. Never once. Not one time have I ever said anything about Yamaha potentially pulling his dealership. That sounds so far-fetched. When I first heard it, I said, oh, my God, I, this can, it, I can't even believe this was even said. But this narrative just keeps getting brought up that somebody – has somebody told Chris's yeah somebody told Chris yeah yeah about this that, that, right. I'm telling you it didn't happen and I'm 1000% w- 
unequivocally telling you I didn't say it because it never happened. You so, know. So, and so Chris, but at some point, Chris, the, Chris ends up at your at your motorhome yeah. with Donnie yeah. and Brent and Brennan, right? So, so yeah, that's what I'm getting to. Yeah. Um, um, Chris says, "Listen, I'm going to go have a talk with Brennan's dad. I don't like this shit. This shit, um, and it's done." So, as I am talking to him, okay, as we're talking about it, mm-hmm. I go, oh, God, uh, it wasn't Donnie. Um, I'm drawing a blank on the other guy's name right now that works at Yamaha, but he, uh, Kevin, Kevin Spittler from Yamaha, sends mm-hmm. a text and says, uh, hey, this is Donnie. I don't have service, but uh, I'd like to talk to you. And I, and I tell Chris, I say, damn, I bet you I know what this is about, mm-hmm. you know? Um, and I tell Kevin, who was actually Donnie on the phone, uh, would just meet me back at my pit, you know? I was about to go get some supper, but I'll, I'll go and, and, uh, and come back and talk to you. So I do that. I, I leave Chris. Chris is supposedly going to, to, to just end this thing because he doesn't want his dealership ran through this damn mud. You know what I'm saying? His name is on the side of this thing, yeah. And he didn't, and that—that's again what he said, right? Yeah, it does and seem so, like Chris talked. Brandon admits that Chris talked him out of filing the claim, for whatever I'm reasons. Sorry. But yes, yep. Say that one more time. You broke up. Chris, Brandon admits that Chris from the dealership talked him out of making the claim, for whatever reason. Whatever. That's Chris is the one who got Brandon to drop the claim. Yeah, that's, I think well, that's indisputable. Yeah, so he did, and um, so I agreed to meet Donnie at my tent because Chris is, he's a straight shooter, and I, I, I went back to my tent to, to meet Donnie and talk to Donnie, and uh, I knew it was about to get handled anyway, um, so I go there, and um, Donnie's just filling me in, you know, about exactly what happened, and just trying to get some background on 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 Brennan and, and this situation. And yeah, there was a motor builder involved. And, um, and this is just all the stuff that's kind of coming out. And, um, and then again, at that time is when Brennan and them come by on the golf cart and I'm like, well, hell there they are right there. Let's just ask them. Right. And then that's when I, you know, waved them over and they came to my pits, you know? So from there, I know this is a lot to unload, <laughs> but from there, <laughs> <laughs> listen from there we're in a conversation okay um talking about first it starts out with you know brennan talking about he had issues with the bike and reliability and things going on during the training camp which he did um and he did express these things um to donnie uh-huh. um, and he did have issues with his bike during camp and that was a source of a lot of issues um during the whole loretta land training camp month at my facility with him um just like every time he kept going something would 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 tear up so anyway as he's telling donnie this whatever here comes chris now chris walks into my pit and when chris walks into my pit he's starting to hear about you know what's being said and from there he says listen matt I'm sorry to interrupt you guys, but can you introduce me to everybody here? And I do. I say, this is Donnie Luce from Yamaha. You know, this is, I guess, the motor builder. I didn't know his name. And then, obviously, you know Brennan. And he says, "Um, okay, well, I'd like to speak to Craig, which is Brennan's dad, in private. Um, And, obviously, they walk Mm -hmm. off to speak in private. Hmm. And then he comes back, and the uh, and the, the claim is dropped, according to the dad. Right? That's what the dad, uh, Craig absolutely. Craig says. Well, I, I don't know where this. I mean, I'm, I'm confused about the nuclear launch codes that are involved yeah, in this. Like, yeah, it, yeah. I, to me, it's a motorcycle. <laughs> like, it's there. This seems way yeah, like right. career implications, and everybody's going to label you as the bike claimer. Like, I, I'm not there on this. Like, no. I just like this Matt, is not that like devastating of a move in my opinion Matt I think you and Brennan's relationship maybe needs to you guys need to talk it out right because he's been throwing around a lot of stuff and yeah you and know. it's been hurtful 
guys, listen, this stuff saying, you know, accusations of I'm, I'm a bully or Yamaha's a bully and we bullied him and, um, and guys, listen, this thing is, that's hurtful stuff. Um, and JT, I respect your opinion. If you don't feel like it's like that, I, I, I respect that. Um, and, yeah, and, that, and that's all it is. It's that. just an opinion. That's all, right? Like, I, yeah, exactly. Of and, and, but that, as his trainer, that was my opinion. Sure, right? Absolutely. That, that was that was what I thought. Yep. And um, obviously, that that uh, is what I said. And um, but you know, guys, it uh, this has been a rough week for me. Also, in my business, also we we we've taken a lot of hits on this thing. When, um, you know, this is the truth. I don't know why Brennan, you know, said the to the uh, Livesley guy on the first video interview Who? he did. Tyler, Tyler, Livesley. Tyler Livesley. Tyler Livesley. Livesay. Livesay. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's the first video that he did. Brennan Schofield did, and then uh, you know my conversation with him that I recorded, and I told him I was recording it, did a podcast with him. I mean, I don't know. I don't know how this stuff gets mixed up. Like, uh, Brennan seems like a good kid, Matt. I don't know why he's yeah. saying these things. That Donnie and yourself and. And others, you know, disagree. You know, say that didn't happen. And and I'm not I'm not siding with Brennan. I'm just like, why 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 are we here? Why are we here? You know, you know I, I I can't speak on what he's thinking and 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 what these guys that on these other uh, YouTube videos are saying. You know, but I can tell you, you know, man to man with 1,000% certainty mm -hmm. exactly the way it went down. And I know, um, and again, my stance has never wavered, you know. This was what was said, you know. Yeah. And Chris ha is going, has gone on record, and he's going on vital, and, and he's saying the same thing. Yeah, like, I've heard this, yep. Michael, <laughs> Michael Lindsay told me Chris is going to be talking to him. So, yeah. Yeah, and he said the same thing. Yamaha, that's crazy talk. Yamaha never called me. No one ever said anything about some dealership. I dang sure never said. I never that thought never even crossed my right. mind. It's, it seems insane. How, it seems far fetched. Yes, because like, it's freaking insane. Like who could even think that, right? And um, so, yeah. Like, well, for, here's what I will say. I disagree with JT. Uh, I don't know Matt that well. Yeah, only a little bit. But if let's say my kid was going to do this and he was wanting to be a professional racer as his career, I would deter him doing this. Because no matter what you think, we know this industry, and sometimes you only get certain things of who, of who you know. Sometimes your results don't even matter. It's who you know. And I would what, argue that. If you win, yeah, uh, okay. you I, win, I will, you're right. doesn't matter. If he, if he <laughs> is the guy and he's the fastest guy, I will say you're all right. It but if matter. you're yeah. a, a, a mediocre rider trying to work your way up, and you're known as this guy who did this to Deegan, for one, number two, to Star, there is going to be a little bit of a black ball on your name. That's all I'm saying. Now, if he goes out next year and kills everybody and wins, of yep. course, he's yep. going to get what he wants. Yep. But, but in the end, if you don't do good, but it doesn't matter anyway. And then with the flip side of that, I understand the other side. It's the rule. He's within the rule. Yeah. He can do that. Yeah. So I understand both sides. Yeah. Matt, and Matt, just for the record, when I was trying to put this all together and talking to Brennan – and talking to Donnie, and talking to Yamaha, and I talked to Deegan today before the show, and you know the the only thing I could say of was maybe Matt texted the dealer and said this is what could happen, this is what may happen. You know, not saying that you're you're not saying Yamaha is going to do that, but the only theory that I, Steve Mathis, could come up with was you were like, hey man, he better not do this. It's not a good look, and this could happen. And you're not, yeah, that didn't happen. You're saying no way, no chance, nothing, no in no even suggestion. Of what someone could do, yes. So no, not it. Absolutely didn't happen. You right, know, right. End of story. Right, right. Um, yeah, I mean, again, I, and Matt, for the record too, I think that you should have let the kid have the bike and said, "All right, cool, right on." I mean, but, what, but Matt, know, yeah, Matt's allowed to have. Yeah, yeah, if, absolutely, if Matt, if absolutely. Matt thinks this is going to be right. He's yeah, trying a to black eye him, right. on him. No, but I, he should share that. I don't want to have I'm Matt on, on the phone that, and right. then act one way and then have Matt on the phone. So I'm just telling I, Matt what I say. I don't. Right. Agree with right. that, yeah. but if Matt's—that's how Matt felt. He should yeah. tell him. Yeah, he's—if he's acting in his best interest and that's what he believes, he should tell him. I'm, yeah. I'm on board. With right, that. right, right. No, nope, for sure. And yeah. I—and can you guys understand this for a sec? Like, 
Chris with this dealership, he had his mind made up before he ever told me about Brennan and this and this whole you know mm-hmm. um, you know saga, if you will, you know, because he knew that this this just isn't going to go well, you know, right? And uh, so his mind was made up. I just never would say anything crazy like that. And, and, so here's and a, I understand your hypotheticals, yeah. uh, Steve, but I assure you that I didn't, um, and nor would I ever. Because I'm, know, not, my stand- I'm not 17 like Brendan. I'm older. I'm more mature. But I don't understand why you would ever make something that, that could be tracked down by talking to Chris or talking, yeah. talking to Matt. Like, why would you ever come out in the very first video – and talk about Yamaha threatening the dealer, and that's why you dropped the claim because the dealer, like again, I'm not 17, so I'm I'm older. I'm, I'm here's more mature, what I understand: if that, the, this kid was at your place, Walker, and I, he said he was mechanicing, saving up this money, he didn't tell anybody that he was doing this. It just dropped a bomb at no, Loretta's. no. He, Brandon admits he was thinking about it, doing it at the regional. Okay, he told me that He's, right. he was, but he didn't have enough money. But he was yeah. thinking about well, it at the regional. I personally, guys have never heard that, right? And I'm with the kid day in and day out. And he did work. I, I don't know about working on his own bike. Like, he did do some stuff, but we have a, a, a mechanic in the race shop, and, and he did all of Brennan's bike work. But Brennan did change tires and, and wash bikes for people. I can't deny that he didn't do work. Um, yeah. But as far as, like, and that's another thing, like I said before, you know, they have been so transparent with me, the family, for the last however many years, three years, about everything, everything. And, and this is the biggest thing that you've, you're, you're, you've ever done, and you, di- you, you didn't think that you would tell me. I think the reason why they didn't is because they knew how I would act, you know, mm-hmm. and I would discourage it. Right. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Imagine, maybe so. Imagine how good that bike would have been at Walton, though. Yeah. <laughs> Man, so good. Uh, we got a couple calls here. Uh, Matt Walker's going to stay on the phone. Uh, Craig Martin's on one. Craig used to be the head of Kawasaki Team Green. What's up, Craig? How are you? Oh, not too much. How are you? Um, not much. What's He's going on? He's a Western Power Sports uh, rep, by yes, the way. Yes. Yes. Sorry. Yep. Yep. <laughs> no. Yeah. I wanted. I wanted to first of all thank you for being the first guy to actually dive into this thing and not just take the video that the kid put out and just going with it and running with it like Pingree did. Well, uh, um, Michael Lindsay's coming out with a whole thing, too. Michael did a good job on this. And, and for something this serious, you just can't run with it. You can't do that. You need to call everyone involved. Is it this serious, though? Yeah. I'm it, out. I it, just want to this, test dirt bikes. Is this I'm some out sort of no, because my DMs and my replies about this are like, you know, Mathis, uh, are you going to cover this? Uh, but blah, like, blah, you're blah, saying yeah. this serious. Like, there are no wives on the line. Here. No, no, no. But serious in our industry. I mean, we bitched. If them I had all. never covered this, then people are going to buy a bike or not, dude. Trust like, it's me. Crazy. The fans are hitting me up in my DMs. I know, yeah, but yeah, I yeah. like when you say I, like something this serious. In our like, industry. I, I just say it's okay. like right. I can't uh, hate comment because I bitched him on for about a month when I didn't get to test the bike. So yeah, uh, go ahead, Craig. Though yeah, thank you for that. But yeah. so yeah. yeah, so um, and I and I posted onto Pingree's uh, Facebook, I think it is, and said, hey, just. Could you just ask the people involved what really happened for sure, just to make sure before you just go blasting? And, of course, I'm getting a lot of hate from that, from me having an opinion other than what Pingree had, too. So, anyway. But what I wanted to say was I agree with Matt. And I'm a guy that hired Thank you. over a 1,000 riders, you know, through mm-hmm. my years at Team Green, some of the best of the best, and worked with their families and everything else. And the thing is, you got to remember, when you're a Donnie Luce or a Cole Grass back in the day or me mm-hmm. or whoever, you know, is doing it, um, you, get, you get thousands and thousands of resumes. You meet thousands and thousands and thousands of people. And if there's a little bit of a sour note around one person about what they did, even though it's an absolutely legal thing to do and he has all the right in the world to do it, but if there's a sour note about that kid or the family yeah. or something, Sometimes it just is enough to sway you to go. Thank you. To Might be a sour note. Thank you. But that bike could be sounding sweet at Walton. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm that. just saying that what yeah. Craig no, says yeah, is yeah. exactly right. what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. When you're okay. a guy and in, in deep in the sport, you want you don't want drama. All you industry people protecting no. each guess other. Guess how guess how many oh, team I, I know, wait, guess, no, how many no. team, guess how many how much support I got as an amateur? A donut. Yeah. I'm making yeah. a zero. With and my you hand. had no drama around you. 
Craig couldn't oh, find bikes no and parts help, for though. Frank. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. But uh, you're guaranteed that's to get my, none. Hey, I got none anyway. I got second at Loretta's in oh, 250B. Craig's saying he sponsored you. An arena cross when I was a pro. Doesn't oh, matter. Oh, still a series. No, still he's, a series. He's talking about amateur. No, it's I'm fun. talking about this kid, um, Brennan. Uh, okay, so Craig, so yeah, you signed with Chris and Matt on this. Like, not yeah, a good idea. Yes, I do. Yeah. And, yeah. and I really, the problem I have with this whole thing even happening is that it's going to take away the value of the rule. And the rule is to try to keep the manufacturers from not showing up. Ben Riddle showed up one year with completely full works forks, as far as what we could tell, on a mm -hmm. Suzuki. And we were, you know, like, come on. And we have every Wednesday um, at 2 p.m. of every Loretta Lens I've ever attended, there's always an industry meeting where we all sit down, representatives from every manufacturer and a couple of the bigger um, sponsoring people of the, of the event. And we sit down and we all talk about the direction of the sport and the direction that needs to happen. And also, like, what made the pipe line that may change what we need right. to do as a manufacturer like a 350 or right. electric bikes or whatever all that stuff gets discussed there and in those discussions um back in the day the rule the ama rule actually and i and quote it for sure but i think the ama rule is that the, it's a bike retail msrp plus 30 percent for ama I got um, very involved in conversations of the fact that at that time of, of when I was there, it was right about when all the kit suspension and all that stuff really started to be sold to the public yep. to, to make it legal for Supercross, I think. Um, and so the kit suspension was really throwing mm -hmm. the, the number up. And if you took a $6,000 bike and yeah. added 30%, that's only 1800 bucks. It's 7800 bucks, And... That turns into a really good deal for somebody that just the guy just spent five or six grand on. Yeah, I, th I think this rule for twenty twenty three will be more, more than double yeah. the MSRP. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I, I definitely so I, think I was, that. Yeah, yeah. So I was very involved in trying to get it higher, and was one of the guys that voted for or pushed right. to get it to double retail. And yeah, it does need to probably go up again. Yeah, yeah. Okay, retail's I, going up a lot. Uh, too, I have a question so. then, right? If if and, and I'm trying to make sure that I don't have a blind spot and I'm looking at it ev from every angle here. If you have a rule, but everyone is scared to do anything and actually enforce a rule, what good is a rule? I agree. Well, that's what I'm saying. The rule is completely losing its value through this whole episode because now mm -hmm. it's going to be nobody, everyone's going to be scared to death to ever try to claim a but, bike, but which everybody, is unfortunate. Like, but you guys are saying they should never do it anyway. So whether they were scared or not, <laughs> yeah. you guys are all saying this is a horrible yeah. idea. Matt, so, yeah. what's Matt the point and Craig rule? and Kiefer are all in the No, look at I'm here. not the industry. I'm just letting this yeah, kid yeah, know right. how it would yeah, work. Matt, Matt was too. Yeah, Matt was I know, too. but yeah. I'm saying if that's yeah, yeah, yeah. the no, case, yeah, yeah, if that's the case, then yeah. the rule doesn't work anyway yeah. then. Uh, like you're building yeah. a rule that yep. no one that shouldn't even – it doesn't even – if everybody's going to be blackballed that ever – takes advantage of this loophole. Yeah. And it's not even a loophole. It's yeah. it's a designed thing yeah. that you yeah, create I, a I, designed I result. A positive thing, for yeah. sure. If um, you're going to be blackballed for doing it, then there's something flawed in the system. Uh, thanks, Craig. Thanks for the call, yeah. man. Good to know. All right. Thank you, man. Right. Appreciate it. Uh, Matt, uh, we're getting... I haven't watched it, but the motor builder uh, is saying that you threatened him. You got a comment about that? Threatened him? Yeah, you threatened uh, the motor builder. He said what he's come public and said. <laughs> I asked the guy to leave my pits, you know. I asked the guy to leave my pits because, you know, he's it's just going on and on and on and on and on. And I felt like he was, um, you know, I just kind of felt like he was behind. Uh, he's in, implanted this in, in, in um, Brennan's head, you know. And uh, I asked him to leave my pit. He didn't want to leave my pit. So then I had to, to get loud with him to leave my pit, and then he leaves my pit, you know. So in a nutshell, okay. my personality, you know, sometimes, you guys know me, can come across as aggressive and, and whatever. But mm -hmm. I asked the guy to leave my pit. He was inside my stuff. I told him to leave. He didn't want to leave right away. So I told him again, and that was it. Okay. All right. Uh, we got Briggs on the phone, too. Briggs, uh, you think Matt should have stuck up a little bit more? For Brennan, Briggs? So, um, tons of respect for Matt Walker and, and any writer who throws a leg and gets to the level of that. Me personally, um, me and my father and my family work with writers in the past. 
Me personally, um, having Donnie there, especially the fact that Matt's worked with this kid for three years, lived with him, things of that nature, I wouldn't have even had a second party there other than a conversation, sit down with my rider to, hey, listen, like let's talk about this rider, dad, no engine builder, no nobody, and get back to the fundamentals of that relationship, which were the, the dad, the rider, and Matt themselves. Um, do I think the Deegans were on a bike that they probably shouldn't? Yeah, they got caught with their pants down. They know what Hayden was plans were after Loretta's. Come on, like, they're all saying we don't know what's going on. They knew he was probably going to race, potentially pro nationals, and they get to train the bike, work the bike in a race setting, which you can't replicate under any testing. At Loretta's, to me, hey, smart idea. They got yep. caught with their pants down. Um, but as we know, Moto is a fickle sport, and it's, it's a boys' club, and it's tough to penetrate. I mean, I watched my dad get top 100 national number and, you know, never got the credit recognition and respect that they deserve because, unfortunately, the sport is the way it is. All we right. Love it. Yeah. But there's also the hate side, too. And, uh, but, no, no, res- no disrespect and mm-hmm. all respect for you guys, but that's my opinion. Okay. Sounds good, man. Thanks for the call. Appreciate it. Thank you. Uh-huh. Yeah, I mean, I'm, Matt, going forward, I'll be interested to see if Brandon Schofield and his dad, you know, are at MX Compound, right? Like, I think that this is this has maybe been a relationship gone sideways here, or at least in my eyes. Yeah, anyways, it it definitely uh, has gotten you know sideways, and and it, and it sucks, you know. Right. Um, and I tell you what else sucks is, you know, I waited a week to say this, to talk, and and to go on this, um, but since. Since this came out, like having to to just get so many people, you know, texting me and DMing me and threatening me and my family, um, has been has been disheartening. You know, it really has. Um, I welcome to Steve's life. Yeah, welcome to my <laughs> life, dude. Welcome to my life. Yeah. I get it. I get it. You know, you know, Steve, you and I have never publicly spoke about what I do. <laughs> my business and, and my facility, but guys, listen, you know, I've, I've, I've worked my ass off with no support from anyone and for 10 years to get to this level, to, to, to be established as a facility. And then, you know, think you're doing the right thing and helping somebody. And then all of a sudden you, you, you're, you're just freaking tossed to the, like everybody's just like saying shit. That's just not true. And it is freaking hurtful. And and yeah. guys, listen, JP, you race. <clears throat> we have thick uh, keeper. Racers' skin are the thickest. You know what I mean? Like you learn to have thick skin as a racer. Uh, and uh, but when somebody attacks, um, you know, you, you, who you are as as a trainer and, and like this and saying I just did, you know, because when it first came out, I heard, oh, I didn't have my back and I'm a bully and. Things that just clearly did not happen, guys. Listen, that 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 was painful. Very, very, and still is very painful. So, um, I'll leave you guys with that. All right, fair enough. Uh, yeah, thanks for calling in, Matt. Appreciate it. And uh, yeah, it sucks to get dragged through the mud. I can, I can, I can get that. And disinformation and, sucks. Yeah, right. Yeah, All for everybody, yeah. it sucks. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. For the kid and, for Matt. And everybody. right now, as yeah. I sit here, like I'm just like, dude. What do we do? What, no, no. WTF on this whole situation? Yeah, exactly. I just, uh, yeah. I do nothing. Well, you say, what do I do? I do nothing. Yeah. yeah. Like, I just yeah. go, I keep yeah. moving on. Right. Nobody keep bought a bike. Life. Yeah. Everybody's right. fine. Nobody uh, died. It's not NOM. Thanks. Like, uh, we're, we're good. It's not Vet Nationals. <laughs> Thank, thanks, Matt. I appreciate the call. Thank you, man. All right, you guys have a good night. All right, Later, see you Matt. Later. That's Matt Walk, everybody, on the uh, Pulp Mech Show, uh, brought to you by motorsport.com, Decal Works, and Fly Racing. Max, I promise we'll talk to you about things. I'm fine. Okay, I, I'm listening. I'm 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 enjoying all the gate. Hey, I, I okay. all the, ga- real, all the though, gate of yeah, world. Right. <laughs> I do feel I do feel bad for Matt if you know things are being said that are not true about him. Right. And of he, course they are. That yeah. sucks. Yeah, yeah that, that sucks. That well, sucks. Uh, there was a gentleman uh, named Mr. Stank Dog that said some things that I never said. My poor sister hasn't yeah, recovered still. Right, she's still, <laughs> and she is <laughs> the never been the same. I'm telling you, the the the, the DMs I got. Are fucking disgusting, for oh yeah, I just blocked those people. Right, like just disgusting about my wife, my my career, me. It's unbelievable the people that they jump to one side, and yeah, 
you know, we all know that I don't want to cover that thing again. We all know I didn't say anything wrong in that. If I say something, I'll take it. Right. But, you know, and so Matt, it, Matt, you know, says he didn't say this. It just sucks for me because I see both sides. But are you guys with me where you're just like, what is like, you're just like, that's what? why I'm like, what, what the F? Because I see both sides. Like, I'm like, I would be the guy telling that guy, hey, you might not want to do this. But with the caller, what the caller said, I would have done exactly that. I would have pulled him to the side on my own, had a one-on-one -on -one conversation, say, here's my thought about this. Here's what I think. You can do what you want, but here is my thoughts, and I would rather you see you do this. And then let it happen. Whatever happens, happens. That's how I would have did it. Yeah. Yeah, unbelievable. I would have never happened with me because seventeen grand. <laughs> yeah, right. Seventeen grand to buy a motorcycle. That was Fra Frank don't have seventeen grand. <laughs> seventeen on them. grand is like a pipe dream. Yeah. Might as well maybe seventeen million. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> You'd be, hey Frank, we got seventeen grand. Frank looks at you like <laughs> our house is worth seventeen grand. Uh, all right, we're gonna uh, take a first commercial break here. Travis Preston's coming up. Uh, we can don't have to worry about that. Oh no, we're gonna talk to him. <laughs> uh, Cameron McAdoo's coming up. Looking forward to that. Fly twenty twenty three stuff. X brand goggles. Uh, Race tech rant. We got more. Thanks to. Um, we gotta do my thing too. Don't forget. Oh yeah, Jay, you have a thing. Yep. Yeah, you have a thing. You have a thing. Uh, oh, yeah. Fee dub and okay. it's price music. Thank you for the donations on YouTube. Really appreciate that. Uh, we'll be right back after this with uh, more uh unadilla talk to you we're, gonna, we're coming up we're gonna talk unadilla i promise everybody chase sexton what a ride uh we're right back after this everybody great radio bros at motorsport.com our ride started in 1999 with a commitment to making your next ride your best ride we take pride in having a huge selection of gear accessories and oem parts for moto street off-road atv and utv riding is what connects us and makes us a family from the track to the trail tarmac to open roads we're all connected because we ride and that's what motorsport.com is all about we've got your back our unrivaled and dedicated team of gearheads are willing to go that extra mile no gimmicks just high quality parts the best customer service in the industry and free shipping on all orders over $79. Our passion at motorsport.com is to ensure your next ride is your best ride. This is our invitation to you from riders for riders. Visit us at motorsport.com. Hey, in case you didn't know, Racetech is the world's largest aftermarket suspension modification company. All Race Tech products include award-winning goal valves and settings are 100% guaranteed and made right here in the U.S. of A. Race Tech also offers state-of-the-art precision engine services and parts to all engine builders. The staff has over 65 years of championship winning experience. It's so good that many of the top privateer teams such as SGB Honda, Team Solitaire Nuclear Blast Yamaha, and Motul AJE Gas Gas, as well as Jerry Robin, Kevin Morans, and many more, Choose Race Tech for their superior performance, reliability, and their customer service. Hey guys, what's up? My name's Kate Clayson, and I choose Race Tech because I love their desire to strive for perfection. I think we all know that perfection isn't possible, but getting to perfection is always the goal, and I think that is something that both myself and Race Tech have always worked towards, and I think they can help you get there too. Hey guys, this is Alex Ray. I use Race Tech components in my SGD suspension and also the Race Tech engine. The reason I like it is just because uh, the engine is super reliable, tons of torque, and also on the suspension side, it just gives it that flush, nice feeling. Hey, it's your boys over at Team Solitaire. If you don't run Race Tech, here's what you do put your hands behind your back and run your face into a fucking wall. Racetech.com. What's up, guys? This is Kevin Morans, and I choose Race Tech because of their convenience of having Race Tech centers all around the United States. Obviously, within my Decker Performance Suspension, works really well. They're very high quality performance product. Definitely check them out. Hey guys, this is Jerry Robin, uh, and I choose Race Tech because of uh, the reliable motors, good power, good suspension, and obviously it's great people around. And I've uh, been there for a long time, and they're awesome. Visit racetech.com and use code PULP22 to save. Love the guys at Works Connection. They continue as a 10-year sponsor of this show because, yeah, just like you, they're committed to the sport. For 33 years, they've been designing and distributing leading-edge performance products like the Elite Axle Blocks, Elite Clutch Perch, Pro Launch Start Device for performance, radiator braces and skid plates for protection, along with a shock pump, attack, hour meter, and more for maintenance. 
Works Connection, great guys up there in NorCal, and super cool company. I'm more stoked to be uh, associated with them. When you take a look around the AMA pitch, you'll see Works Connection proving ground for products under the canopies of Team Honda, HRC, Star Racing, and other top teams. And they, the best part of this whole deal is if you use a code PulpMX20, you get 20% off your order. Visit your local dealer, check out motorsport.com, and uh, ask them to see the Works Connection product line for 2022. Great company, great products. Check it out. Thanks to Works Connection for coming on the show. Pulp MX20, the code to save. With 80 years of experience manufacturing power sports pistons right here in the USA, Weisco has evolved into a full range of performance components for dirt bikes and other power sports machines. Whether you ride a two-stroke or a four-stroke, Weisco has a variety of pistons from reliable forged replacements to the performance-focused Racer Elite series. Weisco has recently expanded our Racer Elite line with SX and MX proven USA-made connecting rods. Now adding to the Garage Buddy Re- build kits, clutch and valve train components, and our CV4 thermal protection line. This makes Weisco your single stop performance name. Visit your favorite online or local dealer or Weisco.com to find products for your machine. Maxima Racing Oils was created for world-class racers who challenge the limits of possibility. Their demands on equipment drive us to look beyond conventional ideas and to exceed industry standards. It's in our DNA to identify problems, formulate solutions, and execute at the highest levels of competition. Case in point, the championship-winning Factory Kawasaki Race Team, longtime Maxima partners who extensively use Maxima throughout the bike. Maxima's USA-made products exceed JSO requirements and can be used in all motorcycle brands. Kawasaki, Honda, Yamaha, Suzuki, KTM, Husqvarna, and more. Maxima Racing Oils. Experience the difference. Visit MaximaUSA.com for more information. In 1990, my dad, Jamie Gregg, started Guts Racing. Guts stands for Gregg's Ultra Trick Seats, because I was just a little kid that wanted a trick seat. And if you're out there looking for a trick seat, go to GutsRacing.com, your local dealer, or Motosport and place your order. Support the people that support Pulp MX. You can use Pulp 2022 for 20% off at GutsRacing.com. FMF Racing is proud to celebrate over 45 years of fun, building every FMF exhaust right here in the USA. Owner and founder Don Emler may have started FMF Racing in his garage 45 years ago, but Don is still hands-on in our 100,000 square foot state-of-the-art manufacturing facility in Southern California. FMF's goal? Design and manufacture the world's best performance exhausts, 100% in the USA under one roof. FMF is a proud sponsor of the Lucas Oil Pro Motocross Championship for over 25 years. Hi, it's Tomax Superfan Dylan here. The only thing I love more than seeing Eli win... Whoa, wait, Dylan. Sorry to cut you off like Steve does his callers and guests, but a lot has changed. Similar to your favorite rider being on a new team, the new Michelin Star Cross 6 tire range provides significantly improved performance and durability. Designed to win. The new Michelin Star Cross 6 tire range offers up to 16% more traction when new and up to 19% more traction when worn in comparison to the previous generation. This means consumers will not only benefit from improved performance on their first few rides, but that this performance increase will continue throughout the extended life of the tire. Michelin is a legendary innovator in motorcycle tire technology, and thanks to Michelin Silica technology, the Michelin Star Cross 6 tire range provides up to 11% more durability than the previous generation. This means consumers will enjoy the significantly improved performance throughout the increased life of the tire. Take it from me as I too have to buy my own tires. This added value is great news. The new Michelin Star Cross 6 tire range is available in six versions, specifically sand, mud, medium soft, medium hard, and hard versions with the naming designation corresponding to the type of terrains and conditions where the tires were designed to win. Another innovation is the Michelin adaptive design with specific positioning of the tread blocks in three zones, central, intermediate, and lateral zones 
with the single goal to offer exceptional grip for the front tire and exceptional grip, traction, and longevity for the rear. To learn more about the new Michelin Starcross 6 tire line and all the quality products that Michelin offers for motorcycle segments that Steve cares nothing about, visit michelinman.com slash motorcycle. And then visit your local dealer or online retailer to choose Michelin product to maximize your riding experiences. Also, too, also too make sure to follow at Michelin Motorcycle on Instagram and Facebook. Attention riders, welcome aboard the all-new Atlas Vision. We hope you enjoy the added mobility, quicker flight time, and additional views. Please follow along as we outline the safety features of this revolutionary device. The first thing you will notice is the added headroom. The fore and aft positions no longer come with annoying restrictions, so feel free to move about the cabin. Quicker flight times can be achieved by unmatched comforts and unencumbered movements. Yes, we're built for speed and comfort. And now available to all customers is a 360 panoramic view. Go ahead and look around the cabin. These new angles are available at no additional charge. Located on the underside of the frame is the gold standard of impact absorption, D3O. In the event we accidentally take a trip to Indonesia, we suggest that you remain with your neck in the underextended position and allow this proven material to do its job by reducing the forces over 50% better than ever before. Although the Atlas Vision will not be noticeable, it will be there when you need it. If you are riding with a child or someone who requires assistance, secure your vision first and then assist the other person with a prodigy, tyke, or brawl. We ask that you keep your brace on until your moto is finished. We remind you that Atlas makes flexible neck protection. Tampering with, disabling, or destroying the product is prohibited by the limited lifetime warranty. You will find this and all other safety information in the user manual located online at atlasbrace.com. At this time, we ask that you remain standing with throttles in the wide open position with your elbows up and hips fully unlocked. Whatever that means. On behalf of the captain and entire crew, thank you for flying Atlas Vision. Enjoy the views. For over 30 years, Decal Works has led the industry in quality and customer service by offering the best custom motocross graphics, plastics, seat covers, and rider ID products. Decal Works is officially licensed with Honda, Kawasaki, Yamaha, Suzuki, KTM, Husqvarna, and Gas Gas. Their expert staff will go above and beyond to make sure your questions are answered. Decal Works is a proud sponsor of Red Bull KTM Factory Racing and the Rockstar Energy Husqvarna Factory Off-Road Team. Visit decalmx.com and be sure to use promo code PULPMX at checkout. Quality, service, and knowledge is what makes Decal Works stand out. Decal Works, number one for many reasons. At motorsport.com, our ride started in 1999 with a commitment to making your next ride your best ride. We take pride in having a huge selection of gear, accessories, and OEM parts for moto, street, off-road, ATV, and UTV. Riding is what connects us and makes us a family. From the track to the trail, tarmac to open roads, we're all connected because we ride. And that's what motorsport.com is all about. We've got your back. Our unrivaled and dedicated team of gearheads are willing to go that extra mile. No gimmicks, just high quality parts, the best customer service in the industry, and free shipping on all orders over $79. Our passion at motorsport.com is to ensure your next ride is your best ride. This is our invitation to you, from riders for riders. Visit us at motorsport.com. Maxima Racing Oils was created for world-class racers who challenge the limits of possibility. Their demands on equipment drive us to look beyond conventional ideas and to exceed industry standards. It's in our DNA to identify problems, formulate solutions, and execute at the highest levels of competition. Case in point, the championship-winning Factory Kawasaki Race Team, longtime Maxima partners who extensively use Maxima throughout the bike. Maxima's USA-made products exceed JSO requirements and can be used in all motorcycle brands. Kawasaki, Honda, Yamaha, Suzuki, KTM, Husqvarna, and more. Maxima Racing Oils. Experience the difference. Visit MaximaUSA.com for more information. Hi, it's 
Tomax superfan Dylan here. The only thing I love more than seeing Eli win... Whoa, wait, Dylan. Sorry to cut you off like Steve does his callers and guests, but a lot has changed. Similar to your favorite rider being on a new team, the new Michelin Star Cross 6 tire range provides significantly improved performance and durability. Designed to win. The new Michelin Star Cross 6 tire range offers up to 16% more traction when new and up to 19% more traction when worn in comparison to the previous generation. This means consumers will not only benefit from improved performance on their first few rides, but that this performance increase will continue throughout the extended life of the tire. Michelin is a legendary innovator in motorcycle tire technology, and thanks to Michelin Silica technology, the Michelin Star Cross 6 tire range provides up to 11% more durability than the previous generation. This means consumers will enjoy the significantly improved performance throughout the increased life of the tire. Take it from me as I too have to buy my own tires. This added value is great news. The new Michelin Star Cross 6 tire range is available in six versions, specifically sand, mud, medium soft, medium hard, and hard versions with the naming designation corresponding to the type of terrains and conditions where the tires were designed to win. Another innovation is the Michelin adaptive design with specific positioning of the tread blocks in three zones, central, intermediate, and lateral zones with the single goal to offer exceptional grip for the front tire and exceptional grip, traction, and longevity for the rear. To learn more about the new Michelin Starcross 6 tire line and all the quality products that Michelin offers for motorcycle segments that Steve cares nothing about, visit michelinman.com slash motorcycle. And then visit your local dealer or online retailer to choose Michelin product to maximize your riding experiences. Also, too, also too make sure to follow at Michelin Motorcycle on Instagram and Facebook. Love the guys at Works Connection. They continue as a 10-year sponsor of this show because, yeah, just like you, they're committed to the sport. For 33 years, they've been designing and distributing leading-edge performance products like the Elite Axle Blocks, Elite Clutch Perch, Pro Launch Start Device for performance, radiator braces and skid plates for protection, along with a shock pump, attack, hour meter, and more for maintenance. Works Connection, great guys up there in NorCal and super cool company. I'm more stoked to be uh, associated with them. When you take a look around the AMA pitch, you'll see Worst Connection proving ground for products under the canopies of Team Honda, HRC, Star Racing, and other top teams. And they, the best part of this whole deal is if you use the code PULPAMX20, you get 20% off your order. Visit your local dealer, check out motorsport.com, and uh, ask them to see the Worst Connection product line for 2022. Great company, great products. Check it out. Thanks to Worst Connection for coming on the show. PULPAMX20, the code to save. FMF Racing is proud to celebrate over 45 years of fun, building every FMF exhaust right here in the USA. Owner and founder Don Emler may have started FMF Racing in his garage 45 years ago, but Don is still hands-on in our 100,000 square foot state-of-the-art manufacturing facility in Southern California. FMF's goal? Design and manufacture the world's best performance exhausts, 100% in the USA under one roof. FMF is a proud sponsor of the Lucas Oil Pro Motocross Championship for over 25 years. Hey, in case you didn't know, Racetech is the world's largest aftermarket suspension modification company. All Racetech products include award-winning goal valves and settings are 100% guaranteed and made right here in the U.S. of A. Racetech also offers state-of-the-art precision engine services and parts to all engine builders. The staff has over 65 years of championship winning experience. It's so good that many of the top privateer teams such as SGB Honda, Team Solitaire Nuclear Blast Yamaha, and Motul AJE Gas Gas, as well as Jerry Robin, Kevin Morans, and many more, choose Racetech for their superior performance, reliability, and their customer service. Hey guys, what's up? My name's Kate Clayson, and I choose Racetech because I love their desire to strive for perfection. I think we all know that perfection isn't possible, but getting to perfection is always the goal, and I think that is something that both myself and Racetech have always worked towards, and I think they can help you get there too. Hey guys, this is Alex Ray. I use Racetech components in my SGB suspension and also the Racetech engine. The reason I like it is just because uh, the engine's super reliable, tons of torque, and also on the suspension side, it just gives it that flush, nice feeling. Hey, it's your boys over at Team Solitaire. If you don't run Racetech, here's what you do. Put your hands behind your back and run your face into a f***ing wall. Racetech.com. 
What's up, guys? This is Kevin Morans, and I choose Racetech because of their convenience of having Racetech centers all around the United States. Obviously, within my Decker Performance suspension, works really well. They're very high quality performance products. Definitely check them out. Hey, guys, this is Jerry Robin, uh, and I choose Racetech because of uh, the reliable motors, good power, good suspension, and obviously, it's great people around, and I've uh, been there for a long time, and they're awesome. Visit Racetech.com and use code PULP22 to save. With 80 years of experience manufacturing power sports pistons right here in the USA, Weisco has evolved into a full range of performance components for dirt bikes and other power sports machines. Whether you ride a two-stroke or a four-stroke, Weisco has a variety of pistons from reliable forged replacements to the performance-focused Racer Elite series. Weisco has recently expanded our Racer Elite line with SX and MX proven USA-made connecting rods. Now adding to the Garage Buddy Re build kits, clutch and valve train components, and our CV4 thermal protection line. This makes Weisco your single stop performance name. Visit your favorite online or local dealer or Weisco.com to find products for your machine. For over 30 years, Decal Works has led the industry in quality and customer service by offering the best custom motocross graphics, plastics, seat covers, and rider ID products. Decal Works is officially licensed with Honda, Kawasaki, Yamaha, Suzuki, KTM, Husqvarna, and Gas Gas. Their expert staff will go above and beyond to make sure your questions are answered. Decal Works is a proud sponsor of Red Bull KTM Factory Racing and the Rockstar Energy Husqvarna Factory Off-Road Team. Visit decalmx.com and be sure to use promo code PULPMX at checkout. Quality, service, and knowledge is what makes Decal Works stand out. Decal Works, number one for many reasons. In 1990, my dad, Jamie Gregg, started Guts Racing. Guts stands for Gregg's Ultra Trick Seats, because I was just a little kid that wanted a trick seat. And if you're out there looking for a trick seat, go to GutsRacing.com, your local dealer, or motorsport and place your order. Support the people that support Pulp MX. You can use Pulp 2022 for 20% off at gutsracing.com. Attention riders, welcome aboard the all new Atlas Vision. We hope you enjoy the added mobility, quicker flight time and additional views. Please follow along as we outline the safety features of this revolutionary device. The first thing you will notice is the added headroom. The fore and aft positions no longer come with annoying restrictions, so feel free to move about the cabin. Quicker flight times can be achieved by unmatched comforts and unencumbered movements. Yes, we're built for speed and comfort. And now available to all customers is a 360 panoramic view. Go ahead and look around the cabin. These new angles are available at no additional charge. Located on the underside of the frame is the gold standard of impact absorption, D3O. In the event we accidentally take a trip to Indonesia, we suggest that you remain with your neck in the underextended position and allow this proven material to do its job by reducing the forces over 50% better than ever before. Although the Atlas Vision will not be noticeable, it will be there when you need it. If you are riding with a child or someone who requires assistance, secure your vision first and then assist the other person with a prodigy, tyke, or brawl. We ask that you keep your brace on until your moto is finished. We remind you that Atlas makes flexible neck protection. Tampering with, disabling, or destroying the product is prohibited by the limited lifetime warranty. You will find this and all other safety information in the user manual located online at atlasbrace.com. At this time, we ask that you remain standing with throttles in the wide open position with your elbows up and hips fully unlocked. Whatever that means. On behalf of the captain and entire crew, thank you for flying Atlas Vision. Enjoy the views. Welcome back, everybody. Pulp MX Show presented by Decal Works, Fly Racing, Motorsport.com, all on board with us. Thanks for listening, man. Thank you to Matt Walker for calling in. Craig Martin offered some some good uh, advice as well. Uh, thank you to uh, Dylan Wright, of course, and uh, and and Donnie Luce from Yamaha. And um, my studio panel here. Are we any? Maybe we should uh, closer to figuring anything out. No, I just feel like we need to turn this show around a little bit. Okay. And let's get some positivity. Okay. Some fun back okay. into it. All right. Unadilla talk. Unadilla talk. Yeah. All right. I'm ready. All right. Sounds good. I'm ready for MotorcycleIndustryJobs.com. Uh, brand development manager Kenda Tires is the category. 
It is a full-time job. It is based in Columbus, Ohio. Ken Tire is a leading manufacturer of wheels and tires for ATV, bicycle, golf, more. Uh, and uh, it's in Reynoldsburg, Ohio, and is the site of Kenda USA. They are looking for a power sports, somebody in the power sports division, uh, brand development manager. So thanks to the folks at Kenda for posting that job up on MotorcycleIndustryJobs.com. Upload your resume for free today. First and only job uh, board, but specifically for the motorcycle industry. Upload your resume again for free. And thank you to MotorcycleIndustryJobs.com. If you're a company in the industry and you're looking to hire some of the best people, Post your job up on there. Contact those guys. Do that, and uh, you'll figure it out. And uh, you'll get some good people, people that want to work in the industry. Jason Thomas, Chris Kiefer, Max Steffens, all uh, in here. Thanks to the folks at Wiseco. Wiseco has been manufacturing pistons right in the USA for over 80 years. Supporting teams like Factory Honda, Club MX, uh, and more. Whether you ride a two-stroke or four-stroke, Wiseco piston, has a, they have a variety of pistons from reliable forge replacements to the performance-focused Racer Elite Series. They've even expanded that line a while. They make, they make connecting rods. they got the Garage Buddy Rebuild Kitch Clutch and Valve Train Components, CV4 Thermal Protection Line. If you want to get a piston from the folks at Wiseco and uh, Max, remember the giant Wiseco stickers on your fork guard? Mm -hmm. Everybody had them. Mm -hmm. Even if you didn't run Wiseco, you put the giant <laughs> Wiseco. Yeah, they, I know. Because yeah. they had contingency. Yeah, because they had contingency. Yeah. yeah. You get paid That's for right. it. That's yeah. right. Think about how many mid-90s privateers had Wiseco pistons on their fork carts. <laughs> You did, too. Don't even act like you didn't. Oh, I'm sure I did. <laughs> no doubt. Uh, there's a code to save with Wiseco on PulpMXShow.com. And, uh, yeah, we're trying to help you people save some money. Again, PulpMXShow.com for all the sponsor deals. Wiseco Pistons is bringing you our next guest on the show tonight. This gentleman made his return to the Nationals uh, this past weekend at uh, Unadilla. Uh, ran third for a long time. Ended up fourth in the second moto. Had a good first race back. He's a friend of the show. Cameron McAdoo. What's up, man? How are you? I'm good. How are you guys? We're good, man. Thanks for uh, thanks for coming in. We spent about an hour on Brian Deegan uh, claiming gate at the uh, Loretta's. So yeah, we, oh. we we spent a long time on that one. So yeah, that's been a hot topic in our sport for the last week or two, huh? It it has been uh, absolutely uh, interesting. Yeah, what uh, what you think of Unadilla? Were you happy with it? I th I think looking from the outside, looking in, I think that's really a, a good start and something to build on, man. Yeah, I mean, like. Obviously, as a racer, you always want more. But I haven't raced outdoors, and it's been two years now. So I really didn't know, I guess. I I mean, as in all transparency, you just don't really know exactly where you stand, and you're a little bit unsure of everything, right? Like, we did a ton of prep, you know, from about mid-series on to now, or around Washougal time, I guess. Uh, and I felt like I was as ready as I could be, but... Yeah, like I said, it's been since uh, 2020 since I've raced a full day of outdoors. So, um, yeah, I was a little off in the morning. My pace was a little off. I didn't get the greatest start the first moto and then um, kind of struggled to adapt to the track. But it was awesome to get out front and and uh, be able to have a good second moto for sure. Track was I wasn't there this weekend, but JT was. And I mean, we've all been to Unadilla a ton. JT, would you say approximately zero riders were fans of this track this weekend? Shimoda seemed like he was okay with it, okay, but he did win yeah, the race. He did win. He yep. didn't win the race. But I, <laughs> I would have a hard time thinking anybody was like, man, this track was awesome today. Yeah. that, And that's my opinion. Somebody yeah. could totally yeah. have thought that, but I would what, doubt what'd it. What do you think, Cam? Yeah, I would agree with JT. Um, like, it was definitely not the ruddy Unadilla that we know. Mm -hmm. Um it honestly kind of reminded me of like uh, a little bit more rutted and rougher uh, Glen Helen at like three o'clock on a Thursday. <laughs> so, I, so super um, dry, super dusty. I yeah. typed that in daytime. Yeah, I go look I mean, West Coast. Honestly, yeah. honestly, first moto, I was probably twentieth on the start, and I was extremely nervous because I couldn't see anything because of the dust. Yeah. Like I, I was, I was basically sitting down like with my hands on my brakes ready to hit the brakes at any time because like I couldn't even see who was in front of me. That's Jeez. how dusty yeah. it was. Um second moto I didn't I wasn't really like around very many guys, so it wasn't as bad. But yeah, it was pretty square edged and dry. It it was fairly flat. It wasn't as ruddy as Unadilla usually gets. But the one thing I do like about that is that I feel like it's a more available to race. Like even I think probably for the last you know, six laps, Joe and I were in a pretty much an all-out battle the whole time, and, like, I could feel him going all over the place behind me, and you could change lines better. Yeah. You know, when it's a slot car track, it's pretty tough to 
really race it. Unadilla has um, been a, a track that's been tough to ride all over the place. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 But it was, it was gnarly. It, it caught me off guard for sure. Like just kind of with set up a little bit and comfort. Um, I chased it a little bit all day. I think everyone did though. When you're battling Joe, and I don't know if you're doing the math that he, you know, you know, he won the first moto. You're battling pretty hard. You're, it's your first race back. And are you thinking like, uh, I know he's going for the win. Like, or are you just like, screw this dude. I'm holding them off. Cause it looked like you said, screw this dude. I'm holding them off. <laughs> um, I don't get a bonus when he wins. Right. So okay. Got it. Got it. That that's how I guess I could answer that. Yeah. Yeah. Like cause I, I'm going to race, I'm going to race everyone just hard. Like I, I, um, that's what I get paid to do. And that's like, you know, yeah. it's not no. in my mentality. I mean, obviously as a team, like we've seen what teams have done in the past. If, if someone's in a championship position, like, yeah, maybe you don't race that guy so hard the last race or, or whatever. But like, this is kind of a different thing. And I, I wasn't doing any sort of math. I was just, yeah. I definitely knew who it was behind me for sure. But, um, I, I wanted that moto podium. Like I've never had a moto podium mm-hmm. outdoors. I don't think maybe I did in the mud at Loretta's. I don't remember, but, um, so yeah, like that would have been a, I was very bummed to lose that spot halfway through the last lap. And, um, yeah. Yeah. And, okay. Yeah. It, the, I was, yeah. I would not, that I was surprised, but I'm like, huh. McAdoo yeah. fighting Joe, and Joe was in position for the overall, and he would have got it anyway, even though even if he hadn't gotten you, you know. So mm-hmm. there is that, but yeah, yeah I, I was still like, oh boy, like yeah, Cam. And, yeah. yeah, and I, I talked to him afterwards a little bit. Yeah, um, and he he thought he needed to pass me for the overall. Oh shit! Okay, yeah. yeah, yeah. He <laughs> actually, this is a funny story. So he was like, uh, we were actually eating dinner, and he was talking about. He's like, did you hear me on the screw you? like the mm-hmm. that section i was like no and he was like, like in his accent he was like i asked you the one lap like excuse me can i please go by and, he, <laughs> said, and then he, he said he goes the next lap i said please it's for the overall uh, but I, so I, <laughs> hey cam That's so good i asked him on the podium he's like no i knew i knew and then I'm getting texts, oh, like even oh. my mom texted me, and she's like, I don't think he knew. Like his, his body yeah. language yeah. after is like – and I yeah. asked him specifically, did you know this time? And he's like, yeah, 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 yeah I knew. I was like, oh, yeah, oh boy. Was okay. Like, yeah. This sounds like the Deacon thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, – No, but yeah, yeah. I mean, it was – it was great to be back racing. Like I was just um, – yeah, I was just stoked to be yeah. able to get through a good day. And, did- like, you know, sometimes my determination – um, is my enemy, and I was happy that I didn't, you know, let that happen. And just yeah, it was it was really enjoyable to you, be back. You got track. a fourth of the TLD guys in a moto. Or was that a fifth? Your best career best? Did you get a fourth? I think the fifth. Okay, so this might be your career I, best outdoor. Yeah, I think yeah. It, it's yeah, or it matches it for sure. Yeah, you had a really yeah. good result at High Point one year. I yeah, on, on TLD. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, I, was I think just I went like five seven or something. Oh, okay. Like All right. So this is so. Look, first race back, first outdoor national in two years. You get a career best moto finish. Good job. Yeah. Yeah, awesome. totally. Right. And what's been like kind of tough for me is because like that 2019 year when I rode for TLD, um, like six and stuff were like good. I was happy with those. Mm-hmm. Right. Like that's, you know, I was happy to be battling with those guys. I was like, basically, I'm I'm a filling guy and I'm beating guys with full-time jobs so on but now um ever since i guess i've had a year of supercross where i felt like i've had some decent success i've been con- like consistently a podium guy won races last like last year 2021 and then this year i haven't raced outdoors in that same series that i've had you know so like it's been like it seems like you know why would you be yeah content with a fourth but i'm like Man, like the last time I raced outdoors was 2020, and I was like, I struggled. So yeah, you know, I just I need to build back up. Yeah, sure. absolutely. Why school Pistons bringing you Cameron McAdoo? How was your fitness since you haven't been racing? You know, did you hit the wall or did you just hang on or how was it? No, not at all. Honestly, it was. Um, it actually wasn't a very physical day for me. Uh, I was talking to Nick a little bit uh, today, and I was surprised because I said the last time I raced outdoors, I remembered it being you know, that feeling on Sunday where you're like, man, that was, that was really hard, (laughs) but it was fairly cool out. It wasn't super hot. Mm -hmm. And I've been, I mean, 
I think this is probably the biggest training block five weeks that I've put in uh, a long time. Um, it was, we've done a lot of riding, a lot of just everything. And I had a lot to catch up on. So it's been hot here. I, I just feel like my fitness was, you know, as good as it could possibly be for sure. Did you like, did you tell Nick like, Hey man, uh, yeah, thanks for bringing on Joe. Great work, Nick asshole. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. That might have came to my mind. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. It's uh, it's a business for you know him mm -hmm. and myself. That's you know that's what I hire him for, and I hire him for his services, and his services stay the same to me, and and I have the same amount of you know attention, coaching, sure. everything. Yep. So that's you know, and Nick and I have a great friendship aside from being my trainer, my coach, mm -hmm. etc. So like. Obviously, as a racer, like yeah, that's not ideal. But um, I, but I would yeah. think I would think a little bit that it could be like confirmation too. Like you see Joe killing it, and you're like, okay, for sure, whatever yep. we're doing is gonna work. Yep, you know. So yep. there's the yeah. other side of that. This program works. Yep. Uh, you know, same yep. with Alden Baker. Guys go to Alden Baker. Yeah, and which they, they're like, this works. Cam had already been seeing and, Supercross success, yeah. right? But you like, okay, like yeah. clearly yeah. whatever they're doing for motocross is happening. You know, yep. so yeah, yeah, and and you don't have to know much about our sport to be able to watch Joe and I ride and That's see Steve. the difference of what what right. what makes us each. Um, I guess good at racing like you know he's such a technically sound rider and he's like it just looks so easy and it looks like so effortless when he's riding and it's you know not so much that for me so there's things that I, I can watch him do or see him and you know we we learn from each other and like at the end of the day I just have to do my best it doesn't matter who's training who yeah. and who's training where I just have to do my best at racing yeah, I think that's true. I I always felt like I was I was racing myself more than anybody more than anything else most of the time. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, totally. No, it, it, that's exactly it. Um, I, I we we exchanged texts after Paula. Is that the first lap? That was the first lap, right? Paula? Yeah, first lap. Uh, yeah, yeah, my fantasy team first still lap. hasn't recovered. <laughs> well, <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Oh, and here's was it? But was it the first lap on both injuries at Paula Cam? Um, no. So the first injury was last year of Paula, the first race, but, um, it was the second moto oh, okay. probably a, a couple laps in. Yeah. I got kind of got my front wheel taken out a little bit and stuck my leg into a, basically the side of the track where they pushed the dirt up on a dozer. Yeah. So this yeah, year, Paula opening lap, opening round. I mean, dude, you had to have been in a deep, dark place laying there or back at the truck. I can't imagine. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, you're just like, what? You know? Yeah, it was, I mean, that's that's the hardest part of our sport, and that's, like, I guess the hardest thing to understand, and I'm, as I go through more and more years and, you know, have times where I've had some injuries and stuff, like, nothing's guaranteed. Um, and for how much work we do, you – would hope and you you wish that something could be guaranteed you know like that you could go race and like show what you worked for and and i put a lot of work in after my shoulder separation and supercross to be good at outdoors i was really focused on improving my outdoor skills my riding mm -hmm. everything and um yeah we just we did a lot and then it just feels like you take it all away from yourself Dude. but yeah. And, I, and I don't like to, like, my biggest thing with my injuries is I like to take full responsibility of them. Like, I, I didn't get it taken away from me. I, I took it away from myself. Um, right. I did it, and, like, that was, you know, there's a lot of times sitting at home with, uh, you know, I had a broken sternum. I had bleeding on my lungs, bleeding on my heart. Like, I had some pretty big stuff internally, um, and I was just, it's, it's hard not to be hard on yourself. What sucks but is like I when think, I go to Paula now, yeah. and every time I go and jump off that little inside roller, yeah. I think of Cam oh. every <laughs> single lap. Every lap, you I'm like, "Hey Cam, how much hey of Cam." Potential you have of high siding right there. Jeez, Dude. man. Uh, yeah. yeah, I can't even imagine. That's yeah, just it sucks. JT, have you ever hurt yourself first round of a series, like after prepping? Uh, like I hurt myself on Thursday before the first Supercross of the year. Oh yeah, well, I was just messing around, yeah. doing starts. I went over like just riding a little bit. Crashed on a double, separated my shoulder. Yeah. Thursday before, right. I'm just like, you, you have to be kidding me. Yeah. Like, I'm talking, and Mac, you know, Cam, you know how this goes. Like, there's so much work before the season. It's just endless work with no payoff. 
for months. And then Thursday <laughs> yes, before, the, I'm yes. just like, you, ha- you can't be serious. Yeah. You can't. God, yeah. I can't. Totally. That's- and it's like, it's like you said, it's just endless work. And like, you're like, at some point, it almost gets to be like, am I just doing this to be a fit guy? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's like professional you're practicer. Like, you get the right. race, you know, like, yeah, you're, you know, you basically live for Saturdays and then that happens. Like it's, that's, I think that's probably some of the most building times, you know, as a, mm-hmm. like, as I guess just as a person, like you, you really find yourself there, like, you know, how, how strong you are mentally. And it's, um, I think one of the biggest things for me is the people around me. Like that's, I think if you have a good group, it's really, those people really show and pay off at those times because it's really tough. Like mentally, it just, you, you get so down on yourself it's hard not to, um, especially when everyone carries on and is racing every weekend. Like that's when the, your true corner people come out and like bring the best out of you. So it's, it's crazy because um, these amateur kids that I've you know been around, they say, yeah. oh, I'm going to work hard. I'm going to work hard. And they expect that they're going to win. And I go, dude, you got to work hard. And then hopefully everything works out. There's no guarantees that nothing's yeah. going to happen. And then you look at cam totally. guys like cam or Adam or something like they just work their asses off and then they crash and they come back and, they, yeah, they do great and then crash and then come back and do great. It's like it's gnarly. I don't think our fans realize how tough that is right. when you get knocked off the treadmill of the series and you're back to building and you come in and you run the pace. That's tough. It's yeah. tough to do. Impressive. Yeah. Um, you know? I thought Ferrandis was really good like that this weekend yeah. too. Like yeah. He... Yeah, I was, in, I was impressed by Dylan. Yeah. Was... A second moto, he looked like he maybe didn't have it. But, but dude, yeah. like to get in yeah. there and mix it up yeah, with those yeah, guys, like, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Crazy. Um, totally. Uh, Cam, how much – I don't know if you can relate this or, or anything because, like you said, you know you haven't really ridden, A-star, ridden outdoors, but how's the bike now from what you remember it? Um, they've made a lot of improvements. Have they? Yeah. Um, Kim, yeah, they've done a lot of work. I mean, we had done a lot, and it had – I was really happy with where it was going in the Paula, actually, too. Mm-hmm. Um, and not a ton has changed throughout the season um, right now, but – from the bike I raced at Paula in 2021, they've done a lot. Um, and that's, that's what's another fun part about the process. Like I like to see what the team does. And like, that's another thing that I love about where I, who I ride for and where we ride. Like it's, it's such a sweet group effort. Like I really feel like every day, everyone's got the same, same determination, the same work, the same goals as I do. And like they've, it's mm-hmm. kind of an endless pursuit to win with Mitch and everyone else on the team. Ian, like everyone is, you know, yeah. just super. And that, that's why Mitch is so stoked when we win and he wants to win so bad. So, like, it's, yeah, the bike's gotten quite a bit better. I'm, yep. I'm pretty happy with it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Think about uh, McAdoo up to speed. Forkner back riding well. Hammaker's yeah. impressive. Poor Hammaker, by the way. Dude. He's probably thinks he's, he's still so lucky. He's, he's so lucky. Oh. That looked ugly. Man, I I was, like, not too far behind it. I was kind of dropping off the hill, mm-hmm. and all I saw was, like, the bottom of his bike. And I'm like, that's that's a really bad crash. Like, yeah. you just know as a racer. And, and then I saw him laying there, and I was that was I was pretty nervous. I'm, I was, like, super stoked when I came around the finish line, and we were continuing on racing. Um, and then to see him at the truck, like, and then I saw the replay. That was a... That was a big one. Yeah. So, I do yeah. appreciate that Scary. they do fix the lips, though. Like, they were they conscious there, of yeah. it, and they fixed some stuff, right? Yep. So. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, like, coming down that next hill, there was that pretty fast, like, uh, I don't even know I'd call it maybe like a tabletop thing. Yep. They uh, That was a pretty soft face all day. It was just, it kept getting soft, but it was fixed each time, and that was nice. But, mm-hmm. uh, but yeah, that was, like, um, what you guys were saying with, like, the speed, getting up to speed, that's it's pretty exceptional. Like when we come back, it's you, I guess we kind of lose respect for how fast we're going Mm -hmm. when you're doing it every weekend. And it just, it gets to be normal. It's just like, yeah, this is, you know, we just we're racers and whatnot. But, um, yeah, like, man, the the class in in both classes, like everyone's so fast. It's, it's gnarly. 450 class too. You look at like Mookie and Dino and yeah, they just came back. You know, I'm not cr- criticizing them at all, but Mookie Dino are 15, 16. Uh, That's what I'm saying. You know, uh, it's, it's, yeah, it's like a deep, And they're deep gnarly, class. gnarly dudes. Yeah, absolutely. Let's take, for yeah, example, champions. Yeah. You know. Like you look at Anderson, JT can attest to this. He's there. 
he's he is an un- exceptional. He's almost won the Supercross Championship. Yeah, and he's twenty to thirty seconds back behind Eli Insane. and Chase. Yep, it's it's mind boggling. Yep. Yeah, no, I, I agree. It's crazy to watch these guys kind of elevate, especially late in the season. That's why for Cam coming back late in the season when right. everybody's on their game to run third for most of the moto, you know, is I think pretty pretty damn good. So, um, absolutely. Cameron McAdoo on the Bolt Mech Show brought to you by the folks at Weisco. Go to Weisco.com, find your local uh, dealer. Uh, go to motorsport.com, look at the code on pulpamechshow.com to save with the folks at Weisco. Um, yeah, thanks to those guys for coming on board. Uh, yeah, Cam, it's – it's funny, like, Joe has really turned the corner. Nick's a big part of it. But, you know, Joe's doing the work and working really hard. And you, you've won some races. Uh, and you guys are both tryouts for Mitch Payton. That's what I find, like, wow. Like, Mitch found a couple of guys that, you know, ah, let's try them out. And these are mainstays of this team now. You, Joe, you know, it's, it's awesome. It's good. Good to see you guys yeah. do, make, make the most of these opportunities that Mitch gave you, you know? Yeah, totally. It's, it's awesome, like. It's, um, you know, we, it's, we're always in like the endless pursuit of more and more and more and to, you know, be our very best. But sometimes like even, you know, at the end of each month or the beginning of the weeks, like Maddie and I'll sit down and write our goals down for the week or like write down what we appreciated for, you know, that like last year and so on. Like one thing that was really cool this year was like I was driving to Dr. G and, and, uh, they redid the windows on the pro circuit building and it was like a picture of me at Daytona last year. And I was like, Holy crap. Like yeah. two years ago, I was, <laughs> I would drive down there and I would go to the lady at the front desk and I would just be like, Hey, I want to talk to Mitch. And he'd be like, yeah, I have no time for you like right now. Cause yeah. he knew he had nothing for me. Like, <laughs> yep. so it's just cool to, you know, be able to kind of just look back on everything and, and at least appreciate what we've been able to build and keep trying to work to, on the door of the semi. That's, I think it's uh, awesome. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I think it's helped Cam, and maybe I'm wrong, but like having the deal already inked and done for next year, and I think the year after, right, Cam? Yep. Yeah. So yep. Cam's already. We don't have to worry about how much he tries. Like he sometimes he tries too much. Yeah. This I think could calm him down and make him a better rider. Where in some instances we talk trash on riders, where oh he's packing it in, he's got a deal next year. I think it's the opposite for him. Because it'll smooth you out, you relax, you know you got a ride, and you're still you have that try hard mindset. So I think it works. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah. that's that is it's it's huge. Like our, you know, there's only so many spots in our sport, and kind of the first you know maybe three years of my career were just always barely holding on to a ride, or <laughs> I lost my ride at Geico, and then you know Sexton broke his collarbone, so I got it again, and then I got to fill in, and then. I got a one year deal, you know, so like it, it was like that for a few years for me. And that was, I think a really building time for me because, you know, like you have no option, but to just keep, keep on keeping on. And you also, I think learn in those times that if you keep doing your best at whether you're racing dirt bikes, whether you're selling real estate, whatever you do for a living or as a person, I think if you just keep doing your best, like, it's going to work out. And I've really found that out about racing. And then, yeah, like, like now I'm, you know, fortunate enough to be at the end of this contract, I'll be with pro circuit for five years. Um, and it is comforting. It's nice to, to be able to know that, Hey, like these guys believe in me, they believe in my ability. Um, you know, they're happy with how I've done for them and how we've worked together in the past. And, and, uh, yeah, just to know that I can, you know, I'm professionally in business side of things, you know, away for a while and can just just focus on my job. That's that's enjoyable too. Yeah, and it, and it all started with straight rhythm. Pulp and bike is straight rhythm. That's it. Ooh, Ram it. <laughs> first time I'd ridden a two stroke. I didn't even ride that bike. I that was like that was crazy. I flew to California. I know. I got on it and like we just rode it up this Dude. big <laughs> scaffolding thing, and they're like. I'm like, wait, so, like, is this, can I roll off this? They're like, oh, no, like, this is a drop-off. <laughs> <laughs> and I just went, like, and yeah. that, was, that was funny. Is, Are you going to have a team this year? Uh, no, I don't know if they're doing it again, the same thing. But, yeah, Jericho tuned, and uh, Kiefer, you wrote it for Matt. That's right. He's just saying that. Like, I wrote it. I'm like, oh, I'm going to try it. And it's so much props to him because he's never ridden the bike, and he does all the obstacles. And I go up there, and I'm like, 
You're telling me I have to jump off this son bitch? I know nothing about this bike. <laughs> I was scared shitless. And I'm like, geez. Uh, man. I remember Phil saying, uh, I don't want to do it, but I got this McAdoo kid. He'll do it. <laughs> and I'm like, the kid that bicycles like a champion. That's all I really knew about McAdoo. The Moto Concepts guys just said he rode a bicycle like a madman. Yeah. I'm like, the bicycle guy? Like, the guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He'll do it. I'm like, all right, give me his, give his number. <laughs> so that was awesome. Yeah. That was good times. That was, a, that was probably one of the funnest off seasons I've had in my career. I, I could probably say that. Yeah. Cause I like it was, and it was some of the most unsure times in my career too. Sure. I, yeah, yeah. you know, was on Geico 17 and then 18. And then I got fired at the end of 18 or, you know, they didn't have room for me, whatever you'd call it. Right. Uh, and yeah, I, I bought a 450 from them and then I just really was unsure of anything of a plan. And then I went to straight rhythm and then, um, you the, uh, gentleman that runs Honda in Australia. Yeah. He had the 250 guy get hurt, so I went there and raced Osex Open. Um, I met Eric Bernard somewhere in those lines. I think JB um, mm-hmm. introduced me to him. I went to what did it have been Bercy first, I think. Yeah, Bercy first. Yeah, yeah, I think I went to Bercy first. Yep, went there, traveled with Brayton and Duff. We did that, and that was like the week after Osex Open. Then I went to Geneva, mm-hmm. and then came back it was just like it was a super you know i met new people i went to all these different countries and um yeah yeah it was cool that was really fun i remember i remember you see i I remember seeing you wearing the straight rhythm gear in geneva and i'm like the kid still (laughs) still needs some gear he's got pulp mx logos and uh and 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 everything else we got the jersey actually in the studio here it's over there uh still still hanging in i wore in paris the gear i wore in paris was like uh whatever that team that i rode their bike um, and it had pockets, in the <laughs> like zip open yeah, pockets. Yeah, I remember. Okay. That's yeah. great. Uh, thanks for joining yeah, us, Cam. Stuff. I appreciate it. Good I got job. One more. Oh, okay. Kiefer's got one more. So I follow you and Maddie on social, and yep. much like Heather and I, you guys go to bed early. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Is there like a guilty pleasure show that she makes you watch at night in bed that you just you like don't like, but you you kind of like it and you don't want to admit it? Um, there's nothing in particular. She's, she's big into Disney movies. Oh boy. Like, so she'll be oh like, um, <laughs> oh boy. she'll want to like put cars on. Oh, uh, yeah. are you into that? Yeah, or are you reading I'm, I'm it? Blowing her out. Um, I'm falling asleep. Okay. Yep. I'm like, cause the, I like to be able to, that's actually kind of our thing. Like I like to be able to fall asleep with the TV on and then the TV gets turned off. Oh God. So she'll stay up and like, yeah, I, I'm, I'm out at, I don't ever see two numbers before the dots. That's my thing. Yeah. <laughs> I never see 10 o'clock. So I'm, I'm usually out by 930. I'm in bed by 845. Like, I'm going to go shower after I get off the phone with you guys. Go lay in bed. <laughs> you got JT beat um, by an hour. Yeah. I don't see yeah. – I usually don't see 8 o'clock. Yeah. It's – man, it's just – it's nice that way. I like it that way. I just, I just thought my life was sad the other day because I'm laying in bed with Heather and we're watching True Blood, right? And I'm like, is it sad that – this is the highlight of my day. I look forward to, I drink coffee. I love drinking yeah. coffee. And then I think about nighttime already. I'm like, I can't wait till I can hop in bed again <laughs> yeah. and watch True Blood. I go, damn. Yeah, that's kind of wrong with that. Yeah. yeah. Or, uh, or we'll get into a movie. Um, and then, but we've only got about 40 minutes, 30 to 40 minutes of watching the movie each night. So it'll take us four nights <laughs> to watch a movie. That's, that's me and Jim. No, we'll take, all right, are yeah. you tired? Yep, I'm tired. All right, cool. We turn the TV off. We're yeah. Out. <laughs> uh, that's awesome. Uh, thanks, man. Yep. Thanks for calling in, and we'll see you this weekend at Bud's Creek, man. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it. Yep. Thank you guys All for right. having me. See you guys right. That's uh, that's Cameron McAdoo, everybody. Uh, appreciate him calling. He did a pretty good job. Yeah, I, I think that's a solid start for him for sure. Uh, 7 o'clock hour brought to you by Off-Road Warehouse. Proud to be supporting the, uh, the uh, Club MX team, which, by the way, we may see J-Mart the last two on a Club MX Yamaha. I thought that was like a thing. It is a thing. Oh, that's a thing? Yeah, that's, yeah. that's for sure happening. Yeah, it's that's been a, well, that's been out for a while. That's what happens when like you since, go to the races. Since Spring Creek, like when he was the TV guy, he was telling people that. We may see. Uh, <laughs> are you on Live Swap already? Oh, are hey, you, are uh, you me, Tater? Uh, TP at eight fifteen. <laughs> when you used to come to the races, Sorry, you you knew up. a lot of this stuff, Steve. <laughs> He's afraid to go on social. He's getting beat up on social <laughs> right now. So J Mart, perhaps chill. showing up for the last two. <laughs> ORW, uh, Pulp MX code safe, offroadwarehouse.com. They got stores all across America. Check them out. Latest in Jeep, truck, uh, Overland, UTV, and racing. 
Products from the industry's leading brands. Uh, Off-road warehouse uh, sells everything, uh, and they st- install everything they sell as well. Pulp of Mexico it saves at offroadwarehouse.com. Thanks to those guys for coming on board. Uh, all right, Travis Preston's coming up next. Uh, but first, Kiefer, we have I mean, a big a big talk tonight. Yeah. Big uh, uh, talk about this star racing Yamaha uh, claiming bike. Mm-hmm. Uh, big controversy in our sport, claiming or not. JT and you disagree on that. I, I'm on, I'm siding with JT. Mm-hmm. You know, but but anyway, so yeah. So I was driving up here. Yeah. And I was thinking about JT and how good he looks lately, and he's busting out of his fly T-shirt right now with his biceps, and his veins are popping out. So I was like, "There's only one thing that could be making this happen." Yeah. yeah. And that is that Yeti. The cooler. The cooler. Yeah. So I brought four hundred dollars in cash. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Oh, hold on, hold on. No, we. we so have. this is the Yeti. So I looked it <laughs> okay, up. Okay, so the, the cooler is two hundred dollars. Yeah. Right. Yep. Yep. I have double the MSRP. I have four hundred dollars cash. Just please read this. Please read the contract. Okay. And the can. contract states, I, Chris Kiefer, hereby put in legal and binding claim for JT's Yeti cooler, claiming the cooler <laughs> for double the retail price at four hundred. Right here. Yep. Henceforth, per the rules of claiming, the Yeti cooler and everything. It's stickered. It's empty. Everything inside of it has been tagged as now the property it's, of me. Well, it's empty, so that clears that up. Doesn't matter. If it wasn't, it's all mine now. I'm claiming it. It was a gift. The, the core was a gift. So I, I didn't feel, pay for it. look it, I don't, I don't want to do anything with this besides you're what I see. Right you're claiming putting a, bla- you're putting a black eye in your career right now. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to pull you aside. We need you, to talk this right through. Now. You are never going to get help from Yeti ever again. <laughs> <laughs> Every time you enter a gym for the rest of your life, somebody's going to be like, that's the guy. <laughs> that's the he guy. He claimed the cooler. Yep. <laughs> that's that, the guy. They're going to start growing. So we're claiming the cooler, Kiefer? I, I'm, taking it, I'm taking it with me. It's my cooler now. JT can suck it. And we claim uh, the cooler. <laughs> I got 400 large here. It's mine. And we're going to have a little bit of uh, fun with this cooler. I'm going to take it with me yeah. places. Why not? I'm I mean, gonna, again. I'm going to do body transformation poses for Instagram. Right. And see how it goes. Something has happened to the gentleman here, and perhaps it's in that cooler. That's what I'm perhaps thinking. Perhaps so he there. might be claiming that it's empty. Yeah, but we will we'll find see. out. We'll see. Yeah, we'll see. But the the, the claim I has feel been like made. Whatever nutrients that I need is going to be inside this uh, magic little blue box. Are you accepting the claim? No, I'm not taking his money. It doesn't he ain't matter. Taking you, my cooler. It doesn't matter. The rules are rules. Yeah, rules are rules. He can claim it. No, I didn't sign a waiver. This isn't the AMA. This is MX Sports. Tim Cotter's not here. <laughs> <laughs> Tim Cotter's not here. <laughs> the general's going to be calling you. That's fine. The, ge- the general's on one. Is, he, is the shack with that insurance? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so you're, you're claiming the cooler. I'm claiming the cooler. All it's right, my cooler. Fair enough. Yeah, I, I like it. Stand by for liftoff. All right. I like it. Fantastic. So $400. Yep. I mean, Everybody if you want to buy my cooler for $400, I'm, I'll take it. Look it. I think it's a horrible It's right idea. here. It's for you. I'm not taking your money. Look it. It's my cooler. It's not your cooler. It was given to me by a gentleman named Buddy Ford, friend of mine. So it's not like I bought it anyway. No. <laughs> Everyone giving JT a hard time about the cooler? Just Buddy Dalton. Pass it I don't know why I said just Buddy, pa- Ford's bypass him. Said Buddy Ford. Bypass Buddy Dalton is his name. <laughs> Buddy Ford? <laughs> Buddy Ford. From yeah, Quebec, I'm like, what? Like, what? <laughs> Meet the same for me. Uh, yeah, there we go. Claimed. 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 It's, it's that easy, people. Yeah, you can just do it. Anything. <laughs> you can do it to anything. It's that easy. Yeah, yeah. The upside for you is you can go buy two. I mean, you could actually go go to the, the table right that. now. You, you could just go buy two. I mean, if you're really going to give like, me Like, look at his face. <laughs> like, he's looking at I, that. I don't know if you're serious or not. <laughs> <laughs> look at uh, I'm serious. Take his money. Buy Take two. Take my money. Maybe two. this hey. could change my physique and my life. It might. It all look might. It, it all he's depends. giving you shit all on training on for life. In that cooler. I'm going to train for life now. Mm-hmm. All figure, depends on what you put in that cooler. Really figure this out. Uh, life is a cooler. <laughs> what are you putting in it? Life is a cooler. <laughs> uh, well, okay. All right. Good I'm to know. Um, before we come up with Travis Preston, long. real quick, race tech rant of the night. Um, motor <laughs> race tech pulp twenty two is a code to say. Put it right this by your tech. stocks right Sorry. here. Okay. And uh, and really want to thank those guys for coming on board. Privateer proven race tech, of course. Look, my rant. If you saw social media on Instagram, I. First, I prefer Justin Barsha over Christian Craig to the point where in interviews with Christian Craig, I was pumping up Justin Barsha, and Craig was laughing. And then Bar- Barsha bowed out, and now it's between Justin Cooper and Christian Craig, 
and I think Craig should get the spot, although Cooper wrote pretty damn good at Unadilla. He did. Uh, looked pretty damn good. And Marshugal. And Marshugal as well. Uh, but I still think Craig should get it based on the body of work. Craig hit his head pretty good at Unadilla. wasn't himself. So I was uh, debating this on Twitter with pe- with people, my listeners, and I don't mind – I don't mind a healthy debate on social we, media. We know. Yeah, if we you're know. if you're if Especially you're about politics. If you're nice, like if you're if you're uh, uh, you know a normal person, if you call me names, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm happy to listen to other sides. Well, you did else. say healthy, so. So, uh, you know, somebody said, "Well, C- Cooper won the f- won the second moto. He just crushed the second moto." And I replied to the guy, "Yeah, but what happened in the first moto? Because to me, when you make a mistake and you crash, that's 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 your mistake. You made the mistake and you crashed. So, yes, he won the second moto, but he crashed in the first moto. Can't have crashing in motocross the nations. That's a bad thing. So, the fact that he won the second moto, he did great. But my point to the guy, to the guy on Twitter, was like, ah, well, the first moto. You just can't literally have the most recency bias of the last moto raced. To me, you have to take but, okay, much more. Okay. Hold on a second, though. Nope. So, nope. Justin Cooper. <laughs> <laughs> and so, later on in this conversation... I, I'd say multiple times, I'm fine with Justin Cooper going. He's good. He looks like he's better. But I prefer Christian Craig. It, it was me. If I'm if I'm Roger DeCoster, I'm picking Craig. But Justin Cooper will do a good job. He's raced there before. It's fine. I, I said this three or four times on Twitter. Just my preference, my opinion. Justin Cooper, who was on the show two weeks ago, blows me out for 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 saying this on, on Instagram. Like, uh, but is he, it really blowing you out? I think it kind of was. I think he didn't blow you. I think. I, I think he, I think he did. Why? We kay. keep coming back to this opinion thing. You had an opinion of him. He had an opinion of you. Right. No, but like his opinion, like he should understand this is just the media talking. Like I, I didn't say Justin Cooper fucking sucks. I said numerous other times I'm fine with Justin Cooper going. I'm not running some massive uh, scheme to keep Justin Cooper off the MXDN. I'm fine with it. But he takes the one thing that, you know, and just says, oh, well, I crashed and look at my bent up bike. My comeback would be still to Justin Cooper. Yeah, you crashed. You crashed. Yes, you did well with a bent up bike to come back up to what do you get fifth? So whatever. Uh, you know, I, I just fourth, I think. Yeah. The point is, is stop being so fucking sensitive yeah. to these riders. Like, just stop, stop it. Like, I, I prefer Christian Craig, and if you know, that's cool. When I was bugging Craig about Barsha, Christian was like laughing, like I really want to go, but I, I'm like, hey man, it's cool. Like, I just think Barsha do a better job. Okay, I have a question for yeah. you. Okay. If Justin Cooper was at this level where he's winning one out of two motos on the weekends. You could make the case that maybe he wins first moto, maybe Shimoto beats him. Yeah, he's one or two. He's one or two. Doesn't matter, right? Okay. If he is that that guy all season long, is Christian Craig even in this conversation? No, no, he's not. So if Justin Cooper is back to that level, shouldn't he get the spot? That's fine, but it the selection's over. The team's getting picked. The team's getting picked this weekend, I believe. Selection's not over. It's not if you can tell me yet? who it is, then who is it? I don't think I don't know. I think you just said it's over. Then it's not no, over. No, but 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 there it's going to be announced at Bud's Creek. No, so, it's so, not over. so no more results. There's no more races from now. The races have ended, and they're going to name the team from what maybe. I understand at Bud's Creek. Maybe. So we're going off two moto wins. Maybe they tell four guys. Maybe. Yeah, I, I don't know, but or. I just <laughs> the point is is Christian or Justin would not be a bad pick either one, and right. I said that numerous times. I'm fine with either guy. I prefer Christian. You prefer Cooper? Cool. Whatever. I don't think Justin Cooper... I don't necessarily have a preference. Oh. I just think Justin Cooper got pushed out of the conversation prematurely. That's all. I would agree with that. Okay, that's fine. That, that, that's that's fine. opinion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I just like... Imagine... Right. You know, we're in the media. We're talking about these guys. We're debating it. It's, it's sports radio. It's, it's all... These guys are just butthurt. I didn't say Justin Cooper sucked. He'd be a fine choice. Right. And I said you can that. now if you, you want. You like, equally, this, is, this, is your, this is your chance. I yeah, I would. You equally get butthurt often. No, no not no. often. That is not. That is. You I are just fake think news. if, you, if, if <laughs> you are fake. Here's, here's my. Here's my. I'm a third party. Like, I feel like if he has a rebuttal towards you, you're thinking he's butthurt. But he's just stating his what he feels inside. But what happens is, is when you're the athlete. Okay, you have these blind followers, these blind fans. Okay, but bro, you have a big, as big of a following nah, as he does. No, I t- stop you do. it. Oh, you want to look I at Instagram you, followers right now? No, hey, no, it was I, Twitter, right or uh, no? Well, tweeted. whatever. Th- this I tweeted he Instagram. I'm telling you, your influence is pretty far reaching. I don't have people attacking riders for opinions that I have. Sure, you do. I, I don't think you I have do. the I pulp fans. I do sticking fans. up for you when shit goes south. Oh no, and I got people that stuck up for me right. with, with in this case. I just don't think. 
for when again, if you take all the tweets and the discussion, you know, it was multiple t- tweets. Mm-hmm. There was nothing bad, bad I said about Justin Cooper, but he turned it into something bad. What did he say that was bad though? Well, now I gotta look. Yeah. Well, I don't. I don't really think he said anything that was bad. Heather kind of read it to me on the way up. He, he just said something along the lines of like, "Hey, thanks for supporting me." Right, and he, had, laugh- like, and he, had, and he laughing- had laughing faces. Like I think he's equally just giving you a hard time as you gave him a hard time. I think the other part of that was the mechanic portion of it was more of a harsh thing than Cooper was. Correct me. What? Sorry. The mechanic towards you. Oh yeah, yeah that's a, that's a, that's a. was more harsh than I think Cooper was in general. Yeah, that's 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 nothing. Yeah. Are we, we're not going to put up. Oh, it's disappeared. It's gone. Oh, oh it's on the story. Yeah. yeah. Story. Uh, so, yeah. Um, I don't know. I just My race tech rant is like, so but then there, what happened is I get all this heat from his fans, right? Because that's the world we live in, like Matt Walker was talking about. And like we talked about with Stank and all this stuff that I don't feel like I'm not shitting on Justin Cooper. And you're not. I'm just picking Christian Craig. And you're not. I don't think he was shitting on you either, though. Right. Yeah, I don't. I don't no. think the, what I read, what I remember. I don't. I, I don't feel think like you, he was. I don't think he was shitting on you either. It's got massive shit on my head. I don't think so. Okay. I think Shower. it comes. Ba- I think <laughs> it comes back to the butt hurt thing a little bit. I think you were a touch butt hurt. Not at all. Maybe not right now, but I think you were in the moment. No, I just said to him. I said to him in a DM. I said, "Hey, man, when I was promoting Barsha over Craig, Craig didn't." blow me out on social media. Well, like I think the, Which, the, oh, I the part of what they're you saying know? is that when, when you specifically mention someone on Twitter and then they specifically mention you on Instagram, it's kind of the same thing. Oh, I don't care about the... The, the tit for tat. The tit for tat. I don't care about the, the forms of social media, if that's what you're no, but talking I, like, about. No, but like he didn't say you're an asshole and you didn't say he's an asshole. It was kind of like you said something that he didn't necessarily love and then he said something you didn't necessarily love. Like it wasn't... He didn't go after Debbie or something. <laughs> I, feel, but, I feel like you're, you're struggling with this right now. No, 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 no. Don't you feel like Justin should be like, ah, it's the media talking about the more across the nation's picks. Sure. I, he think, was on, I was on this guy's show two weeks ago. But some people like, are, are going to fire like, back. Like, like, that's just who they are. I don't, if, he, if he called you names or something like that, I'd be like, yeah. He did not call me names. I know. Not. That, that's ridiculous. Yeah. But I don't think he, I don't think he did. <laughs> <laughs> well, this rant went. I think it's one of those things where if he, if Beep. you, you are allowed I'm, to voice an opinion, so is he. I am man enough to admit that maybe you guys are right. Maybe I took it the wrong way, and you know, and you know, marks. They're never allowed in studio. Again. <laughs> None of these people are ever allowed to come in studio <laughs> ever again. Understood. Thank you. Yep. Uh, all right, Maxima USA Pulp Twenty is the code to save. Love Maxima. Favorite Maxima product. Uh, no, so never mind. Max, okay. you oh. rebuild bikes. You know Maxima Oil. Man. What do you What are you doing with those bikes in your garage? Uh, well, the mechanic in me can't say what is my favorite, but the re- restoration guy in me, obviously SC1 is the favorite because it makes everything look brand new again. But I uh, I would say that I – Bio yeah, wash. S- SC, contact cleaner. Yeah, contact cleaner. I used good. the crap out of no, contact dude. cleaner. Bio wash. <laughs> You're ridiculous with the bio wash, but it works good. But <laughs> bio wash is good too. Uh, Literally, nobody says bio wash except for you. I like it. Bio freeze. <laughs> <laughs> you just like saying bio wash. I do. <laughs> Greatest college football coach uh, ever on TV. Pulp right there. 20's code to save with MaximaUSA.com as well as ProFilter.com. Uh, check out ProFilter, sold through Power Sports Dealers nationwide. Pick up a pre oiled, ready to use premium air filter oil filter for your next service. Thank you to those guys for coming on board. And uh, if in case you missed it, uh, Kiefer has claimed. The Yeti cool. <laughs> My life is starting to change. In case you missed it, starting to change. Uh, we want you want an argument with Steve, kind of right there. So I feel I like, feel like already, it took a team. It's already people. a win. If I was here by myself, I would have got shit canned a long time ago. So the team helped. Blue Crew Brothers should stay together. <laughs> Renthal.com. Uh, cool blue. Renthal.com on the show. Love Renthal guys. Twin Wall Bar, Fat Bar, uh, Fat Bar Thirty Six, Seven Eighths Bar, Sprockets, Chains. Renthal.com, great grips, mountain bike stuff as well, oversized stems, carbon bars, aluminum bars, Renthal.com. More championships than all the other brands combined. Check out their website, super helpful, super cool. A uh, fraction of a second, a few grams, a couple of millimeters, it all counts. Welcome to the winning world of Renthal, bringing you our next guest on the show. Friend of the show, 125 Supercross champion, beating James Stewart. It's Travis Preston. What's up, TP? Hey, guys. How are you? I'm good. Thanks for having me. No problem. Thank you for coming on. Uh, before we get too much into the all-new 2023 Yamaha YZ450F that I, we had you on to talk about, do you have any thoughts, Travis, about the uh, results, the oh, uh, the God. race, 
Uh, well, this wasn't really a race, but, you know, <laughs> uh, the plus 40 uh, event down at the Loretta Lynn's uh, Dude Ranch in, uh, in Tennessee. Any thoughts, Travis? Oh, boy. Yeah, I have a lot of thoughts, and I don't know how much you guys have covered on this, but I think my issue with the whole week, I guess, was how he raced Brown. Because I thought we were friends, and I was upset how he races his friends differently. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I, I'm, I'm sure you guys saw some of the racings where, you know, Chris would get the whole shot and then he would lead for one or two corners and then, you know, go to the outside to where Brownie and his motorhome could drive through. <laughs> <on the inside. laughs> okay. Yeah. So that's how, so that's how he races his friend. Okay. Yeah. Now me and you were at this race. I, Steve, I you was. You saw what happened. Yeah, you I did. You saw the cross jumping. Mm-hmm. You saw him. <laughs> Uh, chopping my front tire off mm-hmm. and when he passed me he turned it was in the right hand corner he turned left mm-hmm. before he turned right is this like a Glen Helen thing like yeah. people that yeah. grew and, up riding in Glen Helen this is like a thing I have a, more important, no. I have a more important question can you call it a race TP when it only lasts three corners no. No, it wasn't. Okay, I just I just want to confirm. It it, no. Yeah, I was just, so <laughs> what did I just you want to confirm? What did you think of Kiefer's ride day down at Loretta Lynn? <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, and, My trail ride. And if Heather had a microphone right now, she'd be jumping in. She oh, wants she, a microphone badly. She is on board with you guys. Oh, she is? Oh, yeah. Oh, she was embarrassed by your display? She wasn't embarrassed, but... <laughs> There's a whole face of disappointment back yeah, here. Yeah, disappointment. <laughs> um, yeah, it is odd. It is odd that the lifelong high-des buddy... Gets raced like it's Rhino, and you know, in the last yeah. turn, and Mike Brown, you know, gets a, hall gets, pass. Gets a free pass. I just yeah. want to let everybody yeah. know right now, like at the Race Tech rant, Steve was wilting away, and now that I, I'm getting uh, shit on, he like ate I, power pellets, I, and he's I, just uh, getting better. I feel like, like Superman, that, happier. That got the Krypton taken off of and him, and you just and, Popeye spinach, yeah. just. It's, 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 yeah, this is great. Well, and, it's cause you're, you're always running your mouth about this guy should do this, this guy should do that. And then when it's all on you and it's go time and we've been training and we've been getting ready for the biggest race, you know, of the year. And who's we? Yeah, I mean, who's we? Well, I mean, your, your family, Heather, oh. everybody, we're training, we're getting ready, yeah. we drive the whole family back there, and then you just let us all down. Hey. You, you embarrass me. <laughs> you embarrass oh, wow. the sponsors. Wow. Maybe you should claim Brownie's bike. Look it. I will say this. Before I even left, Travis is like, please don't embarrass me. Don't right. embarrass right. me. Right. If you don't come home and you didn't win, don't even, we're not friends anymore. So it was, it was already started before I, mean, I left. You didn't even get second in the last moto. No. We don't know who no. beat you. Nobody knows. He was a plumber. I mean, I actually, I, it's sad, but I just said hey, on the podium, it's like, yeah, that guy passed me. I didn't know who he was yeah. either. Yeah. And I felt bad. Right. And so just, okay, some, and, yeah. go ahead. And if, I, if I can say one more thing about Chris. Um, oh, please go on. To- <laughs> power pellets. Just keep going. <laughs> keep, keep giving going. him power this is, pellets. This is, this is great. Well, I just learned this this weekend when, when I was talking to him. So he goes to Loretta's, and I heard him say on one of his podcasts, which I love, I actually did like what he did during the week after the races. I thought those were great. He was saying how he sees everyone else at Loretta's has a mechanic except him. Mm. And not only does he go to a race without a mechanic, for himself, he also has to work on his child's bike. That's a lot. So he goes to the biggest race of the year with no mechanic, <laughs> and he has to work on two bikes. I mean, was Janky Mike not around? Look, it, I yeah, spent enough it's, money. It's, I can't it's, afford it's, any more money to pay a mechanic. I'm sorry. It's it's poor planning. <laughs> Look, it. Plan to fail, fail to plan. Remember when Matt Walker said riders have thick skin? Yeah. This is what it's like at the yeah. house. you got to yeah. have thick skin. Yeah. It's... uh. It's just disappointing. It's not even – I'm not even upset, Travis. Uh, Mike Brown is a 57-year-old man with a 100cc less motorcycle. He's not a man. He's and, an alien. And, and a 30-second lead. And a 30-second lead. <laughs> <laughs> like, You know what sucks about this whole shit? Uh, is while I was racing and I see Brownie pulling away, <laughs> all I see is you mother effers smiling <laughs> and going, oh, God, and then just turning to disappointment. Well, That's all I thought You know about. what I thought, actually, when I saw Brownie turn in the first lap time? Yeah. I'm like, oh, boy. Yeah. Like the, <laughs> That's literally what I said in the You mean the like, first oh, moto that they raced? Boy. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm like, oh. 
I was headed over to watch the first moto, and I got the timer to work on my phone, <laughs> and I saw the time and the gap, and I turned around. Oh, that's I'm like I'm not, I'm not going. I'm not going to watch. Yeah, that's this up. is what you. This is you know. I mean, you went in as a defending champion. Not you, really. You know, you won the class in the past. Yeah, but I mean, and it's Brownie. Brownie wasn't there when I won. I did tell you before you went. You, you did. Oh, it. I, I said you. I'm sol. You got no chance. Yeah. Yeah. He is an alien. Bring him to Glen Helen. I actually did ask him down on the gate. I'm like, what are you doing? And Brownie even said, he's like, I don't know. He just, and I'm, I'm like, what do you mean you don't know? He's like, he's a closet trainer. Don't let him fool you. Like, he, he has, oh, I haven't been riding. I haven't been bull crap. He rides. He trains. No. Just He trains as hard as those guys racing professionally. He's with those dudes day in and day out. And he rides East Coast dirt. Like, that's. That's him coming out here. Like, going out there, he knows that shit really he well. He did say that he's there. He's like, I'm here training all these people. He's like, it's stupid to come here and not race. Right. Travis, is this is this going to affect his Kiefer's 2023 at all? Like, our friendship or him riding? The riding or, the new like bike. Like, contract per year friendship. Just, just, <laughs> just riding the new bike. Like, I'm not Dude's sure. Not I'm not sure. Maybe we, you know. I don't no, know. I, so I, I think the only hope for Chris is this new bike. I oh think. yeah, I, I, yeah. I think I think this is going to get him back in the game a little bit. All right. Hey, I'm looking forward to. Or it. Brownie actually retires. That's true. That'd no, be I, next year Brownie's <laughs> going to go on an XR100. I heard and still try to win. Just so, probably yeah. 15 seconds instead. Just yeah. keep dropping CCs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Until he until he can't beat Chris. You'd ride like right. Scott Summers' old XR600. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think Brownie should race that class on a 125. Uh, it wouldn't work. Not in that class. To have your back, though. Uh, I hate to have oh, this. Thank you for chopping me down and planting some seeds. The 350 is almost a perfect bike for Loretta's. That's, yeah. It's not a big 450 track. you know. Like it, yeah. It, Travis it, and I talk about this. I feel yeah. like a fast 250F would be really good. There. Like right. Deegan's bike? Deegan's bike, yeah. specifically, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Travis, claim it. thanks yeah. for coming in. Renthal da- Renthal.com. Uh, the new bike looks awesome. Good job on that. Um what were kind of some of the goals that you and Yamaha wanted to do? The, look, the, 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 the current bike is great. I love it. It's great. But what did you want to do? What did you want to improve on? What were the goals? I think some of the main goals was, one, shedding some weight, and two, I think, was the ride position. I think, you know, we wanted to open up that ride position, kind of make it a little bit more comfortable, thin it out between the knees. Okay. All right. And uh, five pounds lighter, right? Um, yeah, I, I, I don't know why they're saying five. It's, it's it's more than five. I think you know, I we we just got a bike and I weighed it on our scale and and it was six 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 and a half. I think. Oh, okay. Here's the thing I yeah. think about that when you said that. I feel like you guys might have claimed five pounds, so it's actually better in the media's eyes. So when they actually do weigh it, so sp- specifically MXA. So that way they can't shit on you because, <laughs> uh, like, if you just say five and they go, oh, surprise, it's six point two. Yeah. That's just a bonus. Yeah. Right. So good yeah. marketing, good marketing. I like that. Uh, we talked to Chris. We did a uh, podcast Kiefer and I did with Kyle Chisholm, uh, a Renthal Reaction podcast. Chisholm is one of the few riders who have ridden this bike, and he rode it at Tomax and Supercross and Motocross. And he's a guy that you know he's always supported by Yamaha. He likes the new bike, but he was impressed, man. He thought it turned a lot better. He thought it carved a, a better path. Uh, he thought he thought the motor was quieter than the other one. It wasn't sucking as much uh, noise, you know that the, the old Yamaha front airbox in the front. Um, and yeah, he was he was really impressed by it. So good job. Yeah, yeah, it was actually fun. Kyle helped us um, towards the end of that model. So yeah, it was definitely fun to work with him. And yeah, he's actually a great test rider. Oh really? Oh good. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So what is it? F- oh, by the way, too, Kiefer, this is yeah. the part where you want to ask Travis about where the handlebars are. Yeah, where are the handlebars? There's the mounts at this year, Travis. <laughs> uh, the mounts are going to be in a location that you like. Mm-hmm. So you will not have to be changing them. Yeah. So. Okay. Yeah. Bank for, I, I bank for Kiefer on this one because yep, there's been... two hole positions in the Yamaha clamp. They were in the back hole for a few years. Travis, according to Kiefer, Travis instituted them being put in the front hole you know, for production, and now they're back in the other hole. So yeah. you, know, you know who actually I think started that was Michael Ulrich, but I tested it. I think it was his idea, and I tested it, and I actually did like it. But I will admit – a lot of people didn't, so yeah. we went back. So, uh, and Chris, Chris, and Chiz were one of were a couple guys saying like that. Yeah, the rider triangle of the older bike needed help. I have shorter legs. I have like a thirty-two inseam. My legs are short. I never felt like I ever had an issue. Mm-hmm. Bike fit me pretty good. Travis, you had me try the tall seat, which most people like. I didn't really like it. Right, my legs weren't tall enough. 
Um, and so for me, the rider cockpit felt felt great. But if there is a complaint, it's you're squished in there a little bit, and this thing is this thing's a lot more open. Yeah, yeah, we definitely tried to open it up by we raised the seat height a little bit, and then we also lowered the pegs a little bit, and we also moved them back. So definitely, you know, when you sit on the bike, one, you're it's not as wide, and then two, it's like your your, your legs are in a more natural position, so that when you stand up, it just seems easier to. Right. Stand up and sit down. She said good words about the seat too. The way the seat is 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 raised up in the middle and it fits you. It just was raving about the seat to me. Yeah, yeah. The seat's actually pretty good because it, it's a it's a much different design. I kind of think for for the YZ as it's it's a lot more flat. Mm-hmm. And then the and then one thing I kind of like about the seat, it's a little bit more rounded on the edges, so it's a little bit easier to uh, uh, like change your position or adju- adjust your position because. When you have a square, flat seat, it's like you get stuck in one position. And when the seat's a little bit more round, it's a little bit easier to move around on the bike. Mm, interesting. It's a slippery slope, too, because the Honda has a round seat, and when you can move around more, but it's the key of trying to get the foam on the edges of that round shape because otherwise you're in the frame rails, that subframe. So for me, that was the biggest thing is when I ride other bikes, I get back on the Yamaha, and I'm like, I'm a little cramped. I'm high mm. with my knees little hunched over um and then with this new bike just visually looking at it if there's a, a shot from above you can see how low the radiators are and how narrow it looks yeah. um so i guess my question to you tp and i didn't ask you this when when i saw you is when you ride it does it actually feel thinner because on if you measured this year's bike with other bikes from tip to tip as far as shroud to shroud on each side the measurement wasn't that much bigger on the Yamaha. Yeah, no, if uh I just know by feeling on on the new bike and by measuring the new bike, it's quite a bit thinner. Okay. So I notice on this new bike when you go to sit down, you feel less of that radiator shroud pushing your knees out. Uh, you know, because kind of as your knees get pushed out, it almost kind of pushes you back sometimes. If your knees don't get pushed out when you sit down, it's much easier to sit forward, and that's what I like about the new bike. I get tons of emails asking, what's it feel like? What's I, go, I don't know. I haven't ridden it. I don't get paid by Yamaha, yeah. so what people think. I don't know. I didn't know anything about the well, bike. Believe me, if you got paid by Yamaha, you owe the money after Loretta's. Right. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. It's checked up. Power, wow. Power pellets. Um, <laughs> what, what about – so things that I think about with the Yamaha that I didn't like – Lack of front end traction on this year. Oh, my God. It was L- perfect. A little bit of heavy feel <laughs> in the corners. <laughs> light feeling. Right? And then a little bit low-end jerkiness on-off feel. Perfect. How is that compared to, it to the new to bike? Don't you have to make a judgment? Everybody e- loves e- a good low-end jerk. <laughs> 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 easy. Easy, Max. <laughs> I'm just saying, you, you kind of, you're kind of throwing stones when I – what do you got? I like mean, I set you up for a lot. I low and jerk, tip to you tip. There's been a lot of sexual innuendos in here. tip to tip, triangles, whole location. Yeah. Co- I mean, it was just I – w- I was beside myself over here. <laughs> just, that's why they're quiet for the last five minutes. It was just <laughs> <laughs> TP? Yeah, well, I, I'm not going to buy into any of your sexual jokes. <laughs> I'm strictly, strictly professional, and we're going to talk about the bike. And, yeah, I think it's smoother down low. Um, it's easier to control. While I think it's it pulls longer, and I think it pulls harder up top. Um, what else was your complaint? Front traction? Yeah, front w- yeah. wheel feel on lean. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I thought, like, the YZ needed some improved traction, and I felt like we did that. And, yeah, just I think with a little bit different engine character and then less weight, I feel like the bike's much easier to lean into the corner. The uh, change to the clutch, uh, Chiz said uh, when we talked to him, he's like, I didn't even know they changed that, so I, I, I can't tell you, Mathis. Is that a weight thing or was that a performance thing to go away from the five clutch springs to like a diaphragm bigger sort of finger spring? Uh, weight I thing think, or performance? I think it's it's both, yeah. Steve, because I think it's, it's weight. And then I also think um, for the engine design, it makes the engine design a little bit more uh, slim. Mm-hmm. And performance-wise, yeah, I, th- I think the clutch is going to last longer. But as far as performance, um, it feels a little bit smoother. But, yeah, like as far as the uh, lever pull, feels the same. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, it, the clutch, as, as you pull it in, it kind of feels the same. It just might feel a little bit smoother. But 
I think the biggest thing you're going to notice as a rider is it's, it's the clutch is going to last longer. We talked about this with Chiz, but the rev limit is up 500 RPM from last year. And for me, I, I use a Vortex on my bikes, and my rev limit is up 250. And that is a huge difference when I, f when I ride a stock ECU versus my Vortex. So when they, in 2023, go up 500, that's a lot. That's yeah. A lot. yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's it's definitely noticeable. It's what, what's cool about this bike is you really don't need to use fourth gear. Um, you know, on the old bike when I, you know, Glen Helen, you you come onto the start straight there. Yep. And I always have, but before Talladega, I'd have to shift fourth sometimes. Well, on this new bike, you can just leave it in third and just ride that whole track in second and third. Uh, what are you for you, Travis? What's the biggest improvement what's the most thing the thing you're most stoked about of the change on the new model like like we just talked about the clutch and we talked about uh, the, what? yeah i think probably the ride position and maybe no i said weight. one i said one one oh, i gotta pick one yeah. shoot that's hard yep um okay for me i'm gonna go traction traction rear yeah. wheel or yeah. front wheel front wheel front wheel traction oh Kiefer, you should be happy I'm a big front and steering guy, right, Steve. Right. Well, yeah, I like front this. and traction. We know this. Uh, what about the um, the uh, uh, traction control on this? How does that work? Yeah, I love that. So it's it's done by the power tuner. Mm -hmm. So you know you know how the the bike has yeah. two maps. So you can put you know you go into your app and then you can select traction control low or high, and then you can put it in. So you know whether it's map one or map two, and yeah, I, I, what I love about it is I've tried traction control on other bikes, and it, it works, but I feel like I would only use it in, like, extreme situations, like if it's raining or if the track is super dry. I feel like our system, like, I'd almost use it all the time. Hmm. Like, it works yeah. really well, and I, I feel like a lot of guys are going to utilize it. Uh, These questions that I get, yeah. like this Yamaha Power Tuner is different, where you can actually adjust it via slide bar, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Um, so I get asked, it has a GPS inside built in the bike and the power tuner. People are asking me, okay, within that GPS, if that bike gets stolen, will I be able to track my bike? And also there's a lap timer built into the power tuner that you can turn on so you can time your laps. Explain those two things if, if you can. Yeah, so I'm not sure about – it doesn't have, like, a GPS tracker or, or anything because, you know, as we were working on the bike and, and the power tuner, you know, when Stevie rides away and I'm playing with the power tuner, he goes, you know, 100 feet away and the, and, and the thing turns off. Okay. So I can't track him. And then, two, uh, with the lap timer, it's not really done by GPS. I think the lap timer is done by just pressing the map button. So when you want to utilize the lap timer, you have to select, you know, in, in a different menu, the lap timer, and then that turns off your map switch button, and it turns that map switch button into a lap timer. Mm, okay. So, like, so when I get onto the track, I'll, I'll hit the finish line, and then I'll hit the button once, and then that starts my lap time. And then as I come around the whole track, I get back to the finish, I click the button again, and then that marks mm. the end of my first lap. So then... You know, I, I keep doing that for however long I'm out there. I pull off the track, I hook my phone up, and then boom, it shows all my lap times. That's pretty cool. There pretty you go. Des yeah. tracks. Des tracks. Washing That's machines. Yeah. 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 All of it. Uh, Travis Preston here brought to you by the folks at Renthal. Renthal.com for more information on the 2023 Yamaha YZ450F. And uh, GYTR option, a hydraulic clutch. Yeah. Just yeah, bolts like right that. up. Yeah, That's cool. Yeah, and it's super easy. It's two bolts. Jeez. All right. Really? Yeah. So it, it bolt. Yeah. It's super easy to bolt up, which, yeah, it's it's really easy. I've I've been playing with that quite a bit. So what's that going to retail for? Do we know? Uh, I have no idea. Okay. What's but, it feel like know, when you go 50, to high? I heard fifty clutch? bucks. Everybody, fifty bucks. Fifty bucks. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so we we've been going, of course, back and forth during during you know the development of this bike, figuring out if we're going to do cable or hydraulic and. I'm not really a big clutch guy. The only thing I can really tell for me on a clutch is like starts. And for me, I like um, hydraulic because I feel like it's a little bit hmm. smoother for me. And it's like it almost feels like it slips a little bit more. So like I have less chance to yep. wheelie. Hmm. 
Hmm. But uh, my, my theory is uh, you guys wanted to put a hydraulic clutch on the bike. Tomac is adamantly against hydraulic clutches, love cable clutches, and you guys are like, ah, oh, shit. <laughs> so let's just offer it as an as a, as, a, mm. as, a, as an option. So Eli Tomac resigns with us. Boom. No, no, it was. I I think most riders still prefer the the cable because the cable has the most consistent feeling over all types of terrain. Mm-hmm. I would agree. You with know, that. yeah. So I just think I think how Yamaha did it was was actually pretty good in the way of. The cable's there because it's going to suit a wide range of riders. And then here is an option which is super easy to install. Here is your hydraulic clutch. Yep. Hmm. Yep. Here you go. Perfect. Yeah, that's, that sounds pretty good. Uh, all right. Anything else about the new bike, Kiefer? Can we get you to go riding at any time? Yeah, me and Tater are going off-road riding. Tater, when are we going? Uh, you've been saying you're going to hit me up for like the last three weeks now. Thanks, Tater. You're welcome. Let's cool, go, man. Tater. Great, you got thanks. new gear? I also yeah. haven't been hitting you up. Power pellets go, going but. down. Uh, Max, is Travis Preston still on fly racing? Are we still fly racing? Travis, I, I honestly don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love it. Because, yes, yes, I am. Because, to be honest, I have – I went from being that guy to having three people that do that in, on my team. I honestly couldn't tell you who we still have. Well, can we get him some new gear? It's out. Can we, can we I, get him yes, gear? I I don't know have the new stuff. But yeah, we just my released gear is it, fine. so you wouldn't have it yet. Okay. My gear's fine, he says. But you'll get new gear. <laughs> All you'll, right, you'll get new gear. <laughs> Thank you. But on that's when it comes to like once everything's done and I start handing stuff off to Dalton and Jesse and Hope. Yeah, it, we have so many people now. I can't keep track of them all. Yeah, Good okay. let's keep Travis Preston happy. I don't Super think he's unhappy. Champion. No, no, I know, but no, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm very happy. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's he's loyal. He sticks to fly. Here he's loyal. Go. Here we go. He's, you know, all fly, of that. Coming first. from the guy who had to have mesh <laughs> ge- had to have his mesh pants because he's so concerned about riding and still hasn't ridden it. By the way, it's on the table. Okay, let's let's it. test this theory. And when I come back to see him, if those pants are still there, which there's a high possibility they no, will be. I am going Just put riding. them in a box and send them back. The, the back excitement of the 23 coming out. When am I going to get mine? TP, when are they going to be released? When you, what are we? Oh, your bike. I thought you were talking the about bike. the gear. No, like, no, we no, should no. wear that shit first. No, no, no. The, the new bike. The new bikes. What, what, what are we looking at? Uh, I would hope by the end of October. Okay. I hope. Yeah. Well, the World Vets are. When's the World Vets? First week of November. You're not going to have enough time. I can't get on a bike. No. With no riding time. Your setup would be way off. So totally. Right. You're going to have to ride no, the bike. No, no. Hey, Steve, you'll be fine. You can hop on that thing, and you're going to feel right at home. No uh, problem. I like that. I like that. He needs hydraulic clutch for the starts because uh, he needs help. So. No, my starts were fine last year. Are they? Weren't they? Uh-uh. Yeah, they were fine. <laughs> uh, we have launch control, too, so so we can get him a good launch control map. Can't wait. New bike. I'm looking forward to it. Looks good. And I'm not going to lie. I'm a little embarrassed that I didn't know if we were still supporting you. I'm just going to be honest <laughs> up front. Uh, I'm just going to be honest up front. I'm Well, I will say, Travis isn't in a fly helmet. Yes or no? Not in a fly yeah, helmet. Yes. Oh, yeah, he's wearing a formula. I okay. do know that. Yeah. Okay. All right. My bad. Took a long time yeah. for him to drop his other brand. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. But he went. He went formula. Yeah. Hey, I'm 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 sticking with all my sponsors now, and I'm not changing anything. I like it. Um, Travis, uh, Chiz, you can correct Chiz if you can if you if you want, or you can leave it. Chiz said it sounds like a spaceship when it's idling. I don't know what he means by this. He says it sounds like a spaceship. Yeah, I think what he's referring to is, and I still haven't figured out exactly, it's pre- maybe next time I talk to the guys in Japan, I might ask them this, is when, when you start the bike up initially and it's cold, it has a different kind of like a whine sound, and it's only when you first start it up and it's cold. Hmm. Okay. And then after that, you don't hear it the rest of the day. So I think that's what he's referring to. Yeah, he was. He seemed very excited about it. He's stoked, stoked about <laughs> stoked about the spaceship sounding. And I'm like, all right, Jizz, cool, man. And for the yeah, people out there wondering if what you can switch over from your 22 to the 23, it's not much, right, TP? It's yeah, it's not much. I think you could maybe switch your wheels. Um, you could maybe switch your triple clamps and a fork and shock. And yeah, fork and shock. But yeah, I think the the valving and the forks and shock are quite a bit different. And also, we have uh, new adjusters on the compression side of the front fork. Yeah, that's something you didn't say. Like KTM has these little plastic adjusters that you can adjust, like mm-hmm. um, like on the fly, or like if you're out on the yeah. track, you don't need the it's toolless yeah. adjusting. Yep. And they have that, I guess, on just the compression side of the fork. 
Yes, correct. Yep. Well, bike of the year according to KieferInkTesting.com. <laughs> no. The twenty three Yamaha nope. already the bike of the year. That's the one in the street, Kiefer. Nope. We got a lot of good bikes for twenty three. Okay. Steven. All right. Well. Shootout sometime in March. Yeah, shootout. Come on never. down, JT. <laughs> shootout. <laughs> shootout will be February. <laughs> February. Okay, Randy. Good one. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, TP. Always a good time. Thanks for calling in. Congrats on the look of the new bike. Looks good. Can't wait to ride it. And you guys have done a really good job uh, reinventing J- it. Looks uh, like yeah. JT and uh, TP. Can we get uh, both of you guys take off your shirts and do like a pose off so you're more ripped? <laughs> Oh, come on. No, I, I heard JT has me covered now. So. Dude, shredded. Nah, all, I'm yep. scared of him. It's all in the Yeti cooler. It's, it's all in the cooler. Yeah. I got the nutrients now, so I'll bring it home. We can look inside <laughs> of it. <laughs> yeah, he claimed it. He claimed it tonight. Oh, wait, we got a question for you. I'm sorry. Before we let Travis go, uh, Keenan's been on hold. Uh, wait, that's not Keenan. Keenan's been on hold. Where's Keenan? It's Keenan's gone. on three. Keenan's been on hold for a while to talk to both Kiefer and Travis Preston. Keenan, what's up, man? What's your question for these guys? Hey, kind of a two-part question, so I'll, I'll start with Keith. Okay. What is the main, like, geometry difference between the GP bikes and our outdoor bikes? Because there's always big talk about, you know, their bikes are better for outdoors than ours. And then maybe Travis can say if, uh, if the OEMs have ever thought about making, like, two different sizes in, uh, like, a small, and a med- or a small and a large or a medium and a large, like, frame size within like the 450 range you know to cover big guys and like guys like jt too well we always said alex martin looked like he got the uh the large yamaha from the grocery store yeah <laughs> right right uh all right Kiefer, go ahead um i don't know a lot about most of the gp teams but i know some about the yamaha stuff and i know the chassis are a little bit different maybe a little bit longer in in length so I think these tracks back there offer a little bit of a different flavor for and compared to us as far as bumps and how the track flows. JT's well, they can do anything. They can right. make them longer. They can make them shorter. They can change anything. Yeah. And what's really cool is uh, you can listen to a lot of these things. These riders over there, GPs, they give a lot more insight than our riders do here. Like I listen to Lewis's uh, post-race pods, and a lot of them are really good because these riders are willing to kind of give us more details of what is inside these bikes versus our guys never say oh we just made some changes so some of those changes back there is just a longer wheelbase as far as compared to here is that like fractions of an inch or like is it pretty significant yeah it's milli- it's, it's, it's honestly like millimeters it's not it's not as much as yeah. you think it would be yeah fair enough travis what uh oh. you ever think about making different sizes yeah, um, like mountain no, bikes. Because I, yeah, like, no, because because I feel like there's there's enough to do with 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 the current platform. Like, let's say you could increase your sag, and then you could raise your forks up in the clamps. You know, say the bike comes at five millimeters, you could go up to maybe you know eight or ten, or you could try a different length or shortening the shock. Coba links. So I, shorter yeah I, yeah I feel like there's several ways where you know if, if if you're shorter you know you you can lower the bike to but yeah actually that you know and then if you could play with the you know the trail on the bike you know there's all kinds of different things that you can play with to to change the bike around like that all right there you go gotcha, keenan gotcha. thanks for the call man thanks, guys. thanks appreciate Thank it uh Mike on one wants to say he wants a YZ three fifty. Any so him, him, and everybody else. Really? I agree with him. You think the team, all of them, should make? 350s? I think if Yamaha made it, they would sell every single one of them. Like the three fifty. What do you think they're going to throw them away? No, they just wouldn't <laughs> sit them on the door dealer. Like three fifty size, you never see them on the dealership floors because the KTM's Huskies gas gas they sell. Sorry. No okay. Gas well, gas well how many they so make of them? Yeah. Like, is it a thing. lower number? Right. Yeah, I would it think is. So. Yeah. It is. But it, they would still sell them. Yeah. Okay, Travis. So I I understand what you're saying a little bit, but after you ride this new bike, here we go. Okay. <laughs> are you and in then, marketing? Are you an R and D guy? Like, no, no, dude. I'm just saying because these. Are even I'm laughing at this one. <laughs> I mean, I'm a Yamaha guy, and I'm God. laughing at this one. Travis is getting <laughs> Travis is getting better all the time for me, I'm liking it more and more. Hey, I I told you that we, you know, when I don't like something, I tell you, I said the bike needed more front traction. Okay, yeah. So I'm telling you now, these are things that we think about, and when when you ride this bike, it's going to feel lighter. 
It's going to be easier to move around. Okay, like a 350. And then I feel like this power tuner, it has more effect on the engine. So let's say you just start taking away power from that bike. It's going to feel more like a 350. Ah, uh, well, that's just corporate talk right now, but I feel like we all want a 350. <laughs> okay, well, hey, you know, what, when, when, when you come to the intro, that's going to be something we can do at the intro. All right, I want to ride a 350 when I go to the intro, okay? So okay. when I when I come oh, no. in and I say, hey, Travis, put the 350 spec in, that's what I want. Okay, perfect. There you go. All right. I'll do it. Can I go to the intro? Sure. All right. I, 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 He's the marketing guy. Yeah, he can say yes. Fuck it. <laughs> I mean, I, I, like, I think you you as a racer deserve to be there more than Chris does. Oh, my God. Thank a, you, Travis. A racer? Wow. Thank you. Renthal.com, yeah. So basically Thank what you. you're saying is Great don't race. go race, hang out, do a show, talk about racing, and I'm a racer. That's what you're saying. I mean, I, I witnessed Steve racing, and he puts his heart out there. He gives it everything he has. Thank you, you Travis. Don't. Wow. Thank you. There's a lot. I, of, I, it's I, a big gargle fest. Friend, right here. friend of the show, <laughs> Travis Preston. Friend of the show. The pellets are back. It, yeah. The power, I mean, it's strong yeah. right now. Yeah it's, yeah, it's thick. Cue the Mario music right uh, now. He's eating mushrooms. How does yeah. it feel to spend, you know, $15,000 and just not even see the leader? <laughs> How does that feel? I wasn't on my I mean, God. Oh, my God. <laughs> that was a low $15,000. Hey, everybody. Uh, I paid fifteen grand to ride by myself at the ranch. Hey, guys. I got a trophy. <laughs> Here it is. twelve grand. <laughs> yes, exactly. We haven't heard that Sorry, in a while. I was on a high from Preston saying I put my heart out there when he saw Yeah, you're race. just powerful right now. It's uh, hard to stop yeah, you. I, uh, yeah, I am. It's great. We'll bring you back down soon. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> we'll, we'll get you back down. Right. Well, I have a proposal for you. So Here we Marks, go. are you working on a proposal? Uh, I, I didn't know I was supposed to do it right now. Well, it's coming up. Look at, oh, I thought that was like you got to redeem later. yourself what? for not showing up. I thought up. that was like an I can do it later thing. No, it's for the show. You can do it later <laughs> in the show. I don't think it's going to be ready. What? Sorry. Okay. Uh, I'll send you whatever can you we, need. Can we ask JT and TP to <laughs> compare you. diets or anything? Like, can we? Is TP a diet guy? No, no, I'm, I'm. Oh, not. okay, yeah. No. yeah TP's, TP's diet. TP's guy. one of those assholes that can eat anything he wants. Yep. And he has like twelve abs. Yeah, that's not me. Cole yep. Siebler, sucks. Yep. Cole yep. Siebler, yeah, literally can eat bags and bags of M and M's, Pepsi's, and pretzels, and has not gained a. Yeah, he doesn't have like abs or muscles he's, or anything. He's, he's not. Just, he's just super skinny. He's yeah, not yeah, gained yeah. a quarter right. of a pound in thirty years. <laughs> he looks the exact same. His, I will say this: his ex mechanic, well, I will not say his name, said he's. From TP, TP yeah, yeah. says he's in better shape now than when he was wrenching for him. Oh, really? Yes. Oh, it could be only one man, I think. Yes. Well, it could be Frankie. It could be Yulo. <laughs> either, either one of those guys could drop that, yes, actually, now exactly. that I think yeah. about it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, all right, Travis, thanks for calling in, man. And, again, looks like the bike looks really good, man. Can't wait to ride it. So uh, thanks for calling in. Yeah, guys, thanks. No problem. Talk to you soon, TP. See ya. See ya. All right, see you guys. Renthal.com bringing you Travis Preston. <laughs> he was really – you should see him when he comes up. Like, yeah. We don't talk about the bike at all. He yeah. just likes shitting on me. Right. That's what he likes. Right. Uh, speaking of shitting on me, Skosh.com bringing you the uh, comment of the week. Pulp 2022 at Skosh, S-C-O-S-C-H-E, Skosh.com. Unlock your discount. Uh, comment of the week. We're going to try to do this every week if we can. Uh, this is from Mo Diamond 277 Yeah, Steve, he's just like you. You talk shit about Glenn Helens charging for every little detail. Then you charge people to go to your moto pre-shows like you are some former champion. Do you want to be paid for anything you do like you're some goddamn rock star? So I'm not saying don't charge for every little thing you do, but don't complain about GH. All you ever fucking do is complain <laughs> besides swallowing all the pro riders and you promote professionals retiring and then going to beat up at the ranch. Then you promote professionals retiring and then going and beating up on amateurs at the ranch. Oh. Middle finger emoji, 100 emoji, clown emoji. Thank Swallowing you. Swallowing all the pro riders. Yeah, yeah. Swallowing. Justin Cooper doesn't think so. No. Uh, but that is from Mo Diamond 277 scotchcom comment of the week. Um, I like it. Yeah. <laughs> you like that? <laughs> I like that. I, it might be Kiefer's burner account. Yeah, I like that, 277. Um, I'm going to see him at GH and give him a high he, five. He <laughs> says, you charge people to go to your Moto pre-shows. Yeah, because I got to rent the yeah, fucking building, bro. It costs what, a lot of money. What am I going to supposed to do? Hey, I just paid 2K for this theater. Come on by for free. <laughs> like, you, know, you know what he normally does? What? Ask us to pay for it. That's true, right? Yeah, we, we, we want to yeah. talk about the barbecue. Fly Racing, Yamaha uh, live shows. They were, they were, that's what those were. So We should talk about the barbecue. Can we talk about the it's barbecue? It's not ready yet. It's not ready. No, he said he can't do it. Oh. It's not ready. Oh. 
yeah. The, the whole you're going to build a whole proposal for this barbecue. Just give me just a minute here. So I just we'll we'll talk about. Just it. give him we'll, two we'll, minutes. Yeah, we'll, Mark we'll talk about it. it. Nick here wants to, Nick go. wants to give JT uh, crap or something. Nick, oh, what's boy. going on, man? He's, he's he's deep in fantasy right now. Hey, he can't do anything. What's happening? Yeah, I got something for everybody. Uh, keeper. Yes, sir. It's Mike fucking Brown. Congratulations, you did a good job. Thank you, sir. When Thank you for my power pellet. I appreciate that. <laughs> and here's another power pellet. One of the top three guy, coolest guys ever in any pit. JT. Sir. You've always been cool to me, man. But you got to end your interviews, bro. You're still walking away. Joe Shimoto looks <laughs> frazzled. He's like, oh, that's it? <laughs> You're not ending. You're not finishing up your interview. Well, you were sometimes. You're saying making a comment like back to you. We yeah, each, I do. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I mean, there's a there's a dead horse on the ground, and you're still beating it, sir. That's our that's been addressed. Oh man, no, I don't want to do. I like JT's cool. I, okay, I'll retract that. Steve. Yeah. I want to claim that RC jersey behind you. Yeah, claim it. Get the, get the I'm MSRP. Apparently, you can claim anything. Everything's for sale. You started this. MSRP. Hey, jerseys are hundred bucks. I'll give you two hundred. What? What is? Which one is it? Uh, RC right there, number four. I think I have a spare one for you, uh, Nick, that he signed for Show Five Hundred. Oh. Um, that is Show Five Hundred. Yeah, but oh, I got another one. Another one. Um, let me look. I'm, I'm gonna put you on hold. I'm gonna get your address. If uh, I have another spare one, I'll send you one. All right. Nick? Are you okay. okay? You dying? Okay. Yeah. You all right? Steve's one of the coolest guys. Rick? I mean, yeah. Rick? Then, then, then. Uh, do you want the jersey if I have it? I do. What yeah. happened? You went in a submarine or something. Are we you can't really right? hear you. No, I'm here. Okay. All right. All right. I don't want to blow this. I'm here. Okay. All right. Well, I'm going to put you on hold. Do you have anything for Max? For Max? Uh, good job, buddy. Fly racing. I got it. It's in my buddy's... Uh, it's in my buddy's store too. I like Tommy it. Hoffmaster. Okay, Tommy Hoffmaster. Oh, Tommy Hoffmaster. Oh yeah, shit. I love, love Tommy. Uh, Tommy. Tommy. Uh, all right, Nick. I'm gonna put you on hold. We're gonna get your address. Tater's gonna get your address, and if I got one, I'll send you it. All right. Okay. Hey, uh, Tommy Hoffmaster. MX Snoop for you. Okay. Sounds good. Yep. What happened to Nick's voice or phone? Uh, yeah, or, he's. Yeah, you gave know. him that jersey, and he right, swallowed all right, himself. All right. Next up on. <laughs> next. <laughs> next up on the show. Next up on the show. Next up on the show? Next up. Oh. <laughs> 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 shit, that's David Bradshaw's bike. I just fucked up. What's up, Mr. Side? Vital Jamie? What's up, boys? Just want to call in with my uh, all the fly employees and the other guy, Chris Kiefer. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, sounds good. Yeah, Chris was once a fly guy and then uh, family first, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's tough, man. I don't know. You know, I'm I'm diehard fly. I hope that uh, for the most part I can continue to wear. You can't no. be. You can't be. You're no. neutral. You got to be neutral Mr. now, dude. Mr. You're Side, media you're, guy. you're gonna have to wear some other gear. Yeah. Well, when I'm told to wear other gear, I will. But when I'm not told, I will always wear fly. Does Does Mr. Side get the 2023 stuff? Eventually. Eventually. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> We'll have to see if JT renews my deal for 23. <laughs> no, he said you're, you're clipped earlier. You're a part of the, the vital team now. Just yep. all umbrella. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Shit. We <laughs> <laughs> have, have to make a phone call. There's a lot of things call. you don't know about coming yep. to the side. There, clippy, dark side. clippy, yep. Jamie. Uh, that's that's going to be a bummer if I don't get my fly fix. No, you're out. You're done. But maybe someone will catch you in the action. Yeah, let me catch. Yeah. Jamie that, caught that, me interviewing Cameron McAdoo today. Hope you, your captions are going to get so much horse. better. Um, honestly, Mr. Side, we are so far behind in this show. So okay, let's uh, let's Go promote ahead. the wrap up and let's move it along. Yep. So Nick is doing the wrap up this week. He Thank has God. His co host <laughs> Trent Marr, his co host, and what he says is a special guest. Which, if anybody knows Nick, we probably know who that special guest will be. Do you think he's really going to do it? You think Christian Craig's going to do the show, the wrap-up show? I, I w well, he didn't say Christian Craig, oh. but I would bet. Mo yeah, I think I think that he will. Yeah, Christian listens when he can, and Nick and him have a pretty good relationship. So yeah, I think so. Okay, mm. all right. Well, well hopefully yep. that, that would that'd be feel big like, time. Big I feel time like viewers. Paige would be a great wrap-up show guest because she just would let it unleash. Who's that? Paige. 
Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, I don't know that Paige listens, unfortunately, so she might not be a great guest. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, Seal Savers, motorsport.com, Michelin Bicycle Tires, Guts Racing, all on board of the wrap-up show. Yeah. That's it. Well, since you guys got to move on, I'll let you go, but I always, always love those three guys being in the studio. Fly racing for life, as mm-hmm. long as I can be. There we go. Don't say that. Your media, don't say it. Can't say that. You just did. Uh-huh. How's that any different from you it. saying your FXR? I'm not. Did I say that? You, I tested our gear. Tested the gear. Family first. Family first. Uh, I'll tell you. I have my gear of choice. That's just the way it is. Uh, thanks, Mr. Side. Appreciate it. Thanks for calling in. Yep. This is FXR right, blood money. <laughs> <laughs> uh, suspension. I'm doing for my buddy, Here's Jamie. Some. My Sus- friend, Jamie. <laughs> suspension direct. Uh, the code is PulpMX to save. E-click shocks. Lifelong project of Dan Worley, and they make more than just uh, electronic shocks. They're more than just electronic shocks. They're semi-active suspension system that constantly adapts to the road and conditions. Jeep models, Ford models, Toyota, UTVs, and more. Check out these e-clicks, man. They're super cool. SuspensionDirect.com. Use the code PulpMX to save. Uh, also, hard-to-find suspension parts. They will dial you in. Suspension Direct. Use the code to save. Thank you to those guys for coming on board. Um, let's talk. We're going to talk Fly 2023. Talk about my deal. Renewing my deal. <laughs> I have a new proposal for you. I'm not shocked. Okay, so just keep that in mind. Are you ready for that, Max? I'm always ready for. I don't want to hear anything from him because he's negative and he'll shoot it down. I need an open mind. Okay, you know, probably going to get the same result, but okay. I'm not going gargoyles. I'm but, not allowed to talk. I don't know why you're looking at me. Well, I just <laughs> you're going to shoot down everything I have. You, they're stupid ideas, usually. They, they are not. But uh, let's talk Unadilla for a second. We haven't even got to it at all. But uh, this weekend, man, uh, uh, Chase Sexton, that is a statement ride. I mean, you just don't do that to Eli Tomac. And he did it, and he took the points lead. Yeah. Giselle, Kiefer, you've talked about it a lot. That yeah. was something else, man. Now, look, is uh, was the track. JT was down there with Eli Tomac and mentioned that he was staring through his yeah. soul. He looked, he, he <laughs> looked through my soul. Didn't like what he saw, and then we moved on. Yeah, but it, he, Regard- was not, he didn't Re- like that track. Regardless of not that. liking the track, Sexton. I picked Sexton for the win, uh, Washougal and Unadilla, just because it fits his riding style. How smooth he is, mm-hmm. how how ginger you have to roll on the throttle to get real, real traction to propel you for. Especially the way it was groomed this weekend too, even worse. Right, yeah. and even when it does get ruddy, there's a base, and you got to be smooth on the throttle. Uh, but man, having him pass Tomac in Twice. both motos, like that is downright impressive. And then not only pass him, I'm not, not going to say yard him, but he pulled him. Mm, he that pulled first him. moto was a yard. But he, he <laughs> pulled him and he just, he has something going on, which, you know, I talked to the Honda guys and then talked to Trey and his setup is good. It's not the best thing he's ever ridden, I feel like. It's it's good, and he's just sticking with what he has. But the bike looked really good. I think it was one of the better-looking bikes, and not just Chase, just the bike itself. It looked really planted. Mm-hmm. And, uh, man, I will say this, and I'll ask you guys this. If Chase wins Buds, I think that's game. Ooh, I, I, I think I agree because with you. Because Tomac well, okay, no, no, will if, be good if, at Ironman. If they right? go 2-1-1-2, one, one, that's not game. Okay, I'm saying 1-1. Yeah, one, yeah. One. Yeah. If he goes 1-1, one, yeah. one, I think he has enough points to salvage himself through Ironman because I think Eli will win Ironman. Well, he'll have seven points, and then he'll lose six at – He'll gain one. Gain one So, so you'll have back to one. And then if Eli sweeps um, Ironman, it'll be back down to one going into Paula. You guys are ifs and buts too much. Uh, okay. Like, right. It's it's dirt bike race. I, but they I are going one two. They one, are, two. but I don't know that you're going to be like, oh, if if Chase goes one one in the, well, let's give Eli a one one. Like I, I'm not, I'm not there. Like I think it's going to be. But they got to go one two. Yeah, what, I, I mean, do, but I yeah. think it's going to be yeah. m- mixed up. Right. Um, I know where you're going is like Fox Raceway is Sexton territory, right? right. Like it's going to be really tough for Eli to beat him. I don't think it's impossible though. I don't think it's impossible for Eli to beat him. There. I don't think so. It's I don't think it's impossible. I just think. It just tips the favor yeah, absolutely. over to him. Yeah, of course, of course. Yep. It's but just it's damn impressive to see how good he's riding, and he's always been that kind of guy. Like I say, Giselle, because he's beautiful and then shits the runway, mm-hmm. right? But there has been no shits lately. I yeah. think Eli's coming out swinging this weekend. Yeah, I, I agree. Yeah. Bud's Creek's going to be soft. It's going to be uh, Eli's kind of track, I feel like. Eli was pissed. Oh, yeah. 
pissed after the race. I, I, A, I think he really, really didn't like the track. Like, he's like, get me out of here right now. And he's never been great there, right? No, he's, never won. Saying, he's right? never won. He's never won on a 450. And I think he didn't like the prep. I don't think he trusted, like, pushing the envelope at all. And I think that's only going to, like, fuel the fire for Bud's Creek. Like, I think he would have a very good chance of winning anyway. But, dude, I think he's coming in hot. Hot. That's my prediction. Doesn't mean Sexton can't be in the – can't win or mm. split motos or anything. But I think you're going to see the best Tomac has to offer this coming weekend. I agree. It's going to be good. Max, what do you think? I think Tomac will win Buds. I do. I I agree. I don't – he – I don't think he can beat Sexton at Paula. Yep. I don't think he can. Yep. Because, he, I mean, this weekend showed exact the track conditions were terrible. And like I told JT, I was I was actually doing something. So I only got to watch brief moments of the races. We're going to watch the timer more than anything. But it seems like any time that he has to push the uncomfortable envelope, he doesn't he doesn't do well. And I think Chase is also at a point where he will push uncomfortable. Where you see edgy, hard-packed tracks is where Eli is not quite as good. Uh, I feel like a lot of these teams came into Unidil with a setup thinking that the track's going to be one way. And I think they all got caught off guard, just kind of like McAdoo said. It's more of a West Coast type track where the bumps were sharp, edgy, and these guys are running stiffer suspension for soft dirt to less pitching. So I think everyone's kind of chasing their tail. And we just heard before, like, if Eli's setup isn't where he likes it, he hangs back a little bit. He's not going to yeah, yeah. jack himself, which is smart. Gilmore's told us that too. Right. Yeah. Like, I'm just here. I get second. I'll take second place today, but I'm going to rack up the points next race. I think this is going to be like for what we all just, for what you just said about Tomac, I 100% agree. And it's not going to affect him at all. He knows he's going to be strong. If his bike's good, he's ready to go. But I think this gives Chase so much confidence. Like, I can run this dude down. Yep. I, I just did it three motors in a row. I can do that. I think he's had that a couple races ago. I think he's yeah. already had that. Yeah. Yeah. Chase's starts weren't good this weekend, and he can't keep doing that. Like no. that'll bite you. You can't rip up through the field in sixth and ninth and whatever. And let's let's face it, Bud's Creek is known for getting bunched up in some of those those corners because it's tight. Yeah. And it gets one lined. Yep. So yeah, you it, don't want to be intent in those those situations. It's uh, it's awesome. Six motos to go, one point. Really cool series. Great, yep. great series to watch for sure. Anderson three three. He's separating himself now. The last two races. Been a third place guy, so that's interesting to watch. Ferrandis will get better. Ferrandis, I think, could end up on the box. Yep. yep. He's good at Iron Man. I think Ferrandis will be on the box at Iron Man. Yeah. If these guys stay at this level and continue to push each other, I think it's going to be our best chance to win Motocross the Nations in a really long time. Yeah. Yeah. A really that, long yeah. time. Uh, yeah, I would agree with that. Absolutely. And it um, depends on the prep at Iron Man too with Tomac because mm -hmm. it's normally deep. Yep. Normally, but if it's not Well and it deep, rains there a lot. And if it doesn't, yeah. you know, it could be a little harder underneath because mm -hmm. that place it has some spots where it gets super deep. It also has some spots where it looks deep and it's not. Yeah. So it, it can be yeah. Um also looking ahead to Bud's Creek, Antonio Caroli. Yeah, he's there. Coming yep. in. I five to ten? Yeah. 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 Yeah, he'll be yeah. he'll be there. Man, I yep. think he's gonna be better. I would say four, you I would say I wouldn't say a podium in a moto is out of the question. Yeah. I don't – because it's – it's Anderson's been soaking up that spot, but, you know, maybe Ferrandis moves towards it, but it's pretty open. Right. Like, and Buds is probably a little closer to his style. Well, and I think he got a lot accomplished. That's why he went home. He's like, I, I need to be better than this. Like, I, he was pretty frustrated with how he was doing. Um, so, I think him coming back – I don't think he would come back unless he was like, okay, I'm, I'm better now. Like, as far as, like, I'm going to be more competitive because I don't think he was really enjoying it mm -hmm. riding around in ninth. Right. Like, he got his he feet wet. He knows what it's about. He got some settings. I think he comes back. He's more comfortable. Yep. And AP's bike, was, it's, his settings are happier. He's happier with his bike. So, yeah. I mean, he's been start dependent. Maybe he gets to start Bud's Creek. So I mean, he well was better. even claiming it before he even got there. He's like, hey, I'm going to be way better. Yeah. So. Right. And I think he could be – I think he could challenge for that third spot. Uh, if that if he does if he starts getting into that mix with Kenny and and Anderson and yeah. Dunge that's that's pretty impressive you know although he almost did it this weekend so can Dunge podium before we wrap this up I don't think he can because we're getting a better Ferrandis we got Antonio Caroli is Caroli just doing buds I mean getting conflicting results I don't think so okay. I think he's doing I, I think he's doing the last three he's not doing Paula no I don't think he's doing Paula yeah yeah, yeah no. I think he's doing two two of the last right. three okay uh, I don't. 
I want to see it happen, but I don't like the odds. Dunge. Dungy. Podium. Podium. Washugo was the, the moment. Um, it's definitely possible. It, if you continue to put yourself in a good position, things can happen. But to me, Washugo was like, that was that was the one. Yeah. Whole shot. Every, a track you're just incredibly good at, always have been great at. It was there. It, that was that was the day. You don't think he can do it at Buds? Mm, it's good I don't want to say he can't. If yeah. he, gets he, a start. he definitely can't. Oh, you can't. Yeah, no one can say that. But yeah. I, it's going to be very, very difficult. I, I will say that. Ferrandis, I think, is going to be a lot better. Um, How did he do an Ironman in the past? Yeah, he's okay. Yeah, he was good. He's but Washugo was like the breakout track for him yeah, always, and then he gets a whole shot on top of it. It was like everything was set up perfectly to do it. What happened to Ryder D? Second moto, JT. Crashed. He crashed. Got a rock in the shoulder, I yeah. guess, is oh, what okay. they said, and pulled off. So, Well, he was already last. Yep. He crashed on the first lap, was last, and then he was catching up. He got up to, like, 17th and then took a rock heavy mm. and then was pulled off. Um, get, speaking of 250 class, Joe got a second win of the year. Jet had a horrible day, lost two points. <laughs> so things are rolling two along points, there. Yeah. yeah, you know, tough deal for, for Hunter and everybody else. And I guess Cooper's back. Because like we talked about earlier, he was getting first or second. That you second. want to shit on him and blow him out somewhere? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I guess he's back. And he's got starts. And Bud's Creek is a good start. To, if you get starts at Bud's, you could run away for all the reasons you talked about. Yep. Wouldn't that be something? He's so good at time qualifying. Yeah. So yeah. Oh, yeah. good. Yeah. Did you see? I know you were no hungover way. and yeah. asleep. But his lap time and time qual. It's was just it like you're like, yeah. oh, my God. Yeah. Who coop? Yeah, and then Jet did end up getting it in the second one. Like he came back, but like the first practice, everybody was like two sixteen ish, and then Cooper comes in two seventeen. Cooper comes in with a two fourteen. Yeah. Just like yeah, yeah. You're like, Wait, what? And then Jet, like Jet's yeah. last lap of the last practice was insane. But like it blows me away every week how Cooper can do that. Yeah, I think it's lower now, but at one point he had fifty percent pole position stats. Yeah, and no, I it. report on that at Spring Creek. Yeah. It was. Uh, God, I would I should know the stat. Yeah. But yeah, it's it's something like twenty five out of fifty six or yeah. something like that. Yep. Yep. Right here, he's got two hole shots too. So yeah, yeah. he was one one. He yeah. was first to Someone claim the both, bike. Both laps. Let's claim it. Claim it. <laughs> I'm gonna go there this weekend with seventeen five. Hey, we should give a shout out to Voland. It's been good. He yep. did ride it's getting well. better. Been better. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Sure. No, that's really good. Uh and then looking ahead to Bud's Creek. Who do we got winning? Who do we got winning both class? Let's 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 nail this down a little bit. I'll take Jetson Lawrence yep. to win the 250 class. Mm -hmm. uh, that track is very similar to what he rides on every single day, and I think he's he's due. Um, and then I, I guess I go Tomac. I, I, I really think he's going to come out. Like, you're going to yeah. see the best Eli Tomac that he's got. If, it's not, if that's not good enough, yeah. so be it. Yeah. Maybe Sexton's just too good now, but I think you're going to get the best version of him. I agree with that. It's easy to hard. It's easy to say, and I really do think Tomac and Jet will win. Yeah, it's. I'm going to say Tomac, but if, if let's say Jet has a problem like last yeah. week, I'm going to say R.J. Hampshire wins Buds. He's won before Buds, I think. Yep, yep. yep. I was actually going to say Tomac and R.J. Oh, you as were? Well. Yeah. 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 I think RJ, I think RJ's headed in a – a good way. I think yeah. RJ can do it at Buds. I don't think he's happy I just don't with that think, bike. I just don't think RJ's, <laughs> no. RJ's his not, he's not clean enough right now. Yeah. Like his whole package is not clean enough. There's when has it ever been though? I, right. But I'm not going to pick him to win because of it. Like it's like good start, bad start, crash, don't crash. I just like, mm -hmm. there's, not, there's too many RJ good guys Cooper. right now. Too many good yeah. guys right now. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Should be interesting to watch for sure. Uh, I want to thank the folks at Twisted T, Heart Raft and Welton over there at Twisted T. Big things for them next year, yeah, I think. Two fifty team. So I think uh, uh, it sounds like that uh, Nichols team, KTM team, is done, folded what? up before they even started. Which KTM team was that? Rocky Mountain team. Okay. Uh, and I believe that Nichols is talking to Hep. That looks pretty good from which what he was I hear. before. Which he was before. Yeah. And then he went. To, he's been riding at KTM down at eighty three, I guess. And now he is. Uh, uh, where are we going to do the Twisted T guys? So and from stay what tuned. I've heard and seen. Just from what I've seen, I see that Savachi is going to ride a Suzuki once the season's over. That is fake news. Uh, I talked to him. He t you talked to him? Yep. He said another mechanic texted him the exact same thing. And why was there an engine tag? He doesn't know. Okay. He said, you know my thoughts on Suzuki from is JGR. An old JGR engine? Hmm. 
So like the McGrath cylinder? Yeah. yeah. It just yeah. was weird that there was motors lined <laughs> up. I'm with you. Unless so, he's lying to me. I mean, I don't but think But I've talked that. to somebody that is working with him. It's going to be Cowies for Rick Ware for World Supercross. Hmm. So. All right. Uh, thanks to the folks at Twisted Tea. Billy Grotto coming up on the show real soon. You like Twisted Tea? Yeah, he can't does. Max I likes do. it. Yep. Yeah, I just uh, can't Twisted remember tea, last time real, I had one. Real brew tea with alcohol in it. <laughs> the same alcohol that's in beer, non-carbonated, 5% alcohol. Uh, Twisted Tea is all about outdoor day drinking with a crew. Nothing Twisted Tea that. is all about outdoor fun versus outdoor exercise, so not one of JT's things. What? I like outdoor drinking with a crew. You don't like outdoor fun versus Fine. outdoor exercise. I was in your pool today. <laughs> Look at Drunk JT on the phone yeah. was great. Yeah, July 4th. Think clearly. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we'll stop at nothing to have a good time up for anything at any time. Twisted T, please check them out. Big supporter of the sport with the Twisted T Hep team uh, with Marshall Welton. I think Welton stays there next year, right, somehow? He should, man. Uh, 250 I maybe so. or something? At least if I could fill in or something. Yeah, something. Uh, so thanks to the folks at Twisted T for coming on board. Thank you to motorsport.com, Fly Racing, Decal Works, X-Brand Goggles, Race Tech Suspension and Engines, Renthal, Michelin Motorcycle Tires, Firepower Batteries and Chains, at Cherby's, Maxima USA, Pro Filter, Skosh, ORW, OGO Power Sports, Atlas Neck Brace, Dylan Wright wearing an Atlas Neck Brace to win that championship, Guts Racing, FMF, Works Connection, Kiefer, Pulp MX 20 is the code to save with our guys at Works Connection. Want to break some news? Yeah, so I'd like to. I've been working with Eric on a project for a while, and uh, since all of you old Yamaha guys that don't want to spend the money on the new Yamaha with new ergonomics, uh, Eric and the guys over there are making um, offset foot peg mounts oh. for the Yamaha, older Yamaha guys, because that is a problem. Mm -hmm. And no one is really selling offset foot peg mounts. Yeah, factories have them. But right? Yeah. So Eric is working on that. So that will be coming pretty soon. Oh, nice. Yeah. Pop MX20. Go to save it. Worst connection. Motorcyclenewsyjobs.com. Get data. WUSA. Love the guys at WUSA. They're a big part of the Raise It For USA part. So please check out uh, at Raise It For USA, the number four USA, uh, MXDN Golf Tournament fun Fundraiser, WUSA, part of that, Ride Engineering, Suspension Direct, Intense Cycles, Weisco Pistons, Manscape on board with us, Pulp of Mexico to save at Manscape. Check out the uh, uh, Lawnmower 4.0. It's got a light. It's got, how's everything down there? Good? Great. Yeah. I have one. You have a Manscape? Yeah. I bought it at Target. You didn't use the code? Nope. Why? Target. I didn't know there was a code. I bought the Target. And and what's your feelings on the on the lawnmower four It's amazing. Works when, fantastic. When the light, a, the light is great. Light is great. The guard, waterproof. Waterproof. That's the a big guard. Thing. It's yeah. great. Big thing. When Pulp you're Mexico. trapped with your wife in a motorhome for one week, yeah, a little over a week, yeah, that Manscaped comes in handy. It's good. Yep. Awesome. Pulp of Mexico to save with Manscaped. JT, you have one too. I do. Yeah. Yeah. It's great. Yeah. It's cool. Fantastic. Thanks to those guys for coming on board. Uh, Fly Racing, flyracing.com. Get it at motorsport.com. Uh, 2023 stuff is out. It, it is. It's dropped. Uh, looks good. Um, I like it. I like a lot of it. I like the kinetic stuff. Like a couple – one of these lines of the kinetic I think looks looks amazing on a blue crew. Uh, what were some of the goals for you guys to accomplish? Well, honestly, it's been really difficult to get new products to market. Right. Like the hardest that I think you could ever possibly go through, and, that, and that's COVID and supply chains and – all the issues that I think were started by COVID, but now it's all these ripple effects down the line. Uh, so, you know, everything from the factories are having to shut down multiple days per week because they don't have enough power and their governments are making them close to there's this huge log jam for CE testing. Mm -hmm. So like that brand, oh, yeah, for test, that yeah. brand new Rebel White chest protector to get that approved. Like everything's done. It's just got to get approved by CE testing. There's like this 10 month log jam. You can't get anything done. So, like, that product was supposed to be out last year mm -hmm. and it's finally yeah. at market now. Um, so, it's been try to get all these products that we had scheduled for 2022 launch to market and then make subtle improvements along the way because trying to come out with a brand new product right now that's all revolutionary and everything changed is almost impossible. Yeah. Um, so, it's been like refinements and you almost have to enter into the conversation with the vendor and like, Hey, what's possible? Like, cause they can't start from scratch right yeah. now. They'll just tell you no. So you have to like, okay, can we make, these are the kind of th directions we want to go. What can we implement and still hit targets and dates and all these things. So, um, I think this year was a lot about like refinement. What can we make like s subtle, small changes that we know need to be adjusted, um, fit cuts, sleeve lengths, tightnesses, like just those like, I don't want to say minuscule changes, but it's more like mm -hmm. 
Did you revolutionize the line? No. Yeah. Did we make it better? Yes. Boa didn't get put on, moved to the front, like none of that stuff no, going on. No, and yeah, those yeah. things are coming. Yeah. But it was just like basically yeah. you would have, you we would have been launching in December yeah. if we tried to do something like that. Right. Um, so for us it was like, hey, what do we need to make better? Like and and you know when Chris rode for Fly, like Ugh. he was very good about, hey, this could be better. This because yeah. he has so much experience with that stuff. So he just went and left. Well, yeah. and and but I think that stuff's important to continually take steps forward because if you're not moving forward, you're going backwards. There's no standing still. Everybody's innovating and it's awesome for the customer now because products are insane, right? If you look at a product now versus a product like 10 years ago, yeah. no comparison. Like this, the fit, the function, This new Revel, everything. show key for the new Revel. I'm all about that. Yeah, so this is the Revel Lite. Yeah. Um, yeah. We really wanted something. We've had our Revel for a few years now, but it's Rebel's built to be worn over the jersey. It always was. Hmm. This is built to be worn under the jersey, so super form-fitting, super lightweight. Um, when you put it on, it you can't tell it's under the jersey. Um, and, and we're you know partners with Alpine Stars. They had a really great product, their A1, that we were like, man, that's a great product. We need to build something that we can have with the Fly Racing name on it that's comparable. Um, and it's you know it's a 109.95. It's mm -hmm. really affordable. Um, we're Again, that was supposed to be out a year ago, so yeah. finally is uh, we're ready to release it. And you can uh, you can take the back off if you, you want can. to. You can. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So it's uh, it's a great product. I I love that piece. I was very very upset that we weren't able to launch it last year. Yeah, I love the A1, so I'm excited excited to try that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's it's yeah. you know it's uh, I think Alpine Star should be flattered. Like we're partners with them, right? Yeah. We we work side by side with them, so we knew that we needed something to be able to offer in that hey, same space. It's a little cheaper than the A1. It is. It's $40 cheaper retail. I will retail. put that out there. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. and it's, they've made some changes to make theirs a little bit more bulky. I don't know if that was by design or I don't know if that was something that the EU forced them to do or anything like that. But ours is a little bit more minimalistic than theirs. Um, so yeah, we're excited about yeah. that. Um, obviously we're continuing, you know, helmets are a huge category for us, right? So we're, we have projects that are in the works. You'll learn more about that later. Uh, but, you know, Max has some of the helmets over yeah. there. But some of the designs. This is a new graphic. Yep. yep which, uh, take those goggles off there because you can't really see the graphic. But um, that's the new Formula Carbon Tracer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's not your, that's not your helmet, Steve. Um, so that's. You just want to wear those? <laughs> That's the new formula carbon. Uh, so tracer graphic, obviously, you know, super lightweight, 1290 grams, but that thing is, uh, that's been a huge success story for us. Mm -hmm. Obviously have the new CC. If you want to grab those Can't out of there, yours. we can show a graphic of those, Max. Can't be yours. That's not yours. It's a good helmet. The formula is amazing. Seriously, like uh, non. Like I, I'm, I'm giving you a non-biased opinion. There's two helmets that I prefer, and this is one of them. Yes. <laughs> yep. So that is uh, this is the CC. So that's the Avenge graphic the there. Camera, camera. Um, so that's a that's a special edition one. Uh, but the graphic remains the same as the Centrum. But mm -hmm. I, I really like that colorway. Originally we were going to call it Avengers, oh. and we were scared we we're going to get sued. Yep. So now it's the Avenge. Um, <laughs> but I, I love that colorway and graphic. I just think it's super clean. Um, and then the uh, the other helmet there is the. As long uh, as it's not flat black, I'm fine with it. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. The uh, Formula CP, so that's our our two hundred fifty dollars version of the Formula in you know, your polycarbonate uh, shell. There, you still have Rihanna and all those things. So, um, again, it's just continuing to take steps forward. I think you're going to see some pretty big changes down the line. Yep. Some are going to come out mid season. You know, you're going to see that before next August. But it's challenging. Uh, um, mountain bike helmet. Yeah, we do have mountain bike things that are happening. Mm. Yes. Uh, shoes. No shoes. Shoes, no. no. I'm still wearing fly shoes. You are. Dude, Scott. Yeah. I don't know what year those are from. Yeah. He's not rocking anytime recently. Still running no. strong. It's going to be weird for us, though, because we're going to be launching products like mid-season. Just keep going. Never, yeah, you're going to never just, done. Yeah, yeah. But we're going to get them delivered, right. and we just got to go with them. Right. Um, so it's uh, it's it's a really weird time. Like I, I would love to have a candid conversation with other brands and be like, how's it going for you guys? Because yeah. it's hard right yeah. now. Like It's really difficult. So you, because we go in and, and we're used to going in and having conversations with the factories and the vendors, and they're like, okay, yeah, let's work together, let's build this thing, and they're just like, uh, yeah, no, yeah, like not gonna happen. We can't. Yeah, we don't have we don't have people, we don't have time, <laughs> we don't have available it's hours. Weird, at the factory. Yeah, it's a weird world. Um, they just basically turn your business away, yeah, which right. is crazy. So uh, you guys, uh, Zone Pro goggles doing well for you. Yep. Uh, got it on the podium with Justin Brayton. That's a big thing for you. Obviously, we're X brand here, but yeah, yeah, Zone yeah, and we're good. you yeah. know we're going down further past like we have a um a uh thermo injected lens that's coming mm -hmm. uh, so 
Um, like a quick release too, like to come pop out. The I lens? think eventually we'll get yeah. there, but it's it's we're just trying to take steps to get more further down that yeah, path. We want to, to we'll be it. in like the premium goggle game here soon. Like, in in a normal time, we'd already be there. Like yeah. it, we would yeah. already that would already be done. So. Um, I think there are super exciting things coming. Like if I if I could show you the whiteboard of all the projects that are kind of in the works right yeah. now, there's a lot happening. A lot of protection stuff is kind of our next space um, that we're going down. And, and I'll give Alpine Stars credit there because when we first started working with Alpine Stars in 2015, they that was a big focus for them. And we were like, okay, like we we were like more neutral on it yeah. than they were really aggressive, right? And so we have kind of watched them like, man, they're, they're right. Like there's a, there's a huge untapped market and, and other brands are really excelling there. So we've been trying to play catch up. We've been trying to innovate along the way too. So that's a big area of focus for stuff that's coming. Like that rebel white was yep. one of the first things that came out. We have a Rion short that's called the impact short. That's finally coming to market it was in the catalog last year. We never delivered never it. Got it. Couldn't yep. get it. Yep. That's so that's coming out. So it's a, you know, like a, a riding short with Rion protection mm -hmm. in it. So, you know, absorbing on your hips or anything crashes there. Um, It'll be really good when Marks went down on my bike at Western on the dry pack concrete. Pack, concrete. <laughs> yep. The Rion short really would have saved you. It's fake news. I don't crash. Broke yeah. So bike. how do we? You know how do the questions we ask ourselves is how do we incorporate Rion into more products? Mm -hmm. How do we bring those to market without? You can't have a four hundred dollar chest protector. No one's going to buy that, right? So it's like mm -hmm. you have to find smart ways to introduce these technologies into the market for something that a customer is willing to pay. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's been, uh, it's been challenging, but it's rewarding and, and yeah, we're just trying to, trying to be better every day. Honestly, yeah. I know that's super cliche, but it really is like, you, you look at the line of like, where can we be, where can we be better? Yeah. You know, if, if the factory is telling you can't bring out a brand new product, okay, then how do we improve the existing one? Mm -hmm. If that's the best we can do. Kiefer, you like the light hydrogen still? Fly stuff? Uh, my favorite is the Evo. Evo. You've moved I like that, that yep. fit the most for me. Right. Um, but I'm a big... When like, you test gear, of course. Yeah, no. you like, left and, yeah, family like, first. Yeah. My favorite was Evo and then light. Yeah. I like the boa on the back personally for me. Do you me. like this one? Do you like the pink? No? Uh, I'm not a huge fan no? of that. No? No. Do you like the... I like the solid colors, like the blue. Blue? Yeah. 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 This one? I like that. I think that looks really nice. Yeah. And then... Is that uh, Evo? No, that's light. That's Evo. Oh, that's yeah. Evo? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it looks so much thinner. Light has a solid color as well. Yeah. yeah. So I like that it's a little bit of a, the fit is tighter on me, yep. but I don't think like we always have this conversation. I feel like how much weight you've lost, you can fit into that stuff. Like, I feel like you'd be fine. I could wear it. Like you were in kinetic all the time. Like I like the kinetic look, especially the black, red and blue stuff that mm -hmm. I is that's kinetic. I think yeah. this year, that's my favorite. Set What's of the size think? that goes up to when you're kinetic? No, Evo. Evo 38. You're yeah. good. 38 and 2X. Yeah. I mean, I can try. I yeah, think you I should think try. I, I think I'm there, but I, I, I don't know about the boa. It's, it's fine. It's amazing. It's great. What are you it's talking amazing. about? <laughs> it's amazing. Jesus, <laughs> no, it's, seriously, me. like it's insane how good it is. Hey, big guy to big guy. Like when I first got, because I've been a kinetic guy for f fifteen years. Yeah. I haven't been able to wear anything. I mean, I was in a size forty-two or forty-four pant. Yeah. Now I wear a thirty-six, mm. and sometimes a thirty-eight, depending. I wore a thirty-four in our Evo pant. Because I could open the boa yeah. enough, put it on, and crank it down. Yeah. I can wear a 36 yeah. comfortably. Right. Right. But the boa is amazing because it's like I've never been able to wear it either, so I see where you're coming from. It's like, well, oh, no, no, no. The straps are fine. I, I, like, I fit into it before. I put some weight back on. At one point, I was wearing the Evo red and white stuff mm -hmm. uh, at the World Vets I did. But the mm. – What? World Vets I did, Yoda? yeah. <laughs> 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 right, fuck you guys. I want to talk about it then. I don't care. <laughs> I prefer the light hydrogen. Kyle's on one. Kyle, got a question for JT? Yeah, I do. And by the way, I won fly gear on the Moto 60 show four or five years ago. I'm super pumped on it. And nice. It actually, of our local news. Oh, you're breaking up a little uh, bit. Driving. You're driving. All right, he's out. You're out. Uh, yeah. I talked to him a little bit, this guy over here. Max? Max. Yes. Yeah. I'm just fucking with you. <laughs> <laughs> when are you coming back home? Hold on. Let me. I oh. want to get something across because okay. this is important. Okay. Uh, he said that on the light pant, um, excuse me, I don't know if it's this year or not, but the yoke has changed yep. or the panel, so it's not as stretchy. So the problem I had back then is it would pull my – my pants would pull down as I accelerated out of a corner. It would, like, pull on my jersey. Mm -hmm. So that has changed. Yes. So in the – well, in the back – 
right. we stiffened that up a little bit. There's less stretch back there, so your pants are going to want to come down less. Before, that was flexing and pulling down. Right. Like When you accelerate to pull down, now it's more of a firmer stretch material, so it does, it's not going to give as much. Yeah, because that's something I talked about, yep. Max, with. I was like, I and like that. Happened, that. that was last year mm -hmm. as because well. Because I always, oh, ha every time uh, I accelerate, my neck would like kind of pull back. So yeah. what's, the, what's the glove I'm wearing right now? Media? No. The new mesh one? The mesh. Oh, the new mesh glove. You guys sent me some new mesh gloves, mountain biking. You can use a smartphone with them, which your old ones said you could, but you really couldn't. These ones, you can use a smartphone with them. They're super lightweight, really good vented, fit well. I love them. Yeah, mesh. it's brand new. We yeah. just got those. Love that mesh glove. So They're good. And so if you're a mountain biker and you wear Fly, uh, or if you're you know what road bike or whatever, try these mesh gloves from Fly. Uh, they're great. Yeah. Yeah, and, and honestly, like just in a nutshell, like the line is so broad now. Yeah. Like when I look at other brands that we compete against, um, you know, the bigger ones they have a ton of stuff. The smaller ones, I'm like, man, your line's super small. Like we have so much stuff. Yeah. Like Evo, light, kinetic, kinetic. Got to be happy with something. F16, yeah. women's light, women's F16, patrol. Two graphics specific of Youth Kinetic. Youth F16 is brand new. We've never done Youth F16 specific before. Uh, I mean, just like yeah. there's so much gear. It's insane. Yeah. Like it's, it's almost too much. Uh -huh. So I would just, you know, if you're, if you're ever interested in the brand, go on there and just look because there's so many graphics, so many colors. Like, and I'm, I think I'm the most excited about the youth stuff. Like we, I thought we did a really good job of expanding our youth offering and really getting stuff that kids are going to like. Uh, and we, the youth specific gear was like, it was kind of a, a risk for us because the minimums are super high and the rollers are super expensive. So there's a lot of upfront cost, but it's been a huge home run. Like we, it's yeah. taken off. Right. And we're able to take chances with those graphics. Putting the family should. first. <laughs> right. But it, it gives us an opportunity to really <laughs> take some chances mm -hmm. on graphics too, because that stuff really appeals to kids. Right. Um, so it's just, man, it's, it's a cool experience to, and, and I, I feel very fortunate that we have a brand that's big enough to do stuff like that yeah. because I look at smaller brands and they have yeah. like two or three lines and call it good. We're done. Yeah. Right. And it's sink or swim. So yeah, it's gotta be something that, that can satisfy you color wise, yeah, style wise or whatever, you know, um, fly racing, fly racing.com, motorsport.com. Get it on there. Of course it's all out there. Uh, again, formula helmet's pretty amazing stuff. Oh yeah. yeah. That's cool. It's just like pretty aggressive, but it's like bright, right? right? Yeah. Like, for kids in a dealership, if it doesn't jump off the wall, yeah. you're not selling yeah. it. Like, it has to. That's right? It has to be super bright. Sure. Sure. Absolutely. Still got a cool catalog? Yeah. Um, I, saw the, I yeah, saw the LE stuff. Oh. Looking good. Whenever that comes out, who knows when. Is the LE Evo or light? Both. I don't mm -hmm. know. We both. We have both. both. Okay. We have an LE. Yeah, we have an LE Evo and an LE. How there many LEs are we having first next year? Two. Family two. first. Catalog. Anaheim one? There will for sure be one at Anaheim one. And then I don't know the other one Second's yet. Second's TBD. Indianapolis. It's always Indianapolis. Uh, I don't think we've ever done one in Indy. <laughs> really? <laughs> I was going to no. say. I'm like, I, no. I, I don't remember any launches in Indianapolis, but we'll just let the guy go. I thought it was Indy. No, I guess I don't not. I think so. Uh, Max, uh, who, who are we signing for 23? Who we got? I don't know yet. What do you mean you don't know? I don't know yet. It's August. I know. Trust me. I know. We're trying. It's a, it's not a great year for it's openings. A, who, 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 it's an odd year. Who came closer, Sexton or Webb? With us? Yeah. Who did you think came closer? Probably Sexton. I say Webb. You think so? <laughs> yes. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, I would. Okay. Okay. Now that you go back at the – yeah, yeah. Webb. Damn it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I almost had Webb, one of yeah. those two guys. Well, I think yeah, Sexton – like, Sexton was at our offices. Yeah. But I think he was signing with Alpine Stars no matter what happened the whole time. Right. I really do. Yeah. Um, and, I, and Webb and Sexton have another year on their contract? Uh, Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. There's really no one. We we gotta get. There was a there was a few up this year, but there was some difficulties with a few people. I we've tried. It, it's an odd year. It just happens to be that we fell when a bunch of stuff fell apart for us too. So mm -hmm. I put it this way on Sexton. He turned down twenty percent more money, not from us, but from another brand to stay to get to sign with Alpine. Yeah. Just wanted to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Just Turn, it was, and 20% yeah. of his deals a lot. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Uh, so we, we don't know. Yeah. Not, not really. We have Rockstar uh, Husky locked up. 250 Rockstar. guys. Rockstar. 250 guys yep. locked up. We got Brayton. Yep. We got Osborne. J JB's not going anywhere. Right. We got Short. We got Kennard. Yep. 
<laughs> got the I got the ambassador in the retirement home yeah. unlock. Yeah, you Pike, Pike's in. Bradshaw. Uh, Travis Preston. Bradshaw Preston. <laughs> Firepower Honda. I'll have Firepower Honda. That is a, actually, that is a pretty good roster of like. <laughs> oh, I have I have all uh, like I have the old dudes. Covered. Got Dogger. I got them all. Do we need to get Dogger. <laughs> Dogger. Uh, yeah, Firepower Honda is good though. Dino, Max, and whoever they have. Like, yep. yeah, your Reeve runs a good program. Yep, so got that, a good team. There. I'm super excited to have yep. Dino. Yeah. Just, not even so much on the results side, but like no, social yeah. media side, yeah, yeah. YouTube side. We'll have Hymas when cool. he moves up. Yep. Yep. Yes. That's a good roster. Yeah. We just got to get that impact 450 guy. You, I know you know. Oh, that. I yeah, know. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, I know. Not like you haven't taken swings, as we just talked about. Yeah. Right. I right. just took a swing right. about a week and a half ago and missed. Yeah. So. What, uh, what are we doing for him? Are we going to get him under? Or, like, what that's, are we that's confidential. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Right. Well, as as Un unfortunately, <laughs> with you being the media, that's that's confidential. I mean, <laughs> like, am I signed up again? You see what kind of deal yeah. keeper has got. He's throwing money yeah. around. Yeah. He's doubling the, the blood price. money so over here. Blood money. Max, I know you were you were at my house earlier this morning. We hung out. We went for lunch. We got number 15, by the way, at, at the we Sharkies. Did. That was awesome. Okay. It's a good day. It's on the 15th. And we got number 15. So, oh, wow. I got a proposal for you, Max. Here yeah. we go. Okay. So I'm not allowed to talk, right? <laughs> what? I have to stay out of this. Yeah. Yeah, because okay. you're going to shoot it down. You don't have an open mind. If it's a terrible idea. I'm, yeah, you don't have an open I mind. Mean, of course I'm going to shoot so, it down. So, uh, I, I got a nice backyard, right? It's nice. It's, it's, it's good. It's got pool stuff. It is but, super nice. But what it was missing was like a barbecue island. That's what I really wanted. I'd go back. Uh, my dear friend Nick sends me steaks, burgers. I cook them all the time. And so I need to upgrade my barbecue because the last bar barbecue I have is really small. Tater, you can have that barbecue if you want it, by the way. It, right? Are you taking it? Yeah, I was supposed to come pick it up like two weeks ago. Yeah, like like me riding? Yeah. Right. We're on the same so page. So I'm going to give Tater the old barbecue smaller. Not that great, but he can have it. Uh, so I got a new barbecue island out there. Looks good. Mm -hmm. You know, it's got a plug-in. It's got a fridge. It's got a big, nice barbecue. Nice tabletop. Nice tabletop on it. I'm about to pay for a barbecue. Listen, here's... <laughs> Here's what we can do for you. So we put fly on the barbecue. Nice work. So that's a fly <laughs> racing barbecue stand. How much? Five grand. For a for a for a fifteen dollar <laughs> sticker? No, we'll we'll make it better than that. that that's a rough mock up. It needs to be engraved. We'll get it engraved. We can do the sizzling. Can't you get fly with the with the burner in the burner? Yeah. The 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 stamp. So you, for five grand, can own a piece of history. Come over to Steve Mathis's house for the Fly Racing Barbecue. The only thing that's going to be history is that five grand. So, and my job, Fly <laughs> Racing Barbecue <laughs> Pool Party. What do you think? No. What? No. Fuck your Photoshop. <laughs> Suck. You blew this proposal. Yeah, I don't. I don't care. You blew my proposal. <laughs> hey, Max said he'd give me whatever I wanted, I'll so still I made give it, him bad, I wants, made it I bad on care. purpose. That's a fly racing. That's a nice barbecue. Stand. That's a fifteen dollars sticker you made at Walmart. <laughs> like, no, that's not well, a nice the, barbecue. <laughs> the real one will be better. <laughs> no, I'm looking. For, out. I'm looking for four grand. I'm looking for four oh, grand. We're dropping, if I, we're if dropping. I keep <laughs> for the barbecue, we're going fly down. racing barbecue island, forty bucks. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll pay for the sticker. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> no? No. Hard no. You changed, man. You changed. <laughs> no, I didn't. You used to be about promoting fly. It's a your different idea, guy. It's, your ideas have gotten dumber. He's a third less. What? Like, he's a third less of a guy now. Wow. So. And your totally ideas different. have gotten worse. What are you talking about? Nothing says fun like a barbecue station, and people are going to associate fly with fun. They already do that. Can we run a contest here at Pulp where the first 25 to 30 listeners do something and we can have a fly racing pool party? They get to come over. The they get to come to the house. Yes. No, admire, admire the no, ceilings. No, no. No? No, we're not doing that. We're not. <laughs> Nobody's doing that. We could just you go mountain biking with route them Route them through the side so they don't have to come in the house and just have this nice fly racing no, barbecue pool party. No, we're not doing that. You go mountain that. biking with them first, no. and then yeah. the after party is Listen, here at the pool. Skip's yeah. Brewery, Skip Norfolk, the Huddle Brewery here in town, he'll be lucky to – we'll have a fly party there. Why can't we do a show there? We can do a show there. Absolutely. Okay. He wants uh, to How do does well. that work if I buy a barbecue and then no one else gets to see it but Steve? <laughs> Kiefer will see it. He, that doesn't count. He doesn't social media. He works his for the backyard. enemy. That doesn't count. Marks and Tater will see it. No, I already give them shit too. That doesn't work. Oh, that's ridiculous. You're losing. Fly racing. Fly Power racing. Power pellets are gone. Uh, <laughs> bad idea. Kyle's back on one. Kyle, what's up, man? Hey, sorry about the poor cell service yeah, a second right. ago. No problem. Um, thank you, Max and JT. About four or five years ago, I won some fly gear on the Fly Moto 60 show, and I'm always appreciative for that. 
Awesome. Nice. And it actually found its way on the front page of our newspaper for a Labor Day race. That was it. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah. Well, uh, maybe know, Max will give you 5K you got- for that. I mean, that could be 5K <laughs> for the barbecue. So. <laughs> uh, that, that'd be a tall order. Right. Um, so is the barbecue. And then also, yeah, there you go. I was going to support JT with the cooler. Um, Can't just because, exclaimed. you know, abs are, abs are made in the kitchen, not in the gym. There you go. That's absolutely true. So, there you go. That's 100% true. So, and then also at the Lorenzo Glen scene, real quick, I was thinking you had the old investment strategy strategy which is don't invest more than you can afford to lose yep. maybe this should be a, a call to action by the manufacturers the oems that are providing bikes or even those who put a ton of money into their bikes that maybe not take something that you can't afford to lose if you do get called out 100 percent, yeah. i agree yeah we, we said yep. that absolutely don't if you're if you're scared to lose that bike to the claim rule don't put it on the racetrack again there if, you go if Perfect. vegan and I'll or star the- don't say a word and just let this none of this happens yeah they just go, all right. Absolutely. That Give sucks, him a but... really good bike. He was yeah. going to win anyway. Yeah. yeah. That's all you got to do. I'm just pissed yeah. the kid's going to be able to well, ride a star bike, and I never did. <laughs> <laughs> pay 17.5. Well, you can. Yeah. yeah. Just he like didn't you pay said, 17. they threw a GYTR motor in, and he won. It's yeah. like, that's enough said on that one. I had a quick question for you, JT, in regard to the Stark Varg. Okay. Um, I'm a vet rider. I know there's plenty of vet riders that listen to the show. Mm-hmm. I'm, I bas- I'm on pre-order for it. Okay. Would you sell your naturally aspirated bike? I have a YZF 250 that's already six years old, surprisingly. Would that you bike? sell it to basically go all in on that? That's a really tough question to answer. Um, I think you would be best served having both. Uh, I, I really do, and I know that's not – possible for some waffle. people Do the waffle. 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 no 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 i i'm my only concern is the first gen of these because i personally believe there's they're gonna have challenges like look at a tesla look at anything that's the first go around there's always a learning curve and growing pains and all that i don't think it's gonna be infallible or the perfect motorcycle the first go around i i don't um you know, if you had a team of engineers every time you went riding, would you be fine? Sure, but you're not. You're, you know, things are going to break. They're going to have challenges. There's going to be electronics bugs to work through, I believe. Um, so that would be the reason I would tell you to have this, your other bike as a backup in case things go sideways. Um, now, five years from now, after they work through all these challenges and they learn things they don't quite know yet, then I think, sure, you could you could rely on that as your only singular bike. But I just, I think just like any other revolutionary change, it's, there are going to be challenges along the way, especially early on. What do you think, Kiefer? You've had a lot of experience with Altas and, um, if it was me, I would not just have an electric bike. That's just me. I would have a combustion. Oh, now you're waffling. No, I'm I, I wouldn't allow, I was not allowed to say that too. You're, you did. You said both. Yeah, no. And then you yelled at me for waffling. Yeah, I'm not waffling. I'm saying I would rather have a, a gas powered. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. I thought you were saying have both. No, no. Okay. I would rather go gas powered. Got it. And okay. uh, electric is fun. I like it, but it's still, it's not in me. It's not what I grew up with. And to me, it's still more fun to ride a a four stroke. So. All right. All right. There you go, Kyle. I, I appreciate your I appreciate your answers. And I'm, what you say in that Kiefer, would you equate it? Because I mean, most of us made it through the two stroke change. That was yeah. definitely a learning the four stroke was a different animal yep do you feel like it's even greater the leap with that or because i feel like it's an accurate comparison minus one is electric but as far as the learning curve goes yeah absolutely i think it's a it's a bigger jump from going from a two to a four stroke i think learning how to ride an electric bike takes a little bit of more time um, i think it might take you a little bit more time to appreciate what it has to offer uh i've driven a, a tesla and i have a, a ton of fun with that but for me, on the dirt bike side of things, just the things that I want to go do, how to go fast, the length of time that I want to ride, electric is just not there yet. Kyle, I will, okay. tell, I will tell you this, though. That bike is so damn fast that it'll blow your mind. And I, I only rode – I rode the 60-horsepower variation. They're going to have an 80-horsepower option. The 60-horsepower blew my mind how fast it was. And I still got my Alta, and it is it – is, just like JT said, it is fast. Like, it'll get up and go And that was quick. supposed to be like a 250, right? Yeah. I mean, this is 60 horsepower. You go from zero to max speed immediately. Yeah. Like, the only thing holding you back from max speed is traction. It's well, unreal. It's like that you driven a Tesla, Pete? right? Yeah. And you just gun it? Immediately. You're, yeah. You're up to full speed. Like, right. it's crazy. 
Thanks. Well, for either of you, just say you're at your local track. Do you feel like that you could get on your local track and compete at the same level you would with a naturally aspirated bike? Compete as in what? Like racing? Of, what? Racing? Yeah, just like, I'm not talking about Glen Helen by any means, but I'm just saying like the average American local track that's, you know, just mediocre if you want to call it that. Look, I don't know enough about their battery technology, but all I can speak about what I knew from Alta. And for me, the battery technology wasn't there yet because of heat heat kills the battery life and then it kills your power so for me i would get if i wanted to race i would get about 12 to 15 minutes of full power if i was under deep conditions uh normal ripped conditions at a motocross track now if i was playing around by my house trail riding with my kid we would be out there for an hour hour and a half you know dicking off but racing conditions uh churned up dirt for me I'd have to see the new bike and the new technology that they have within the battery. And and let's face it, that battery technology is going to get better. And when that happens, I think that's when a lot of people's minds will change. When they can actually go ride it for 45 minutes how they want to ride it, that's when I think it'll really change people's minds. I'll tell you what to watch for, Kyle. Um, so Sebastian yeah. Tortelli is going to race a British yeah. championship race and an Italian championship race in September. So I'm, I will be watching okay. very closely to see how those races go. If you hear nothing, it's that not means good. it wasn't good. It's not good. Yeah, right. but he's going to hole shot. I will bet anybody <laughs> any amount of money that he hole shots. There's uh, no way you could beat that bike out of the gate. No chance. Thanks, Kyle. Thanks for the call. Awesome. Thank you, guys. I really appreciate your answers. Thank you. Fly Racing question here from Randy. Go ahead, Randy. Yeah, hey, I was just curious. Um, I'm up in the Pacific Northwest, and we pretty much ride – you know, enduro, there's a lot of moto guys up here, but we're mainly single track and my, you know, is fly ever going to do a enduro boot in a different colorway other than just the, like the black Maverick is all I've seen. Long term, I would say yes. Um, it, it's not like well, I have it, you know, it's not in the, it's not in waiting right now, but yes, uh, long term, we would love to continue to upgrade our boot. We'd love to have more of a premium level boot. And, and if we, do accomplish that goal then we would have a an enduro soul in it so um yes i just it's just not going to be any time like in the immediate future yeah i mean because my son and i we love the gear my kid he won't wear anything but fly yep um i have a different boot but i all my kit is i've got three sets of fly stuff and but you know i just the traction on the boot yep. and the, on the slippery rocks or the stumps and the you know the crap that we have up here um, you know, it's just kind of tough. So, yeah, and I, and I appreciate uh, I that. Would, I, I would honestly tell yeah. you being fully transparent, get a tech seven enduro and you'll, that's thank, what I got. You'll thank <laughs> me later. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Yeah. That's so, yeah. Yeah. Well, like I said, you know, but he won't, my son will not, he's like, no, I'm not wearing that crap. No. Well, and so. I, I appreciate that. Um, and yes, long term. Yeah. Yes. Thankful he's young. So it'll give us some time. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. cool. Thanks man. Thanks guys. Thanks for the call. Appreciate it. X-Brand Goggle Tear-Off segment. Let's do this. X-Brand Goggles, the choice of champions everywhere. It's the X-Brand Tear-Off segment. 15-second rapid-fire Q&A. Rapid-fire. X-Brand Goggles, choice of champions everywhere. Kyle Chisholm, X-Brand. Freddie Norton in Supercross, X-Brand. Outdoors? Josh Freddy? Strang. No. Oh. Josh Strang, X-Brand. Ricky Russell, X-Brand. Everywhere, X-Brand. Great goggles. Pulp. 2022 is the code to save with X-Brand. Uh, please check them out. These questions are submitted by Corey Moser. Oh, boy. Are you familiar with him? I am familiar. Are you? Yeah. JT? Mm, I think I saw him sitting on stage at Washougal at yeah. our live show. I think so, too. Yeah. Yeah. He uh, did, he, the Woody did make another trip, which I was did. impressed. He lost his keys at one point. Yeah. And honestly, it sounded like the Woody, he almost lost the Woody. Does the wife ever come? No. No. That's too bad. Yeah. She's All super right. nice, though. Yeah. She's normal. She's good looking, really too. Uh, all right, question submitted by Corey Moser. Uh, 30 seconds on the clock. Marks? Steve, where does Claimgate rank in Moto Drama? Mm. Oh, uh, it's not bigger than Lasergate. No. no. It's not bigger than Lasergate. Um, I mean, it's not bigger than when Alessi took out Tickle. No. And Berluti's in here yelling about a swing arm. Uh, that's I don't know. It's amateur Moto, so I'm not... But a lot of people care. Yeah, because Deegan. Amateur Moto is bigger than I think you give it right, credit for. Maybe. I don't know. I have to see. We'll see how long it lasts, right? I don't know. Not, not, not bigger than Lasergate to me. Yeah. No. It's definitely not bigger than Lasergate. 
Kiefer, what's more impressive at Loretta's, the motorhomes or Moto Moms? Moto Moms. It was on, <laughs> it was on fire this year. It was hot, humid, which made all the conditions right for mom watching. <laughs> <laughs> mom watching. It's so creepy. Oh. <laughs> I love it. He was so excited to give that answer, too. He was. It was on fire. JT, now that you've reached monk-like status, what would you have done differently with your off-the-bike training during your racing career? Uh, I I would have eaten better. Um, I just ate anything and everything. I was like a calorie-consuming machine. Um, I probably would have tried to eat a little bit better and smarter just so my body was a little bit more efficient. 15 seconds. What do you eat now? Nothing. What do you mean? Like, what do you eat? Like, what is your preferred go-to? Like, what do you eat? I have meal prep. So I order meal prep from like chicken and rice. Yeah. Turkey, um, rice, sweet potatoes. Yeah. All normal stuff. Then no bread. No bread. No. Because there's really no nutritional value in bread. It's just meat. Like sure. Beef. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cheat day. No. No quesadillas. No. What's one thing if you could eat one thing Right now, it's like, hey, we're dessert not or food? Just one f- meal. What would you? A have? whole meal. Yes. Ooh, uh, probably like chicken parm. Chicken parm. Yeah. Hmm. And a lot of it. <laughs> and a lot. <laughs> I have a big appetite, and I like suppress it. Not like intentionally. Just I don't eat as much as I would like to. I I could eat a lot if I wanted to. All right. Two nice things question. I would miss: sandwiches and like Coke. I love sandwiches. I love. I miss smoothies bad. Something awful. You can't even there's eat so much sugar. Smoothies? No, there's so much sugar in that. God dang. Right. Uh, I don't want abs that bad, dude. <laughs> Max, we've all seen what a horrible agent negotiator Mathis is. Hashtag gargoyles. So, who is an agent you enjoy working with? Beaker. I like Beaker. Beaker's a very kind, gentle soul. Yeah, I, I like Beaker. Too much. I don't know how he's an agent. Yeah, yeah. I don't know how. Yeah. It, how yeah. I like Beaks. I really don't have a problem with any of them, but I would say Beaker is probably the when the when best he was one. an agent before, and then he went back to Fox, and then he came back to an agent. When he left to go back to Fox, he's just like, man, everybody, yeah, people are so competitive and angry, and it's like, yeah, yeah, you're an agent, yeah, right? Yeah. I know. Yeah. Have you wa- not watched Entourage? Right, people are assholes. <laughs> <laughs> I miss that show. It's so good. Steve, what's the reason for the claim rule? Just to keep, you know, the racing costs down. Uh, there's, it's amateur racing, so theoretically, you know, you half the field is not going to be pros, and they're just going to try to be the best amateurs they can be before getting on with their lives. And let's give them a little bit of fighting chance and allow them to uh, keep the bikes within reason. So competitive yeah. balance. Yeah. Kiefer, will the new Yamaha 450 be a home run, or will riders and teams struggle with setup like the latest Honda and KTM? Honestly, I don't think they're going to have tr- that much trouble with setup. Um, from what I've heard, that they've been testing with stuff for a while now. Also, I think people think this is the first gen of this this model, which it is. But in all reality, this should have came out last year. So I think this bike had more time to develop and had another year under its belt. So I would say, like, currently it's the second year of this bike. 28 seconds. Good job. Really good. Thank you. <laughs> JT, <laughs> who's the favorite for Red Bull straight rhythm? <laughs> oh, God. I don't even know who's doing <laughs> yeah, that. Like, like, I mean, I guess if, if Roxon participates, he would be. I, I don't know. I, I don't know much about that event other than I know it's at the beach this year. Right. Jesus. Perfect Lord. time to take off that shirt and walk around. You know? Could. I was at the pool earlier today. Mm-hmm. Max, everyone is tired of hearing about supply chain issues. It's everywhere. What has been the biggest headache for WPS? <laughs> that. Supply chain issues. <laughs> it's brutal. It's. It, you can't even. We don't have enough time. I'll give to you, go I'll into give all you an, the details. I'll give you an example because it was a long time ago now and costs have come down. So typically to rent a container doesn't matter if it's tires gear oil whatever it's a container right it's coming from asia and getting delivered it's about normal times about 1500 to two grand it's what it costs okay i know we paid one of them and we had to have the product like it was a we didn't want to we almost said no but we had to have the product we paid 32 grand holy shit the average going was like 15 to 20 
<laughs> like that was what it had turned into, like twenty two five. Oh, sometimes we paid thirty two one time. Dang. That's was, that's what we're up against. Wow. Yeah, it's right. astronomical. Is that because of the tariffs? No, it's a lack of availability. Uh, and they, it's not regulated, so like they can charge whatever the hell they want, mm. and people are willing to pay it. They could tell you hundred grand a container, yeah, and like you have to pay it. Amazon and the other brands are like willing to pay up because they have pricing power and they have all the money in the world, so it just gets bid up to astronomical numbers. Jeez. Steve, yep. Where would you like to see a super motocross race? Mm, can we Vegas? Put them in the Legion Stadium. That'd be sweet. I'm I think gonna, I bet we come back there. Yeah, they're not going to go anywhere. Sweet. We, awesome. we need a race in Vegas again, bad. Yeah, yeah, so yeah absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm biased here, but I agree. Kiefer, does Vital Jamie have Mathis covered at World Vets? Ooh. Well, the way it's going right now, Jamie's riding, Steve is not. So I will say yes, he will, if, if he doesn't get off his ass and start fucking riding. Can you please get us more pictures like that one? <laughs> the picture that will live in infamy? <laughs> yes. God, that picture's so good. <laughs> Uh, I got tons of natural talent. I don't even need to worry about it. And you're in, right? What? World Vet? We'll see. No, they you got to say yes or no right now. They got uh, greats now, right? Yes, they got corrals. Corrals. Yes. Thank God. Corrals are there, and it's a two-day event now. I know. Yeah, I like that. Three motos only. So there's lots of action-packed stuff going to happen at the house. Yeah. Teen Daredevil is racing maniac or whatever the hell that. What is that? I was riding your stationary bicycle that that newspaper clipping. Oh, teen, Dev- teen Daredevil, a racing sensation. A racing sensation. Yeah, well, <laughs> that was, that's a real headline. I saw it. That was me. I saw a picture with all your trophies. Yeah. Yep. I got a front page uh, newspaper when I was a kid. So everybody out there in the pulp world, start hitting Steve up on a direct message telling him to start riding. Whatever it is, just to get him motivated to get on his I bike. I don't know why Tater. South. I don't know why Tater. That is not going to help you at World Vets. Where can you go riding here? Nowhere. Yeah, Tater has tough. to take me to the desert. That's it. Has it been wet? Did it rain out here? It's That's been raining like a lot lately. Oh, well, then yeah, you should go ride. Yeah. I told him he just needs to let me know like the day before so I can take a bike home. It was supposed to rain today, actually, and yeah. it didn't. Take him to that place that's always wet that you go to. Logandale? Yeah. He won't drive that far. Yeah. Next question. JT, Tomac or Sexton, who you got? Title. I'll, I guess I'll stick with Tomac, but I have zero conviction in that. Uh-huh. Five no. seconds. I think, it's, I think it's 55-45 at best. <laughs> All right, last one. Max, is it true there is a Fly JT Edition cooler coming to market? No. <laughs> <laughs> but there should be. There should be. It would be amazing. Be JT, hot, gave, be JT was very angry with me and the cooler talk and bringing it up at the show and, you know, people talking about it. And I'm like, okay, so I better lay low. He's actually really upset. I don't want to, you know, like he's mad about me bringing this up. I think it's insane to check a bag, to a uh, cooler. I think it's insane. I'm not actually mad at you. You just don't let anything go. And then the guy posts a photo on his Twitter, <laughs> let's do this, with the photo of his, <laughs> of his cooler. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> are we are we angry about this or we're embracing the cooler? He was angry at the moment. Now he's over it. So now he's embracing. It's gone now. So he's fucked. <laughs> he's gonna go. He's gonna go home <laughs> and buy another one. one. Yeah, he's, he's, he's gonna go buy two. Four hundred dollars. <laughs> he's fine. It's more that you just have to keep going. Like you make it your mission in life to keep pushing me until it's, I'm gonna. Snap. I'm gonna give JT a little bit of shit right now because I'm gonna tell you how this is gonna go down. The four hundred dollars and this whole cooler situation doesn't irritate him nearly as much as the fact that he's going to break his normal daily routine and have to go buy another cooler. That's gonna piss him off more that than a, anything. That cooler was a gift. I told more you. More than anything this week is gonna piss him off having to go what, find a cooler to you, replace the What if you <laughs> open that up and there's like EPO, HGH, there's uh, <laughs> Mike Sylvester Stallone's briefcase. Yeah, yeah, there's EPO, there's there's whippets. Oh, I love it. There's whippets. 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 Yeah. There's Break, everything in there. Coke. Breaking his yeah. daily routine of being yeah. at the office at a certain time. Gym Bags certain of time. oxygen and Just rich yeah. blood. <laughs> That's going to be harder on him than anything. Right. This right. cooler This cooler situation doesn't phase yeah. him at all. Yeah. That's going to be the problem is he's going to be like, where the fuck do I have to go buy another cooler? Um, <laughs> as much as he was relaxed with the whole situation, I can guarantee there's probably uh, none of that in there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, absolutely not. Uh, where did we get that picture of that we use on social of him carrying that cooler? Do you see how happy he was in that picture? Yeah, I think that was a fan. A fan like, was and, and, and the real world thing, it's very rare that you see that from his face. Yeah. I haven't seen JT that happy since he won that, <laughs> that boom bottle. Yeah, the boom bottle was oh, big. Those <laughs> things are great. 
<laughs> the boom I Scotch boom things. bottle was unbelievable. Those things are great. The acoustics that both of those bottles make is uh, it's it's really something. Do you sync them up? Absolutely, yeah. Oh shit. Yeah, yeah. It's like a, a full experience. That's awesome. It's, it's like experience. a quadrafina in his. In yeah. his in like his, when I'm in the, sho- the shower, shower. Yeah. it's like Hall and Oates, and you're just like, oh, oh my god, it's like you're at a concert. Just more Hall and Oates. <laughs> <laughs> Hall and Oates. It's more Hall and Oates. <laughs> I love it. Uh, RideDeskEngineering.com. Kiefer, you've ridden the Ride Engineering uh, Spring Kit, Spring Change Conversion Kit, Spring Mix, Spring Change. Yeah. What? This is gonna be. Go- this is gonna go really well. Spring forward. What are we talking Air about? Air forks to spring. The spring oh, conversion yeah, kit. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The right. conversion I said. kit. I said Correct. That. Sorry. Did I say that? Yes. No, nah, you said it weird. Sorry. Okay. All right. Spring. You should have said spring fork conversion kit. That's what you used to call it. So yes, I have ridden. Okay. Steve. Thank you. Yep. Uh, and it is you, just like we talked about with Travis. More front end traction because mm-hmm. you're on an air fork. Now you're going to spring, so you have better feel. Adrian now sells those conversion kits. So if you're looking to get out of your air, and you want some more front end bite. On lean angle, get that conversion. Pulp Fan 20's code to save with ride-engineering.com. Thank you to those guys. Uh, motorsport.com. Tweet at Tater segment. Let's do it. <laughs> no, that's my mom. It's Motors- the motorsport.com. Tweet that talent segment. <laughs> no. Motorsport.com. Go through the banner on pulpamex.com or pulpamexshow.com to help us out. Great company. Oh, free shipping on everything over 39 bucks. 2023 fly stuff. Motorsport.com. FMF, motorsport.com. Pro Filter, Maxima, motorsport.com. All of it. Go there, check it out. Thanks to those guys for coming on board with us and a dedicated team of gearheads to help you out for uh, road stuff, street bike stuff, UTV stuff, and motocross stuff. These questions are submitted to at Pulp Mech Show. Uh, Tater, let's pick like the best two or three. Oh, we're on Tits' program. Yeah, we got to go. All right, I'm in. I'm going to ask this one because it's right here already. Verb Slaw Dog. Uh, Steve, what do you think Wright makes a year? Like 500K? Yeah. Yeah, he makes. Uh, what do you, re- what do you really Peters. think he makes? Uh, 150. With championship and everything? Yeah. No. All in? Yeah, probably. That's not really? A lot. That's, That's not, a lot. not Yeah. I thought he'd make 100 just base. I don't think so. Really? No. That's not That's not very much. Yeah. I would leave two. I'm not saying okay. winning everything sure. for 150. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, he's better than that. Okay. I just feel like no, you, make you, a don't, more. you don't think that's true. Well, I say one fifty, you say two. No, okay. I'm saying yeah. like your point was go chase the dream. I'm oh. saying he's to make to stay home and only make one fifty, winning everything is not enough reason to stay. Like go chase the dream, go to America, go to Europe, right. go. I can find out how much he makes, but sure, yeah. Um, I mean, it's none of our business. Right. It's just whatever. I would have thought more. Maybe, maybe I'm off. Uh, but yeah, uh, the uh, um, uh, um, the question from Slaw Dog there. Because he thought Kyle Peters was making about 500k, <laughs> 500K. racing the Hoosier Arena Cross <laughs> Series. Yeah. It's like, whoa, no, whoa. man, no, that's not, that's <laughs> not, yeah, not what he's doing. All right. Uh, from Mike O'Neill for JT, can you talk about the differences and similarities in working for MXGP TV and Mav TV? Yeah, so like the MXGP thing. Um, I'm not an employee. Like it's it's more of a co-op with Fly Racing and mxgp to help you know western power sports pays for my expenses to go to mxgp and i'm allowed to talk about fly racing on the air paul does a great job of working that in and it expands our exposure into europe which is the goal um map tv is a little bit different western power sports is still involved in that but i am paid by map tv and it's more of like i'm actually a paid employee of the series at that point so it, they're a little bit different um to me the mxgp thing is easier because you're not on camera you're in a booth they can't see you could just freely talk and paul runs the show the math tv side for me is way harder because you're on camera um you have to come up with your own content it's just a very much more difficult thing for me so i i feel more confident with the mxgp side for now but i will say this weekend was the first time that i wasn't like crazy nervous like really yeah, I was pretty okay. Like the stand-ups, I get a little bit nervous because I don't want to trip over my words. But the interview stuff, the I, w- I was fine. Like my heart rate was super low. Every other weekend, I've been pretty pretty nervous. Uh, who's the coolest GP guy to talk to? Like Ryder? Yeah. Uh, Seaworth's pretty cool. Yeah, he's cool. I don't talk to those guys a ton. No, Cairoli. Cairoli's the coolest. <laughs> um, but they're all like super mellow. Like there's no ego over there at all. Those guys, it's almost like Canada where everybody hangs. Yep. Like it's it's a different vibe than here. Like when those guys are in staging, they're all broing down, laughing, talking to each other, 
mechanics like you if you watch lisa wayland like everybody's just chilling yeah. like laughing and you go to america it's like dude yeah game face yeah it's it's way gnarlier we got a dollar 99 from digit 975 question for jt what's the most angry you've ever been at steve oh i don't know i've been pretty pissed um yeah i'm good <laughs> what's a dollar 99 what are you talking about uh on youtube you can donate money okay on the show like while you watch us uh-huh I don't know the most. I've so been we got a dollar ninety nine for really this question. I'm not paying him anything. Though. No, don't pay me. I don't want anything. Yeah, just, paying. but I've been super, Max. super pissed to where like I'm gonna, I'm about to say something that could like endanger our friendship because I'm so pissed. Like, but right. yeah, it's whatever. It's Look, at, if you guys don't know JT and Steve, and you're anywhere in a car with them, you would think it's World War Three all the he's time. Just he's wrong about everything. <laughs> <laughs> but that's just normal bickering. I'm talking about like legitimately mad, like yeah. really mad. I need the dollar ninety nine because Max fucked me on the barbecue. So starting to build that. Yeah, up. I got to build that up. Power pellets. Thanks. Thanks a lot. You're welcome. Is FX are interested in a barbecue, Alan? Yeah, we can always <laughs> pitch it to him. <laughs> Milt will do anything. I need to get Milt Mark's, put anything out of Milt's uh, Mark's, Mark's, possibilities. Mark screwed up the proposal. That's really where it started. Listen, it, it was weak. If, if I made best. a better proposal, you could perhaps we could have at least continued the Thank conversation. You. Thank we you. can clearly see weak. what he thinks about you because he doesn't even call you when he's at the same concert as you. Dude, the shady, unbelievable, shady. You screwed yourself there. There's, yeah, not, there's yeah. not a lot. Left yeah, that's that's fine. To, there's not a lot left to defend. Unbelievable. You. That, that's fine. I had your back. I'll still give you stuff. But Appreciate I, you. I, 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 still see, I, see, I think you're on your own now. <laughs> Hold on. Fuck you, you're fired. Okay. <laughs> uh, what else there, uh, Tater? Uh, from Smorsky281, if this championship comes down to the final lap of the final moto and they're banging bars, do you think Sexton's got it in him to get physical with Eli, or does Eli bulldog him out of the way? No, they both got it in him. They yeah. both got it. Oh, yeah. I've seen, team, I've seen Tom I get dirty before. I That'll saw him be, clean Chad out one time. Yeah. That'll be a slugfest right to the finish line. Both of those guys can get dirty. Yeah. I just still like watching watching the Barsha uh, Tomac bickering at the end. When the Tomac When's the last pissed. time you passed anybody clean? This year? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah Tomac, that's probably the maddest I've ever seen him. Yeah. That was awesome. All right. From yeah. one Thomas Baker. I see factory riders checking sag every time they go out. I sometimes leave my bike tied down lightly for extended periods of time. Uh, should us senior, senior citizen woods guys be concerned about spring rates changing through time? Haven't checked my sag in a year. I mean, you should check your sag. Uh, I don't think it should be a concern that it's tied down a little bit. But, yeah, check your sag at least once a month. I mean, if you're riding every weekend, go once a month. All right, last one from Studio Cat for you, Chris. I noticed Aiden mentioned checking out the sites at Loretta's. Did something happen to his home life prior to the race, possibly leading to his results? Nope, he still has his V card, so that's a plus. I like that. Uh, I will say he did go out and invent. He was there a little bit earlier than Heather and I. Heather and I flew in um, from Colorado, so he was there two days at the ranch just having a good time, which as he should experience it a little bit. But it is weird to see the dynamic of of boys and girls out there and how they interact with each other, like compared to what I did back in the day. So Was he getting like enough rest and eating right the whole week and all that? So once Monday hit, he was pretty much on lockdown. Cooler? Uh, he had a cooler. Yeah. And uh, so Heather and I, we had a bedtime every night at 10. So he would go to go to sleep with us. And uh, But as these... these these boys drive by these girls in their golf carts. They would just scream, hey, what's your, your Snapchat or what's your TikTok? And that's how they would hook up or whatever. Right. They, don't, they don't actually talk to each other. Yeah, yeah, no, no. <laughs> so it's just weird how the dynamic works. And if I was a, a parent with a daughter, I would put her on lock in my motorhome, and she is not <laughs> roaming the, the pits at Loretta's. There is fiending young boys out there that is just gnarly. I have seen. So... And I'm surprised more... Terrible things happen at Loretta's. Like, there's shit everywhere. There's golf carts, groms. It's, it's more organized chaos than I've ever been a part of. Mm -hmm. But it's nice to see the freedom. There's, there's just freedom there. Like, everyone's doing something. For the most part, everyone is nice to each other. You, in, you end up knowing your neighbors. And it's just a different vibe. It's like, a, it's like you're going to a party and a motocross race broke out. That's more of the vibe to me, you know? Right. So, and then 
you know, the, the beer tent's a whole, I never experienced that, so Heather and I went and people watched. What a shit show. It is. So uh, much fun. It's unbelievable. <laughs> really? People are hammered? Oh, yeah. Oh, my like, gosh. Oh, I didn't think that. Yeah. It's unbelievable. That's did where we saw s- Weege. Did you not yeah. see the Instagram of the disco ball helmet? Yeah, but I didn't think people get, like, hammered. Dude, yeah. like, like Parents, it, parents I, build like, up to that place. I imagine them sitting around sipping beers and having a good time, no, no, but no, not no, hammered. Sipping. Yeah, hammered. No, by Wednesday night, parents are going there to chug beers. Well, their <laughs> their dreams are crushed. Yeah, like, yeah. Little Johnny's not winning a title. Right. Time to get hammered. And they yeah. spent ten grand to get yeah. there. And then yeah. they spent another five in the beer tent right. by the end of the week. <laughs> and everyone, you can tell who went to the beer tent because the next day, their voices are gone. Yeah. <laughs> Just yeah. gone. Right. That's COVID. So, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's definitely an experience, and uh, Aiden was, Aiden was good. But these kids build up Loretta's in their minds so much; they think it's the epitome of everything. It is, and I think a lot of these kids just choke. And the track is so different than what most people ride, and it's really beat up. So a combination with all of that thing, it, it just r- truly shows yeah. who's put together. Track the four strokes have outgrown the track. They really have, from what I can look at. 450 is a lot of bike for that track. Yeah. Yeah, it's... That's why it's impressive when Cole won. Like, he rode it really good. Heath rode really good. He just wasn't in shape. Mm -hmm. Like, these older dudes really rode good. They're just, you know, not in shape. Yeah, we had Martinez on the show last week. Really, really cool story. Yeah, fly rider. Yeah, Cole was ripping. Yeah. And I think he was the guy in shape. He's coming from two-hour races from works and big six. Like, the heat obviously bothered everyone, but I think he had more toughness inside of him. Mike Brown, more toughness? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. He's in the humidity. and he Piss and vinegar. Yeah. Full yeah. of it. Yeah. <laughs> Look at he said to people before, he's like, if Kiefer beats me, I'm retiring. He said that? Yes. <laughs> so that's how adamant he was. Oh, he, was re- he knew he was ready. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Well, is he bringing it to World Vets? Have you, have you confirmed that? I don't know. I haven't talked to him about okay. that. Okay. All right. So. We never know with Mike Brown anyway. No, it doesn't. Yeah. He could commit yeah. right now. Yeah. It doesn't yeah. matter. Or, or you could say no and you'll show up or whatever. But let me just... Mike is the most gracious dude, like super nice, humble yeah. guy. But when it comes time to race, it, it's no mess no, around. No, you're trying to take his money. Yeah. 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 He's a grown man. You're trying to take his money. Yeah. So, uh, all right. Motorsport.com. Tweet Woo! it. Tater. That's Thanks. horrible. Uh, that's it. That's the show. Uh, appreciate it. Uh, what did we learn tonight? What did we learn? I claimed a cooler. I learned that. Yeah. D- did we actually we have not- any clarity on this, on this situation? I'm actually more confused now leaving here than I was getting in here. The only thing I'm sure of, and you can call me a shill, is that Yamaha didn't threaten to take any dealership away. I feel like we, I feel like you aired out all the different versions of the story, and I think people are going to make their own judgment anyways. Yeah. But I feel like there's definitely some information that got portrayed that was not accurate. A lot of it from one individual. And I think yeah. the rule's going to change. Yeah. And I think from now on, people are going to think twice about doing this, and when they do, they're going to understand... He- the possible consequences. And for the record, I think he should have had the bike as does JT. I do. I yeah. know. I honestly think he should as well. Yeah. But he should have known, like, hey, this this stuff could happen. Right. Right. Wow. Not the we really devoted it, Max. I feel like you didn't get a lot of words in tonight. I apologize. I, I got. Just, I got to listen. Okay. It was great. Right. I was fine. Right. Yeah. Right. I got to chime in where I need to chime in. And I mean, and I, in your in your you you know you, every visit you have a tradition of shitting on me and you did it again with that's the barbecue. What I do. Yeah, with the barbecue. So things are. Gargoyles, you know. Well, I build agents. you. I build you up for a few months, and then yeah. I break you back down. Yeah. And then I'll build you up over right, the next couple right. months. I'll come well, back. I and understand I'll why break you back down. It makes no sense to me why Fly doesn't want to get in the barbecue island business. Yep. I can't believe we have to have this discussion. Yeah. No, I don't believe it either. Real quick. We start. Start off without a piss poor proposal. Yeah, well. <laughs> Loretta stories. You're like you, you hear people <laughs> flipping out. Yeah. Like parents flipping out. Yeah. I saw a couple flipping out. Uh, a couple parents. You know. Um, uh, towards the end of the week, but I witnessed my wife. Like when you see a woman yelling and crying at the same time, it, it's hard to Is judge. This A&H? Yes, it's hard to judge how you want to react to this. So <laughs> when Aiden was getting his ass chewed and she was crying at the same time, one of Aiden's friends was inside the motorhome while this was going on, and he, I looked at one point. I looked over, and his eyes <laughs> were about as big as this Renthal bar pad, <laughs> and he was just like. I can just tell, like, where is this coming from? Like, what is going on? Should I be sad or should I be, like, scared? Aiden was like, he didn't know how to react. Like, what happened? Just on riding? Like, Aiden's shoulder, like, oh, popped out, yeah. and he was supposed to be wearing his shoulder brace. And mom laid into him when she found out he wasn't wearing didn't it. Didn't put it on. And originally thought he left it at home, but it was in his gear bag the whole time. So it was one of these, like, 
I'm pissed slash I'm sad crying like and I, I didn't know how to react I just was sitting there watching shit go down I was like oh my god yeah. like, I don't know what to right. do when you see a woman crying and yelling I don't know what, what to you do just stay out of the way yeah. that's I what think, I did I think you just, you're right yeah how long you been married you do long the, time. You do the I'm, Homer I'm Simpson. I'm 17 years in. You just get out of the way. <laughs> Homer the, Simpson into the, the bushes. Yeah, you're just like, I got to go. The just poor the kid, yeah. I'm just like, I'm so sorry, man. Like, I apologize for the – and he's like, no, man, it's okay. I, I get it. I get yelled at too. And I'm like – this one thing about Loretta is like you see a lot of parents just freak out. I don't want to see that. I don't want any part of that. In my mind, that's what it is. It's seven days of freaking out. <laughs> that's what I have in my mind. Like – just seven days of heartbreak and tears and yelling dude but it's enjoyable for me to sit back and see other people do it because right. i'm like yep right been there right 98 percent of those kids are not going to make enough money to survive racing more than 98 percent. 99 yeah more than 99 okay. 99.9 okay. okay. and no one is safe even the wives get yelled at from the dads like yeah. i'm i was outside at night one day or one night and uh this the guy had a flashlight trying to fix something on the trailer and the wife was holding the flashlight, and the dude was in her ass, like, oh, what are you doing? That's not where I'm going. <laughs> like, I'm just like, oh, shit. And I go, hey, Heather, come out here. It's going to have a domestic here in a sit. And, like, and just watch them. <laughs> like, it's just awesome to see the inner workings of families yeah. at La Ranch. Yeah. <laughs> it sounds great. It's, it's awesome. <laughs> uh, you going back next year? No. Yeah, no. you are. You're I mean, going. Aiden will go. I'm not. Oh, okay. I'll, I'll chill out. Oh, that's it. I'm done. Take your beating and it's too much to do Aiden as uh, work yeah. and then for me to race how I want to race. Right. I I came in super burned out and I didn't want to do anything. I was this close to saying, "Hey, I'm just here for you," and I wasn't even going to race, but I was like, "I'm here. I might as well do it." But next year, was gonna... it getting beat by the guy we don't know his name in the last moto that did it? No, it was. It happened before then. Okay. But that was. It was his paymart moment. <laughs> yeah, from two years ago. Frenchy. Exactly. <laughs> Frenchy. He got second in. Uh, 45. Oh, did? Could have yeah. been the 45, <clears throat> 35, 40 seconds. Jimmy Jarrett. Yeah, Jimmy Jarrett was ripping. Jimmy Jarrett, 45 plus champ. Uh, enduro guy, right? GNCC guy? GNCC guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Fly rider. That's right. Good, good. Good dude. Uh, so we didn't learn much, but we tried. Uh, it's usually, that's a typical. Right. Uh, thank you to uh, McAdoo, Cameron McAdoo, Dylan Wright, Travis Preston, Matt Walker, Donnie Luce for all com calling in uh, tonight. Appreciate that. Uh, JT, thanks for coming in. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for having us. Yeah, uh, really good. Good job on the 2023 stuff. Yeah, good job on your, your interviews, dude. Seriously. Uh, it's, it's I feel like progress. it's it's Thank nice you, to hear some actual, you know, some questions that well, I think people I was so excited want. this week, and we had extra time, so I got to ask two questions. Yeah. That was cool. So do you know that going in when you get ready to ask? They t he tells me right before. Okay. One or two. And usually it's one. Right. It, and a lot of it depends on when they cross the – to get the two card, because if it's like <laughs> – that could be a full minute or two of extra time that we get. Like if it's like, oh shit, they just missed it. Now we go an extra lap. I'm yeah. We didn't even get RJ on TV the first the first two video moto because hmm. we didn't have enough time. Have you been in a motorcycle car accident, Kiever? Did some idiot or somebody take you out? Yeah. Call Arthur Draper. He's a friend of the show. Okay. He's a moto guy, toned attorney. He'll take the time to talk to you. He'll take the time to know you personally, and he only gets paid if you get paid. Good to know. Should've, Arthur Draper dot com. You could have brought this to Loretta's. I needed him. Could have been a lot of accidents. Does anybody get hit by golf carts? Slap a subpoena to Brown. Does anybody get hit and driven over by Groms or That's what I was saying. Like as much chaos as it is for, for golf carts and, and Groms and just shit everywhere, I don't think, and I, and I could be wrong, I don't think a lot of people or any people have gotten hurt. I think the only place that somebody got hurt this year was in the creek. Creek, yeah. Yeah, I think that was it, which is super unfortunate. Which is normal. Every year something happens, right? Yeah. This was that the little girl? Yeah. Oh, super so. unfortunate. That but, sucks. Yeah. But I don't think uh, out of all the golf carts, I agree. It is a fucking disaster. One year I was racing. Uh, Nobody gets hurt. I think 85, 14, 15. And uh, this kid, Marcus Hedrick, that was, he was faster than me. Um, you know, the, you go towards Loretta's house and you go like around the curve and then it bends up to the left. Mm -hmm. We're riding mopeds, right? He's on his bicycle. I'm on a moped. He's in the oncoming lane looking backwards mm. whap, drills a car through the windshield Ugh. gnarly like i have to go to town call yeah. 911 from a payphone yeah like it was insane wow like dumb as shit i was there in 98 all week and then i stayed for the quad nationals the week after oh no i was at loretta lynn's for, you and Donnie for two weeks the quad nationals were there at loretta lynn's yeah the oh. week after the bikes mean varner mean varn dog 
Wow. That's why Donnie Luce is just leaving. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The best part was one day, uh, like midweek of the quad things, he's like, hey, you good? I'm like, yeah. He's like, all right. He takes me to the corner store. We get some lawn chairs, some bait, and some fishing rods. And he takes me to a creek, and we put the lawn chairs in the fishing rods, and we're fishing. <laughs> in the middle of a creek in, in Loretta's. I'm like, no, but I should be working at the quad race, but this is my, my supervisor, so we're fucking good. You know? I would love to see that track after a quad race. Like, yeah. It's going to be not. jacked. Looks like, looks like railroad. Not. Wow. ArthurDraper.com. Help us only phone call away, Kiefer. I'm in. How Thanks. long is the show going on for, do you think? What? How much longer are we going? We're, we're done. Okay, good. Why? I just I feel like we're just dragging it on. No, we're, we're, I'm wrapping it up. Okay. I forgot about Arthur's read. Oh, okay. Wow. That's fair. Kiefer, thanks for coming in. Thank you. Uh, thanks to Heather as well for coming yeah. up. Appreciate it. Max, Steffens, thanks. Thank you. Uh, good times as always. Yep. Um, again, should have got you in more. Sorry. Yeah, uh, I'll be back. Okay. Gonna, I got to build you up for another month or so, and then I'll come yeah. back. Crush yeah, it, crush yeah it sounds good. Again. Absolutely. Uh, Marks, thank you. Good job. Thank you. Tater. Oh, one thing I oh, want to mention. Oh, well, I thought you wanted to drag oh, the show let's on. wrap oh. it up. No. Oh, drag wrap it, it up. up. No. Uh, friend of mine, Jim, lives in Colorado. He uh, works for the police department. Mm -hmm. One of their deputies got killed last week in the line of duty and i uh, just yeah it was a week ago and he wanted me to mention him and his family i think it was deputy peary i think is his name so just yeah something sucks yeah it's pretty yeah. unfortunate so godspeed godspeed to him and his family yep yep way to wrap the show up that's not good tater what's up we good riding this week it's raining outside it's, it's raining? raining yeah let's go let's do it wednesday Pookie's got me doing this thing. I can't go this week. What? I, it's, it's the whole See, thing. See, this is the shit I'm talking about, dude. This is the shit. Pookie's and then he blames <laughs> it on me. Pookie. Blame Pookie. He didn't even Why? know what day Why? Talon was going to say, and he's like, I can't go. Right. Let's go run. Nope. Can't I just that. remembered. Uh, Marks, thank you. Appreciate it. My pleasure. Yeah. Thanks. Yep. Uh, Mav TV, Tuesday nights as well. Thank you for that. Uh, those guys, thanks for all of our guests. Pookie. Uh, uh, thanks for Pookie. Thanks to Swisscore, Moser as well. For coming on board, Pulp and Mech Show, presented by Decal Works, Motorsport.com. Folks at Fly Racing, thanks for Got watching. A Got a thanks cooler. Thanks for listening. We claimed a cooler. See you next week. You suck, Matthew. There's something I want to get off my chest. And it's about that summer when you went away to community college. I got an offer to do Playgirl magazine. And I did it. I did a full spread for Playgirl magazine. I, I mean spread, man. I pulled my butt apart and stuff, and I was totally nude, and it was weird. I I mean, you probably didn't hear about it because I went under the name of Mike Concho, but I just wanted you to know that. If you could hear me, if it got into your brain somehow, that I spread my butt cheeks as Mike Concho.